And so Alice Gray is um, watching us via YouTube tonight, as uh, well as Charles W. Dan, who's following us. Um, Kulu Blama is also watching us tonight as well. Uh, Joe Waga George, we are picking, is following us as well. Mark uh, Julius Yakwazuo Pabi Hills. It's been a long time I've mentioned that name. Uh, Mark Julius Yakwazuo Pabi Hills is watching us from Zozo City in uh, Lofa County. Uh, Prince Movie Jacobs is watching us from um, Indianapolis there in the US. A German Weedor. Is watching us from Doison Silver Beach Junction, Margie B County. Uh, Saidu Fofana is also watching tonight uh, from um, Nukru Town. Uh, Favor Loba Tule is watching us from Banga City, Bong County. The list is a very, very lengthy one. Uh, Theresa Fartoma is also watching. Amos Kai is watching us from Durham, North Carolina. Hope you're doing great. Marcus Say Pekar is following us from Sinkor Year in Liberia. Wherever it is you watching, us from like um grace uh, destiny destiny for greatness cisco kind of nina when you're calling it then uh, a <laughs> <that> whole paragraph <laughs> grace destiny for greatness cisco yeah so however it is you're watching us from we love to say a pleasant night to you across liberia um we've been relayed on several stations across the country as well We'd love to say you definitely welcome those of you watching us via spoon tv um you welcome wherever it is you're watching us from those of you watching us via youtube as well the youtubers have been complaining and that most often than not they're not recognized we love to say good afternoon good evening good morning pleasant night wherever it is you're watching us from like Theresa Scott there. This is the nation's premier talk show. This is the Spoon Talk. And we're live across the Spoon Network on Spoon 107.5 FM Super 95.5. And of course, Fabric 101.1. The rest of the panelists are definitely going to join the show later on. My name is Diamond Slang. I'm producing tonight. It's a pleasure being in your company this um, very beautiful Tuesday night here in Liberia. Um, today is the 27th day of February 20. 24. So, so a lot happening in the country who got denied what's happening with the vip terminal um the vip lounge who should be allowed and a lot of things happening in the country we'll touch on that a bit the panelists are definitely going to um, go in depth with that as well and this issue of fire 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 should be declared now a national emergency um so that more attention can be paid to this issue of the liberia national fire and rescue service i did not even know that the liberia national fire service had a rescue component to it until i further decided to go um, in details reading what um the liberia national fire service is about so it's actually the liberia national fire and rescue service yeah but most of the time they just say the lnfs a lot needs to go into the fire service and our emergency response services as well just yesterday uh, last night it was reported uh, that a very young man lost his life in a fire incident in Duport road and again that you know preceded another fire incident and incident and incident and fire incident here and there what are we doing as a country to address this fire issue? I remember a couple of years back, um, the Islamic school there in the red light area where 29 persons lost their lives. There was so much talk about what we'll do about, you know, tackling fire incidents in our country. How are we going to revamp the Liberia National Fire and Rescue Service? What is needed to be done? A lot of, you know, good suggestions were brought up, brought forth and all that. But yet and still, we still see a snail pace approach to this thing of fire. Fire is now causing so, so much damage in our country. Every now and then, especially with, with, the, with the unstable electricity that we have in the country, people most often than not leave their breakers on to go to places. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's something that needs to be paid keen attention to. Because if you look at the number of people that have died from fire incidents in the country, it's at an alarming rate. Yes. It's a two-path thing. Citizens have also got their own role to play in all of this, but the government has got the mammoth tax 
or the mammoth part of this entire thing as to how they can tackle this issue of fire in our country. How can we do this? What needs to be done? What attention needs to be paid to the Liberian National Fire Service? What are the problems the fire service is faced with? How can we do this? You know, we have 73 electoral districts in our country. Even if we cannot get 73 fire trucks, at what ratio, at what percentage can we say, okay, we should zone the country, we should zone the districts and see the closer districts are and the least populated districts are, we can combine and see how best we can have a fire station? What about the various police stations? You know, what about the inspecting of buildings before they're constructed that should be done? Poor wiring. Because of this issue of criminality in our country, we lock ourselves up in our own prisons because we want to feel safe. So we put iron gesso, iron gesso, dough, iron basso, and everything because we want to feel safe. And in the incident of fire occurrence, it becomes a death trap. Out of our schools, are there fire drills? You know, what's really going on? The alleyways. So, Mario Jackan, right on your building, stop work, bam, bam. After you do what you have to do, you know, they say resume work. So, people just building everywhere. As a kid growing up, there were fire hydrants along the Tottenham Boulevard. You don't even get to see them anymore. I still, at least I can see one or two in my community still there. You know, how are we building? What are we doing? This issue of, oh, yeah, I know I'm picking. <laughs> the men in charge 2,000 founder. I know it's mad I can do it for founder. That body churning wire and running so, running so. Tap on it all. I want tap on it. one tap on it. one tap on it. one. We all are responsible. But the government bears the greatest responsibility. We need to tackle this thing on. We need to now start classifying fire as a national emergency. Pay more attention to it. We want to see legislators taking this thing to the floor to discuss and how can they revamp, if not, you know, bring about a whole improvement in the Library National Fire Service. I witnessed the fire incident at the Ministry of Transport. It was a sad one to see. You couldn't even tell if somebody hadn't told you that this is our Liberia National Fire Service, you wouldn't believe it because they were wearing hemming down. Hemming down with Chicago Fire Department still rating on it. Hemming down. A whole National Fire Service wearing hemming down. It just goes to show how neglected it is. Hemming down. The fire incident at the senator's residence were informed that the fire trucks had no fuel. No fuel. So they couldn't move. Ordinary librarians are faced with this every day. Cheap is very expensive. Oh, my man, buy the American wire. That 150 for rule. <laughs> me, I'm me buy American wire. I'll buy the 30 that I Yeah, just run it so, run it so. They can't withstand the tension, the heat. To conduct electricity, you get hot. The next thing, it starts to burn. So we all have got a role to play. But again, the government bears the greater of the responsibility in making sure we start to see an improvement in the fire service. There can be fire volunteers in the communities. You can train them. You can hand them fire extinguishers. You can hand them fire blankets. At least they can be the first responders in the communities because all of the scenes I've visited is always the community dwellers that are doing their utmost best to quench these fires. The same way we have neighborhood wash teams. You can train people. You can have fire stations. It's a sad thing that every now and then we hear, oh, somebody died from fire. Fire got there, this other building, five persons died. 
10 persons died. We need to pay more attention to that. All right. We'll definitely be going to the phone lines for you to tell us what's on your minds. Today, again, we received a report that um, former President George Manen Weah was denied access to the VIP lounge at the Roberts International Airport. The presidential press secretary made you know, a couple of posts on Facebook. We'll be reading them out to you. And later, she said the former president was welcomed with open arms. And then she later on went to say there's the VIP, the, the new VIP lounge is exclusively um, for usage by the current president. His Excellency Joseph Yuman Buaka Sr. There is also the old VIP lounge that can be used by ex-officials of government and all of that. But what really, really, really went down, as I said, the rest of the panelists are definitely going to discuss that um, later on the show as well. Confirmation hearings um, have been on the way. A uh, couple of, not couple, few of the nominees have been confirmed by the Liberian Senate few of the nominees have been confirmed by the Liberian Senate. Um, I will read those names out, those who were confirmed by the Liberian Senate as well. We'll read those names out for you. Um, they were confirmed on today. Uh, but there were a few others who were not confirmed um, so far. Their confirmation reports have been put on the back burners. So we'll talk about those who were confirmed today and those who whose confirmation reports have been put on the back burner as well. So those confirmed, um, give me a minute, let me get the, the list for you. Um, those confirmed on today include um, Mo Ali, the MD designate now has been confirmed by the Liberian Senate. So he is the managing director of the Liberia Water and Sewer Corporation, Mo Ali has been confirmed by the Liberian Senate. Jeremiah Pia, the information minister designate at the time, now he has been confirmed, is now the information minister of the Republic of Liberia. Daniel Sando, also confirmed on today, deputy minister, information. Um, but the confirmation report of Nelson Freeman was also withheld by the Senate today, and that of the internal affairs minister designate Francis Yumale has also been put on hold. Um, it has not been released by the committees as to why. Um, we haven't gotten a reason, but what we've gathered is that um, the Lofa County Legislative Caucus will be meeting if they already haven't met, and they will then meet with the president, as been reported, to find a way forward. According to our sources, it is probably, most likely, due to comments he made that is the internal affairs minister designate um, during the heat of the elections in the country well those are just um, some of the updates of trending issues happening in the country but this one is not happening in liberia but outside of liberia but has affected liberians so i got a video and later a call uh, from the Budubram refugee camp um, this afternoon um, what was reported and what was shown in the video, um, you do see a bulldozer, according to the person, uh, our source, at least five bulldozers today entered the Budubram refugee camp. Um, that is the most renowned or former refugee settlement because it's no longer considered a refugee camp. You know, uh, well, what, what was what did they see from the video? You could see the bulldozers, you know, um, demolishing homes there on that iconic settlement where many Liberians who have returned home and others who are all in the diaspora did take flight from, you know, many Liberians in the diaspora did live on the Budogram refugee camp and those in Liberia as well um, and other parts of the world did live on the Budogram refugee camp there. Um, so what we gathered today, according to sources on the camp, um, that they were not informed. I asked whether or not they had any prior notice of the planned demolition. The leadership said no, they did not get any prior notice. They just woke up this morning at about 5 a.m. And um, four bulldozers were already um, demolishing homes. If they, as the show progresses, that video will definitely be shown to you guys. But um, the issue is uh, they lost their, like, their refugee status when we had the second consecutive election in our country. You know, that was revoked, that Nigeria was deemed a safe place and Liberian refugee status was revoked. Either you, 
you took repatriation to Liberia or you took integration in the Ghanaian society, you know, and others opted to stay. There's always been this issue of, you know, who who owns the land, um, how the people should vacate the property. A lot of other things have been going on, but this latest move to start demolishing homes, according to our sources, at least three to 400 homes were destroyed um, during the course of the day. The video is, is there, and we want to speak to them later on as they... Dr. Richardson, good yes. afternoon to you. Diamond, hello. How are you doing today? Yeah, good morning, me all right. Well, it's day on my side, but for you, your day is actually over. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I'm hearing you talk about Brom Brom Camp. That's how I call it. How you going to call it? Brom Brom. Boo, do, boo, rum. Whatever. We are calling it Brom Brom or you. No, so you, you must call it a real way to do. Okay. <laughs> boo, do, Brom. Yeah. Mm. Put the brown. Yeah. Okay. Put the Actually, I have some sad memories. Um, the first time I ever went to that camp and to Ghana was to bury my older sister who died in a camp. And I believe that they have a place called what era? What do you era guys? Z. Era Z. Yeah, era Z. That's kind of where. So I actually she died in a camp, and so I was, you know. That was the first time I went there. Some I um, have really sad memories. So there are lots of Liberians who are deceased in Ghana. They are burying areas there. And but as far as the demolish the demol demolition of properties, I did not tell them. I think for some reason, I think it's rather inappropriate and rude to not have informed the leadership in Liberia, even though that's the land. But those Liberians have been living there for many years. I mean. I don't know whether some of them have the legal status or not, but to just demolish their property like that is, is kind of sad to me. On the other hand, I hear the Ghanaian's argument, and I heard what you said, the argument that we have had two uh, free and fair elections, so we shouldn't ha be having people that are in refugee status. But what people are not understanding is once you leave your home and you adopt another home is the transition is so hard to come back you know um i don't care how long you live especially if it was kind of involuntarily like now i mean i can say that many of us over here we're in like a volunteer status we can return we you know doing well but the people were in a refugee camp living in a refugee camp is not to say that you working professionally in another country doing well you you know you're living well you know, so I think they got accustomed to that life. And now they're saying that they have, I guess they're saying that they have to go home forcefully because they are demolishing their homes, right? That's what I'm hearing say, uh, Diamond. Yes. Uh, again, we made follow-up calls, Dr. Richardson, to authenticate whether or not they were informed prior. Okay. But I remember some part of last year, um, there was a notice put out again um, mm -hmm. that people should vacate the, the land space, put the Buram space there, you know, mm -hmm. and the Liberians contested that. We were told the government intervened some way, somehow, and that evacuation order was postponed. Okay. But whether or not this is a strategic move, you know, um, to have them vacate that place because we were informed that the land in question is not even owned by the government. It's, it's, it's owned by the chief density uh, of the area, wow. the Gomwa district chief density. Okay and they do on their land that the agreement you know has since expired um so they want them to vacate people were given reintegration package you know um, yes I remember were given that. integration package people were repatriated to liberia but there was a group you know um that said they we call them by that time the hanging group they said they did not want to be repatriated uh, repatriated to liberia neither did they want to integrate in a ghanaian society so oh, they were yeah, hanging yeah, they were hanging. They, 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 they hung on to the hope and the prospect that there would have been some program, you know, to come up for those who actually said they didn't have anywhere to go. But for today's demolition exercise, as I was informed by one of the leaders of the camp, you know, they were not informed. Even the camp management wasn't informed. Again, that is just their report. Yeah, you know, yes. is, so we have to verify if, you know, those in authority in Ghana can 
you know verify their side uh, but they, according to what i gathered from the videos you know they just woke up this morning and bulldozers were there demolishing the land in fact the camp is not actually what it used to be in terms of land space anymore you know it has been slowly 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 you know being yes. eaten up by more development so you have a, the liberian majority of the liberians you know um those who know the camp prop really well uh, from the 18 side going to the gap area there um from area b area g that's where you have bulk of the liberians situated at the back the rear area o area u thereabout you have Ghanaians and other nationals you know residing there so there isn't a large liberian population as it used to be mm -hmm. but there are still you know liberians residing there in in, in some number as well dr riches so so Tamar, the question that i have uh is what about those Liberians that were born in that camp? Mm. Uh, they are Ghanaian citizens, but their parents have this strong Liberian traditional ties. Uh, any of you are Liberian, wherever you go, even if you're born in another country. So I wonder, do they have any rights as to if they can stay there or do, or do they have to leave as well? Or do they have to go somewhere else? Well, to answer that question again, as I said, uh, Liberians were offered two solutions to pick either one, either, either of the two. Mm -hmm. It's either to repatriate, come back to Liberia after the refugee status was, you know, revoked, that we are no longer refugees, mm -hmm. or remain in Ghana and legally regularize themselves. <laughs> that is, you get the the, the, the Ghanaian ID um, that says either you are an, inter, more, uh, an more alien, than. you know, mm -hmm. Or if you are a Ghanaian by naturalization, you get your ID, you regularize your status. If you if you need resident permit, then you get a resident permit. But what's happening is because many of the Liberians have got ties around that Buduburam area, you know, mm -hmm. um, they've moved outside of the camp. Some have moved outside of the camp, but just across the road, you know, uh, some have moved Kaswa area and, and the rest. So, But if you want to remain in Ghana and work legally, you have to get a work permit, you know, a resident permit and all of that. You have to integrate. If you want to opt to get Ghanaian citizenship, you have to follow the rightful procedures. But what they're saying is they want that particular space because there's no longer, you know, Liberian refugee settlement in Ghana anymore. People were giving their repatriation packages. They should have made use out of it to you know, evacuate the camp space and all of that. Yes. Uh it's, it's, I have mixed feelings about it. Obviously, I have some emotional ties to that camp. Um, but I do believe that people should follow the law at all times. And like you said, if they need to regularize their status, then, you know, that's what they need to do. But yeah, but besides that, I'm going to be telling our audience, I want to welcome everyone to the show. I want you to share the show. Uh, it's going to be bombastic today, as always. Uh, you are, you are. There's so many things happening in our country, you know. Uh, and, and earlier when I spoke to the uh, Stanton, and you know, he lives and eat and breathes Liberian news, and so he's ready. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, so I, I, you know, Tom, let that guy say about him. I'm sure he's listening. You probably come on. I never seen somebody like who just love that country. Let it out. I know. So that, let me just tell you a secret. So usually I wake up around mm -hmm. four, four ish there about. Mm -hmm. And I will see the former CEO still sending messages, you know, back and forth, sending links mm -hmm. to, to different, you know, events happening in the country, different happenings. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking myself, like, when does he sleep? <laughs> Do you sleep? The rest of the world, the rest of us want to sleep, you know? And me, I don't even pay attention. I just turn my phone off. I'm glad for people that ask it, though, who can uh, keep his company and be in a different time zone. Because you know, uh, nobody got time. No, we we got to get our rest. I don't know what kind of human being is that. Seriously. But they, they do. Yeah. And, and it's funny because even when he's having a conversation with your call, Dr. Richard saying, you know, this person come on the show. I need you to call this person. Why are we talking? He's multitasking. I can hear him saying, okay, hold on, I, I'm coming, I'm talking about it. I was like, <laughs> you still working as a multitask for your own, you pass my, you ready to be out with this here. So, so it, I this, this is one of the videos from, 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 from the camp today. 
Yeah. Uh, Can you hold on, Diamond? Yeah. Hold on. Let me come okay. back so I can watch it. Yeah. Let me let me wait a minute as you as you brace yourself to be back. So when Dr. Richardson returns, we'll, we'll definitely play one of the videos. But Boom Burger is in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, once he gets on, definitely a spoon talk will hit another gear. Uh, so as I said today, uh, these were the nominees that have been confirmed officially to their positions by the Liberian Senate after they were nominated by President Mbaika. Moali, Managing Director, Liberia Water and Sewer Corporation. Gerald Limek Pia, Minister of Information. Daniel Sando, Deputy Minister of Information. They were all confirmed today, uh, but the confirmation report of Nelson Freeman, who was um, the 102 designate Liberia National Police, um, is on hold, as well as that of the Internal Affairs Minister, Francis Yumale, has also, the confirmation report has not been released. According to sources, what we've gathered is that uh, there's still some sticky issues with statements made by the Internal Affairs Minister designate during the electionary period here in our country. As to whether or not how that's going to unfold, um, we'll be following that closely. Uh, Dr. Richardson, so you see Boomberger in the background, uh, but I'll just show the video for a minute. And um, once he's ready, he'll definitely come on. So uh, this is one of many videos that uh, I received this afternoon from the Buddha Brown refugee camp. Send this morning by 5 a.m. Yellow machine, four yellow machine enter the camp and they started breaking all the houses on the camp from five this morning till four, almost here five now. They are still breaking the houses. As you can see, yeah, ma. Very sad. Um, I hope that they don't get to destroy the graveyard because um, some of us have a lot of memory there. Um, but I hope that Liberians work out with the Ghanaian government for our people's sake. <sighs> hey, Santa, how you doing? We're just watching that video in in Ghana. I'm not going to pronounce the, the Kamni before I cross. Damo, can you pronounce your Kamni? Bram Bram? Bram Bram? You, you just went through to tour us. So <laughs> me, I know you'll see. <laughs> oh. <sighs> yes uh yeah i was sad you know it's it's really sad because i hope that they do not destroy the graveyard because there's a lot of liberians that are there and like i said that was the first time i ever went to ghana was because uh, to bury my older sister and it was you know during the onset of the civil war in liberia and so um, just said the graveyard has been destroyed long ago oh my god I see, yeah, I'm seeing that comment. Oh, wow. So they're going to build all our people then, too? Anyway, that was, I'm blaming the people, yeah. When they had a war in their own country, that bureau opened doors. So, but we got to follow the rules. Dama, are you going there? Yes, sir. Are you going? Yes, sir. Well, you before you came. Yes, sir. What what are you guys are talking about? <laughs> so you you heard that? <laughs> you was just no, no, no. I was on. I was on the phone. You are multitasking. <laughs> you are no, talking man, about this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you're playing with this thing, though. This thing is not a juggle. But you know, before before they want the one hundred day camp, some of us will be. Crazy that would take place. We're trying to get to yeah, this 100 days. I'm not saying when. Samo, we are trying all we can by the grace of God to get to this 100 days. Mm. 
Ah, and we cool. hope we can produce as we get to day 99 that we can have a good show day 100. Make no mistake. We are doing everything we can by the grace of God to get to this 100 days. What are some of the accomplishments? A little over one month. As we move moving, pop, pop, pop. It's too early, man. Pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. We try it. Oh. What are the 100 days expectation? You know, so when we come on the show, then we get different, different a lot of different stuff. So as we get ready to have a full conversation tonight on Spawn Talk, we want to get the people involved. Today, we woke up in the morning. The people said, Joe, where can I go through the VIP? Hey, man. The man government are better. Y'all said the man shouldn't go there. That man, I know you get my video then ready. Oh, the picture, then, oh, the statement, the, 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 the press secretary, uh, uh, social media uh, releases and things. Mm-hmm. Today we woke up and FIU, the gentleman that they called Cooper, Moses Cooper, the allegation that he's stealing 500,000 and millions of dollars. But then he said, you're not tenure. That tenure tell you to steal? Today we woke up the echo of Alden White and President Joseph Yuma Barker sitting there talking about World Crown Court, Economy Crown Court. Brent Johnson said, hey. Papa, you gonna do this thing to me? Today we work up people questioning the loyalty to Prince Johnson or to country of Jeremiah Panko. They say, which side are you on? They come to carry your papa. Why Jeremiah Kun say on that one? That me, y'all can't talk, say I'm a can't talk. I said I mind my business, that my y'all You better tell your thing. Then you can call me. Today, Yumbly crying in the sun and saying, oh, we got the power to do it. Why we ain't doing it? Jeremiah Kuhn said they're giving LEC plenty of money. They don't say LEC that useless place. Then what are you doing? The protest, the chair on executive dreams burning, the chair on foreign, on foreign services, the vice president, everything. You can call a motion on the floor. They are just saying that the people are complaining. Just start giving us some kind of play, play talk, man. Who told fast? Who told former president? Former president. Joe, we are saying you cannot enter that building. December, you went, you dedicated the building. It's beautiful. But you cannot enter that building now because you're former president. This is your role. Don't go this way, go this way. Hey, man. And where we are as a country, it's going to be rough. We have formed most of the letters written to all the hundreds and some more people that President We are sent overseas to get a new employment as diplomats. All the letters, 95% of those letters was signed by someone other than the minister. And now the minister saying that he didn't approve those appointments. Even some of the picking that lost us how we on near on it. Being on dipping, double dipping. You were eating so and eating so. You know, what, what was going on? That the richest in Senate picking to his grandpa or saying to his mom or saying, saying to grandma, saying to grandpa, saying, Tell him to get off our show. Tell me, may I get off our show, please? May I go behind the camera? Milan, thank you. Go behind the camera. Thank you. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, where are we? Go play at now. the end of the day. Uh, you know, the Labrin people need to come. Let's have this conversation. Thank you for watching from home, Avin. Thank you very much. Maurice, come on. Uh, good evening to you, Mato Daki. Dalito Massaque. Thank you. Uh, Larry Putu. Larry, you say, we told you. 
Uh, I'm not calling that name Larry. He's the former president of the Republic of Liberia. We'll give him due respect. Uh, this is very big. I agree with you, my dear friend. This is very, very big. Uh, Daily, I think that's the name. Uh, Alexander Badi. And we also want to announce that all of the five commissioners just coming in the desk, two of them saying that, you know, they want to step aside. They, they agree that they are on a tenure, gave me them. They asking for the money to go. All of the five commissioners from LTA, two of them saying they want to go. They didn't want to continue. It's all about the Benjamin. It's all about the Lajan. It's all about the money. Money, money, money. But let's look at Garrison. Good governors. The gentleman from FIU, the Financial Intelligence Unit. The man eating all the money, but the man said he's on tenure after he took the people money. He said he's on tenure. You already pay yourself. You got three more years. And you know what? As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and, and respect him. Let's place a phone call to him. Uh, let's call him. His name is Mr. Cooper. I think Cooper, that's his name. Morris Cooper or Moses Cooper. We'll get it right. The document that we have in our possession, though this story you find it on front page, but it's bad, Damo. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very bad. Very, very disturbing. Very bad. And every day the senator come and say, uh, you know, we yeah, we say our own. They come the crowd to the Tuesday, right? Damn on. Yeah, to the Tuesday, boom, bro. To the Tuesday. Yeah. And that's why you see what I do is that I do not follow the Senate activities anymore. I tell people, say, if you see anything interesting, you'll call my attention to it. I really don't follow them. That are I've already done. Why? Because I think, like they don't say, they are losing the span. They are losing the reason why they are there. Some of them. Some of them. Some of them playing this kaka leka game. Kaka leka, kaka leka, do, si, do. That's what they do. They are pretending. They go just to show face. How soon members of the upper chamber say what you want to say? The House of Elders running into their place and doing stuff that they want to do and playing this kind of tabata, this kind of games. How soon, Damo? We just one man, one man since Boaka took over. Simple things for you to come together and talk about. You know, you can. So while we wait on the rest of the team to join us today, it would be very, very interesting with everything we have in our possession for people to understand the way our country that reaches him, where this country is heading to, where? Where? We had change for hope, hope for change, it didn't work. Then we're on the rescue. Is the rescue turning to be excuse? Or the rescue need to be rescued? Most of the members of the Senate today they were alliance partners. They were there. They are, they are turned to be so disappointing because everybody wants to keep the good side for 2029. Right now is 9.15. Damon, I want you to call Nelson, Trocon, the rest of the guys, please, like we discuss. Let the guys then go on the street. Let's see where era, which one of the era in Liberia is current? Where, where in Liberia you can find current right now? Or talk to darkness. We'll continue to remind those senators. Tell the riches and talk to us, man. But don't bring up again on. Bring up your own uh, probably with, 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 so let me with, tell you now. Yeah. So the Peking kind of you may gotta be a grammar. So I think he gotta be quiet. So that what we own on here to do. So he agreed. He agrees, but let's uh, let's power him small. Let's power him. He if you got an earpiece in here. Oh thank God. Good. Good. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, you're not calling that. Yeah. Huh? He said, no, I shouldn't talk about him. <laughs> All right, don't talk about him. Okay. Well, leave me alone. Uh, so anyway, you know, <laughs> some really, really great topics, you know, since uh, to, our country is just full of drama. I don't even know where to start from. But the question, though, I want to understand the layout of the airport VIP lounge and presidential lounge. Are there two different spaces? Because, you know, some people are saying the president went through the VIP lounge area, but because he's not a president, that's why he didn't go through the presidential lounge. Now, I don't know the layout of the airport, so I don't know you know, who's supposed to go where. If he did go through the VIP lounge, I think it was appropriate. I think he should, he, he's a former president, even though, you know, some of us didn't like his politics, but uh, he is the former president of Iberia. So he, he is expected to go through the VIP lounge, not the presidential lounge. But again, I, I want to know the layout of the place. That will help me determine, you know, my thoughts about what, what the, it was appropriate for him to go where he went through today. Um, that's that's basically what's been on my mind today. I list. I also heard that President Barker spoke to Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States, Vice President Kamala Harris, and the conversation went very well. Uh, you know, there was a focus on how she appreciated Liberia having a free and fair election. I think we have done something positive in the region. She also talked about good governance, that they were gonna, the American government would support good governance. And that's that's a heck of a lot of good governance, you know, to me, uh, what does good governance means in the midst of sanctions, as we talked about here uh, with, you know, the possibility of more sanction or how we're gonna work with the uh, war crime court or economic crime court. They also are in the caveat or in the Bag of good governance uh, 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 affairs. Um, you know, she talked about the rule of law, how that's been very important to Liberia, that they want us to follow the rule of law. Uh, is that something that's on the president's docket to, to, to implement and, and, and enforce the rule of law within the first 100 days? Are we seeing any movement towards enforcing the rule of law because we know that's important? For you know, security reasons for just the security of our country. Um, so I mean, I, I, I I'm in between Stanton really. I want to give the president the benefit of the doubt because you know during the campaign season how I felt about this president, how I sense his indecisiveness, how I sense his leadership qualities. Uh, but I'm not the first person, and this is how I work. I'm not I'm not going to be the first person to start criticizing because I believe that. Everyone should have an opportunity to 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 make mistakes. When you get on a job, they give you ninety days probation period. You have he has ninety days to you know to work out things. But on the other hand, um, when you've been in government for so long and you're making some amateur mistakes, so amateur things that are happening in terms of your appointments, uh, you know, in terms of you know uh, meeting with people like the the army wives. It's concerning to me. Those things are very concerning to me. Um, so I'm I'm open to to having some major discussions as to what's going on. Before I go any further, I don't want to forget that this is my brother's birthday, Clarence E. Chenoweth. He calls himself Boma Pekin. So I want to just tell him happy, happy birthday, brother. I love you. Uh, this is from all of us. Uh, we no longer have mother and fathers around. So this is from your siblings. So I just wanted to say that before I forget. I, uh, Clarence, uh, I don't know you, never met you before. I'm not wishing to know you, Clarence, but happy birthday. Uh, I think without, <laughs> we're not hearing you, Dr. Richardson. Uh, I was telling you that he watches the program. That's good, that's good. The only person I want to know is uh, your other brother, what's his name? Orlando? Orlando, yeah. Orlando, yes. Orlando is in Liberia right now. I've been talking to him regularly. You know, for people who think that I don't like the broadcast camp, I want you to know that I have family members. You know, Orlando is my brother, my biological brother. But you know, He's you were there. you you were asking Orlando to to not support broadcast. So what difference that make? I did not. Oh, are you kidding me? You know how Orlando had die hard broadcast 
support her. And then, of course, Burma, Burma Kamara is my cousin, you know. So, so you know, it's, it's, it's not that. It's just we have ideological differences sometimes. Which is okay. It's okay. I like what you say, Burma Kamara, and my cousin. Okay. It's All right, true. folks. I, I do believe it. Burma said it. It's true. I, I mean, I believe it. No question. But we're going to have a wonderful show today. We're going to ask you your own take. We're going to have uh, Representative Fambula in studio. He will be joining us likewise. Uh, this representative I'm fighting, when you talk about China Union, he been fighting. The people got plenty of money for Liberia. And the poor won't come back. But they won't come back and they're asking that America and Liberia shouldn't get the money from them. So the representative coming to talk about it. You know, it was on the floor today. They were discussing. But some bad, bad things happening. Everybody is just running with their own kind of story. I, I want to recognize Christopher Gray on uh, LRB Ernest, Going We Are Do, Daniel L. Belito Senior, Lydia Nimland, Elijah Nia, Anthony, 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 Anthony Gosson, uh, Josephine, George Pato, Daniel Branwell, Zanga David, uh, Gallo Bay, Kristen Massa, Patrick Kennedy, Grace and Mercy, Jay Awudowu, Sarah Fakate, Cousin Wabu. Uh, come on, welcome to the show. This thing going fast. Whatever you are, we want to say, Bra Alexander, Alice Ba, uh, Elton Papi, Aramos Zogwe. Uh, what's the name over there? Madu Kwetu. Uh, Joseph Jenkins Roberts. Who name is Joseph Jenkins Roberts again? Emmanuel S. Swasinion. Uh, Norman Akashas uh, Cooper. Deconti. Joseph Jenkins Roberts is back to level. Okay. Uh, Richard Nelson. Elton Papi Gray. Oprah Garway. Oprah Garway. Darlington, welcome to the show. Martin Cooper, you too welcome, my brother Martin. Uh, Kevin Barr Cooper. Uh, Nicholas Pay, uh, Samuel Roberts, Ansu Kamara, Gawin, welcome to the show, Gawin, TC Cops. All right, my man, you'll be calling me on Messenger. I do not answer Messenger call. You call me on Messenger, I can't answer. David Brooker, uh, I Political Critical Hoffman, Elizabeth Johnson Gwe, Lawrence Fakoli, uh, Byron Taylor. I want to send a birthday shout out, pre birthday to my sister Patricia. Patricia Witherspoon in Liberia, uh, the one in whom I'm well placed. My sister, happy, happy pre birthday to you. The more you're going to be celebrating your birthday, Patricia Witherspoon, we wish you well. Burma Kamara, who Burma Kamara, but who Burma Kamara is? Is this a finance minister or just another Burma Kamara? We want to say welcome to the show, my dear Burma Kamara. Like always, good to, uh, good to have you. I want to say James Samukai. Why is Brian Samuka? As you seen the name Samuka, the name Samuka is here, Dama. Where is the former defense minister? The man that won the senatorial seat in Lofa, but yet the state CDC jacking away from him. CDC Bufaye, Dama. What's happening with Brian Samuka? The man won his seat. CDC talking away. He supported, oh, I see. He supported Jose Imam Buaka. Then guess what he did? He made a mistake. In the last week, he visited Bakuba Church. Last few hours, the man went and sat down with Reverend Joe. We are the man after that, Dalton Thomas. He after that, Dalton Thomas. He had everything. Hey, my friend, Samuka. I'm a papa. Why you went to Baka Church? I mean, I mean, you went to Joe. We are church. That man, man was chilling. So the question is, you wasn't sure. That Joseph Baca are going to win this thing and, 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 and give you pardon? Or, anyway, we talked about it already. I'm bringing it all again. Some guy like my man. I'm just trying to know. You are almost there. And some guy said, except I see the nails in his hand and the piercing on his side. I will not believe. And Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. Samuka become a believer. He turned overnight, Dharma, quickly. When he heard bam, 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 then Baga say, I'm the president of the Republic. Like, Samuka said, oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. 
But why is Samuka? I'm hearing different information on Brian Samuka. You know, listen, BJ the my man. BJ the my man. BJ the my man. Why is Kofi Woods? We're still looking for Kofi Woods, the National Security Advisor Kofi Woods. Where is Jake Kamakori? Now, if we say, why you calling everybody name for? I call people name that Glenny can show face. Glenny wearing green. She get red lipstick. She get black hair tie. She the fresh money. But Damon, Damon, let's face in this thing. Where all your men at? Damon, I know this. I know the representative in that will bring you on shortly. But Damon, where your man at? Where your man at? Well, I mean, you talking to the guys and where are they, Damon? Well, I can, I can pinpoint. I mean, I'm not give no diplomatic to you. Of uh, the former defense minister, I used to see him frequently um, after the inauguration. Uh, but I can't tell you where he is now. You know, he's a security expert, so he knows how to. So he had his that. He knows how to appear and oh wait 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 Damon. he does not want to be seen so can you can you I, I i i want us to talk on this before we bring in my dear friend and brother for the family welcome to the show uh sister glenny it's good to have you mm, hello everybody baby t how are you jj <laughs> 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 oh, so piggy if she have another name mommy no, my sister was mommy. Your sister, yeah. Hey, uh, my man, you only show you the book and say your whole family name. Oh, that's okay. They're not bastard. Hmm. Then I said, no, I didn't say that bastard. I just asked if you had any other name, mommy. That all no, I no, I didn't mommy. My sister was mommy. I'm piggy. Hey, dog. <laughs> you ready to get the deal? <laughs> but we asked the question where is Brian Samuka? Where is uh, how you call him? What's the guy's name? Samuel Kofi Woods, why are those people? Uh, John Malou. I've been asking. Malou, where is John Malou? Where is John Malou? Somebody beat on me last time for John Malou. They said they thought John Malou was bringing hell on fire in Liberia, but now he's quiet, the cold water. I know. Where is John Malou? You know what, folks? We got two more, two more minutes before we bring in the representative. See, you, there is something trending um, on social media. I'm um, mm -hmm. trying to check that up. You want to text me? Yeah, I'll, I'll text. I'll text that to you quickly. Let me let me check that out quickly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know so when you can start doing it. something trending on social media, then we know what's up. <laughs> All right, it's authenticated. I'm sending you the screenshot right now. I'm sure you. Uh, so let me send it to you right now. It's breaking news. Okay. So hold on one minute. Yeah. Hold on one minute, folks. Damo said he got a breaking news I have not received. He said he sent it to me. I'm about I'm to receive it. The whole, the whole boom breaker, you don't get that news as... <clears throat> Maybe I get the news, but I'm I, I mean, yeah. bringing it in as sweat sweat. Yeah, you get that news, man. You get all the news. You get that news. But when you said it, uh, you said you said it. Channel. I mean, don't give me no channel, channel or how you call it, cell phone. No, that's so that, 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 those people that we asked him for. Uh, we need to know what's going on with them, but let's hear you up before we bring in. Let's it's, hear you up. It's very long. Uh, if this is true, we want to say that it is. It is, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I got it already. Somebody sent oh. it to me. Mm -hmm. Somebody sent it to me. Oh, but let, let, let me hear you at that first thing, Richardson. Do your intro. You did already, I believe. Let me bring in Glenny. Yes, Thank right, you. Glenny, uh, uh, well, welcome to the show, Glenny. <laughs> but, my man, for the men to do the thing, why you did all the plenty writing? Now, now the team, uh, almost seven to 15 paragraphs. So, we have confirmed this, right? Yes, it's confirmed. So, folks, we are confirming that the party chairman of CDC, Boba Mbolu, has resigned. Hmm. Now, big news, all right, right, Dharma? Yes, sir. You are correct. CDC party chairman, Moba Molu, just resigned. All right, oh. he waited for the president three minutes ago to come. Can you, can you please flag it? Uh, let's put it up before we bring in. Yeah, I can I can rest. Rest. I can right now, then we can take his whole entire Facebook page so that you can. Yeah, just put it on the screen right now. He said, my resignation letter, Tengo Acido, is coming. Your Excellency, George Manon, we are standing up Congress 
for Democratic Change, February 27, 2024. Dear Mr. Weir, I am writing to formally, formally tend on my resignation as chairman of the Congress for Democratic Change. Consequently, I am also stepping down from the position of chairman of the Coalition for Democratic Change. That's the chairman, Moba Molu. Now, the reason that he's given almost four to five pages, uh, we will let you know, we'll share this with you, but this is breaking through the wire uh, that the party chairman, Moba Modu, have stepped down. He have resigned. Thank you, Damon. Uh, bring us back while we, we discuss the story, it will be one of our ministers on the show tonight. We're going to spend a brief time with our representative, Fambule, and we're going to go in all the story. Don't forget, we have President George Banner, we are entering the country. We did a calculative move. The president arrived, I gave him a resignation letter, I'm out from mobile model. All right? So this is big. I think this is spinning as a do hair right now. The reason that he gave me that he resigned, we're going to pull it up. Dr. Richard said, I don't want you to go there yet. Okay. I see that you put your finger up. We're not going to go into this story yet. We're okay. going to let our okay. people participate, but it's scary. Something is smelting. Baba Moro have stepped aside. Let's bring it on over four day e family to the show. Welcome to the show, the uh, representative of District Number Seven, Bond County, Representative Fambula. How are you doing today? All right, I'm great. See you. I'm doing great. And thank you for the show. Thank you for the level of work you have done in ensuring our people are informed around the country. You are quite welcome, my brother. It's good to have you on Spawn Talk. I believe this is your first time, right? Yeah. Okay. So when you're running for a campaign, you run away from us, my man. Why? No. You know what's your face? Um, I'm from a district that uh, Dr. Richardson is from. She's she's a regular Bowman person. Yes, it's great to see you. I'm in the district. So during the campaign, I'm always in the district. It is only because of the time now to serve. You need to come to Morovia, go to work, and be able to go back into the district. So I think we need to be able to raise some of the issues that people have not heard about, but some of the issues we've been talking about for years, and I thought we're going to remain consistent in discussing them. You know, um, I want to give you the first 30 minutes of this show. Let's hear you out uh, while you're here today. Let's talk about the issue that brought you in. Uh, you and myself spoke last night. You have so many reasons why you think it's about time to fight and fight harder than ever before. The people have entrusted into your care, the district. So how are you willing to help them? Uh, how are you willing to work along with the executive and all the folks in this government or in the country to bring the change that is so desired? Welcome to the show. You can do your intro, sir. Talk to us. Why are you in the studio today? The first thing is that in the year 2009, January 19, there was, um, if, as far back 2008, there was a bid that was, um, the government was soliciting bid for the bond range where you have the bond mines area. And China Union won that bid. They signed a concession January 19. And the, within the envelope of that concession was that they were going to invest at least 2.6 billion in this country. As such, there were specific things they said they were going to do. One, they were going to build the road within the government area, meaning within the community. They are going to build the road from Kakata to Hendi and that of the St. Paul River. They are going to do all, all of the community roads. They were going to ensure that they would take what the hospital, the Bowmines Hospital, something around 100 bedrooms, um, hospital, a very big hospital. They were going to ensure that that hospital would be brought up to international standard. They were going to run their own school, to be able to build the capacity of young people in that part of the country. Um, they signed on to ensuring that they will provide at least 200,000 in scholarship. Every year, they will provide 50,000 to the geological department of the Universal Liberia. They will provide 200,000 a year within the first 10 years as land rental field. They will provide within the last 
15 years, it will provide 250,000 as land rental fee. The next thing they will go about doing is to provide 3.5 million as social contribution to three counties, Bon, Maigibi, and Mosserado. 50% of that money will go to Bon, St. Bon host the concession, and 25% um, of that money will go to Maigibi because the real part choose Maigibi and Mosserado that host the port. So all of these good things were enshrined in that document. The first issue they had was that within the first two years, they were going to complete the issues of the road. By 2013, meaning the last year of the concession has gone beyond two years, the company has not started anything in relationship uh, in regard to the, the full implementations of social contribution. So we raised that at that time, I was uh, heading one of the community organizations called the Foreman Progressive Platform. At which time we flag it out, we reach out to stakeholders. But then, since we were saying something that other leaders within the country and the district, they were not willing to listen to what they did was that they tried to manipulate the system. And I was jailed. I was taken to court in Morovia and sued for economic sabotage in 2013. As far back as 2013, we consistently raised the same issue we've been raising that you have reneged on your responsibility, the issues of compliance, that no one monitoring this concession and leaders in the house need to monitor it. There was elections in 2017. We went to the process, we were not successful. And we raised the same issue. We said, if there's, a, there's, there's any leader who will be taking over this district, that leader should be brave enough to bring China Yuan back to the table and be able to monitor the full implementations of the concession, especially the aspect that have to do with compliance. With that, fast forward, 2023, the elections came about, the communities took with me, they voted me, and few things I said during my campaign that within the first 100 days, I would ensure that the issues of China Union can be brought to the discussion table, that the issues of compliance can be raised in every corner in this country. China Union will understand that they have reneged on their responsibility. So it is from that backdrop, we wrote plenary a few days ago, meaning um, February 13 to ensure that plenary can be able to listen to the plight of the ordinary people in that part of the country. And their pledge was to raise the issues of our uh, only Chinese holding CM position in the company. There's not a single Liberian in any CM position in the company. And the company has said within three, within five years, Liberians will occupy 30% of their senior managerial positions. Within 10 years, Liberians will occupy at least 70% of all senior managerial positions. As I speak to you, we've gone 15 years and there's not a single Liberian in any senior managerial positions. Almost all Liberian are playing low key role. They were, they, you have not less than three to 400 Chinese living within the concession doing ordinary jobs like whatever, whatever. They are worthy, uh, uh, irons, they are doing steel bending. A lot of simple jobs that Liberian can do. You have all three to four different contracting firms there. They are all Chinese. So the essence of the concession was to be able to transfer work to Liberian company. And the Chinese are now willing to be to contract Liberian firms. Economically, they are creating, they are uh, creating a more bottleneck for local uh, firms. So there have been a lot of issues. It is from that backdrop we raise the issues of plenary. And plenary with the gavel of uh, the current speaker, we talk about it. He, he 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 listened to our issues and he was able to put on the agenda. It was on the agenda. It began a uh, major conversation within the house and four separate, four, uh, five separate committees was, they were, they were taxed with the responsibility to be able to investigate China. You, the committee met, we have public hearing where some of your journalists were and uh, we invited the deputy manager. It will shock you to note that for the past over five to six years, the CEO or the manager of that company had never been in country, and you had only a Scarlington managerial team, a company that is boasting of investing at least $2.6 a company that have said they will build the SP-1 on the St. Paul River. The SP-1 is the hydro dam that should be built in Hindi, and they said that they were going to do that. It is in Shami, their own MDA. So a lot of things has been said. A few days ago, we paid a visit to the concession area with a team of uh, lawmakers from the joint committee. And almost everything we said was seen on the ground that the rules are not 
uh, in good condition. He had not been touched. The hospital is in a deplorable conditions, and uh, the the school is in similar state. A lot of things, and the Chinese are not willing to live up to what they have signed up to. So we believe we're going to use what is available to us since. As far back 2013, they were there trying to manipulate the system and showing that leaders um, put us in jail. Now I am the representative and taking the decision. So the decision here is to ensure that you live up to what you have signed up to. And I'm very definite with that. We're going to use every means available to also ensure that China and Union can be able to live up to what they have signed up to. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the issue about China Union, uh, I'll, I'll just follow briefly, and I'll call for Nati, the speaker speaking on this issue. Well, uh, you guys, I mean, I'm going to ask a general question. Are you guys there yet? You you think there will be some some form of uh, negotiation to bring them back? Uh, will they pay that which they owe to Liberians? The, the, the first issue is that that was good for us. When we started the public hearing, China Union managers signed a formal communication to the committee stating that yes, they acknowledge they are in uh, they are not in compliance with the social contribution. That communication is a public document, it's on the internet. You can have, I think you, you've tried to uh, search the internet, you'll be able to have access to it. They said they acknowledge that they have not lived up to what they signed up to. And there are specific things. If you talk about the issue of land rent. Within 10 years, 100,000 times 10, is, you're talking about a million dollars. So what we've been able to do is to do a breakdown of almost all of the amount that you be able to pay. And it was it, it will surprise you to know that the amount that China Union at this time should be paying is something in the tune of at least 61 million dollars. It's something serious, at least 61 million. Because if you take a, a metric of the 3.5 million times 15 years, it's something not less than 50 million. If you take the hundred thousand is an L million, you take the two hundred and fifty thousand times five years, it's one point two million. It's something serious. And investing at least sixty million in a local community, a lot of things will be done. A lot of people will receive opportunity. A lot of young people will be trained. So a lot has not been done. And it is from that backdrop we have come to leadership to ensure that corporate accountability is taken very seriously in this country. You have a question, Dr. Richardson? Yes, I have a comment and a question. Uh, I just want to tell you today, uh, Honorable Fode Family, thank you so much for taking up this fight for the people of Bon Mines or Bon County. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, people have been uh, in, in position of power, but they have not taken up this fight as I hear you you are taking it up as, as of today. Um, it saddens me because, you know, I grew up in Bon Mines. Uh, I am a child of Bon Mines. And before China Union came, anybody who went to Bon Mines, you knew that you were in like a little either developed country, a little developed country. Um, and the last time, actually, I've been there several times, as you probably know, we run a school there, the Bon Educational uh, uh, Center Alumni Organization. We run a school there for almost, what, 17, 18 years now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I cried the last time I was there. Nothing is the same. Nothing is the same. The hospital, which was our top rated hospital uh, when I was growing up, is down to zero. The school, we are just having a, in a meeting where we're trying to back in. She would be the one responsible for the school that China Union said they built, Zawiata School. Uh, you know, there's there's no community roles, as you probably know. They roll from Kakata to Bomais, they fix, but is the the trees are overgrown on the roads right now. Nobody's caring for it. Um, my question to you is that I believe it was 2013, I was in Liberia, and I met with China Union because I was so furious, I was mad when I went to Bomais. I shared tears, I was devastated. And you know what the guy told me? I, I believe they had a headquarters somewhere in, it was a building in, in Morovia there. He said to me that they have given uh, our leaders the county mommy. development funds. And we were not using the funds appropriately, so he didn't want me to blame mommy. him. He said, blame your own Liberian people. And actually, I had no documentation to prove if they were had given us 
our people, the Counter Development Fund. So do you know if our people, the, our leaders at the time received the Counter Development Fund in, in, from the Chinese people and they will use it effectively? The first thing is that if they are saying they were giving our leaders money, I don't know in the context of what, but from the facts available to us, one, the rules are terrible. They have not touched the rule. They have not been able to do anything with the hospital. The hospital is in a, it's in vain. You 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 talk about the hospital. I think the ABM is trying to do something there. The hospital is in a terrible condition. The school, the similar thing. So you have a specific social contribution. More than that, you have asked the Liberian government for tax exemption that you will live up to these things. You will be able to take care of the hospital, the road, the basic social services within this community. And as such, you want tax exemption mm -hmm. for capital goods coming into the country. So you have reneged on almost everything. So I think probably the reason why he was talking to you the way he talked back then was that he he felt you were not um, um, in 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 possessions of some of the facts, so he could say anything to you. Yes, some of the, the leaders before now have not paid more attention like what I'm trying to do. My issue has been there's a need to bring these people to book and ensure that they can be held accountable. Why they could not raise issue with me and say, all, all of the media I've had with them, I've been very clear that you need to be able to make a formal statement. You need to sign that you have reneged on your responsibility. So they will not question me the I where I have clear fights and the fights are very strong. So they cannot fight it. You see the communication they sign on, they sign and say, yes, we, we won within 90 days. So you need to be able to provide the evidence and they will not question those evidence. And the evidence are very strong against them. The rules are terrible. The hospital is in green. The schools are not been run by them. So a lot of things. You look at the, con the contracting firms they have, they are all Chinese. So a lot of that. So yes, I agree. All of those who have been living in in bone mines, when you go back to bone mines, it is in a terrible state because the house, the houses have been broken down. It, I, I think you now have a memory of what you saw when you were coming out. It is in a terrible condition. And what we're trying to do is to see whether we can bring that days back. But I think we need time to be able to push them to get it done. Because these concessions, it is a cut across situation in this country. You always observe protests in these communities and uh, um, leaders who serve as direct representations of the people are not taking some of these issues serious. I think the issues of compliance now has been brought to the table and it is a conversation held across the various areas in our country. My second question to you is how successful do okay. you think that you will be in getting China Union to respond to your request, considering you just said to us that the deputy manager is not even in country and never been to Liberia. No, I said the, the manager had not been in country for the past five years. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I it's the deputy that. manager who's been running the country. Oh, the deputy manager yeah. is running. Okay, the, the, um, the manager has not been in the country for the past five years. How, yeah. success, how successful do you think that you can get them to comply with your request because they seem to be ignoring it? The first thing is that when uh, Plenary invited China Union as a company, they sent their deputy manager to officially speak on their behalf. And with that, the company has signed the formal, I think, CEO, do we have a copy of the communication that the manager signed? I think you could share with the public or share with her. The manager has a knowledge that, yes, they are in compliant breach. And as such, they want to uh, be able to see how we can have a lot of conversation about it and set timing to be able to implement them. Because within the, 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 the next few days or months, we want to see China Union moving into Bowman's Hospital, taking over the hospital, taking over the staff, bringing new doctors, uh, start to renovate that hospital, move into the school, get yellow machine on the viral rules and be able to start doing some rehabilitations of them. Then we can start talking about AFA. So there are a lot of things we need to start doing. You cannot hold a poor community or try to, to 60 million United States dollars then you hear playing joke. I think there are a lot of things we need to do and we're going to keep our feet on the ground to ensure that we can achieve them. What am I, Thank, what you. Is Thank you very much. Uh, can exchange information. All right. See that? I was telling the honorable, I'm going to send him a friend request so that I no, can I'm going to give you his number. I'm going to give you a blood number. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Glenda, can you go ahead, please, with your question? Honorable Fumbler, how are you? I'm doing great. 
All right. So my my first question is um, when we for specifically China Union, who is responsible for oversight? Who who manages them? Who checks on them? Who do they report to in Liberia? So in the concept in the in the context of oversight, few things you need to get clear. One, you have the Ministry of Land, Mines and Energy that controls the sector because it's a mining sector. You have the Commission on Investment that regulates investments within our country. And you have a representative that is elected to serve as a representative for a given community that has unchecked authority when it comes to oversight. He has a responsibility to go after things that he believes undermine <coughs> the interest of a given community. From the aspects of oversight when it comes to representation for the people, I think that has not been properly managed well. The issues of uh, government entities that are responsible to be able to bring some of the concessions to both, it is a cut across problem in this country that they are not serving in that capacity to ensure that these concessions come to live up to what they have signed up to. So I think the representative of these communities need to step up their game and be able to ensure that they can stand up for their people because if roads are built, if hospitals are being managed properly, uh, the ordinary people who benefit and who feel the impact of their own local resources. So it's something we all need to look at. And we are taking a stand that people have not been able to take in the past 15 years. We want to put in place a measure. I think the president has said that business should not be done as, as usual. So we won't be able to do business as usual. We need to be able to set a new standard that everyone can be able to follow. All right, thank you. Thank you, Glendy. Isaac, do you have a question for Representative Fumbler, please? Not exactly from oh, honorable family. I won't be the other thing. You know. <laughs> My brother, nice to, nice to see you all here, but nothing much, nothing much to say. Just continue to do what you do, man. I listen to you for Liberia. Of course, anybody that comes to Liberia wants to do business, should ensure they do the right thing. So once they don't do the right thing, it depends on people like you who are in there representing our interest to ensure Liberia becomes first. So I just want to say, you know, thank you. Continue what you do and ensure you hold, you know, those who should be doing what you be doing accountable to ensure they do what they do. That's all I need to add on. Is the book oh, counted oh, oh, with you? Uh, are you, you, you asking more questions, Dr. Richardson? Yeah, I was just asking, is the bunk counted caucus, the other members of his team, the other representatives and senators, mm -hmm. are just supportive of his uh, request? Yes, uh, after we wrote the communication to plenary, the caucus chairman in presence of Senator um, Prince Kemumoy had a, a elaborate press conference and the leadership of the, uh, of the caucus and its member endorsed the positions of the communication meaning they have given their full support because I, I'm also serving as the, sec the secretary of the caucus. So uh, we have the full support of the caucus and the, 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 the senator is in full support of all of the things we are trying to do. He's been able to try to reach out to other stakeholders to ensure that this issue can come to a logical conclusion. So thank you very much, Honorable. But if you care to stay briefly, uh, I want to get all of this uh, China Union business. I know we'll have you back again. You know, when I don't know something too much, you can have my head. You know, and I think you're doing extremely well to talk about China Union. Uh, I don't know what to call it, China Union, uh, not Liberia Union. It's a China uh, Union concession. Yeah, you know, and I think a lot of people have been playing games, but thank you. If you care to stay with us, we want to make you part of the show as we talk about other issues. Do you have time, sir? Yes, I will stay alone. Okay, thank you very time. much. Thank you very much. And, and, you know, I don't just like to come on show and make the people. We're talking about a challenge. All those in Bone Mines and Bone County, you will get your full benefit. Now you have Representative Formula. Let know. me ask her. Is, is that how you spread? Uh, oh, oh, look, that the richest one got to move on China Union. Oh, seriously. Yeah. Then you have one more question. Uh, we, yeah, we got to move on China Union. We got plenty of stories to talk today. Okay. So I'll ask the last you. question now. Okay. So what if the, the China Union uh, is not applying to the request? What's the next step? 
Because no, like, I didn't get what you said. Yeah. What if they are not responding to the, your request for them to comply with their agreement with uh with, I, with I think they themselves has has a knowledge that they are not in compliance with the MDA. So with that, the, we're going to have a full report. There will be, I think, one or two hearing before the joint committee, and there will be a formal a formal report placed before plenary because they themselves they have agreed that the concessions need to be reviewed. Is another step we need to review the concessions, review the aspects that have to do with specific uh, performance of the company, review the aspects that have to do with their tax exemption, why they should be benefit from tax exemption, why they should contract only Chinese firms when Liberians are here, and some of the Liberians company have the capacity to do some of the work. So it's something that I think we're going to achieve a lot in the short span. Um, and I, I, I just don't believe that we'll not achieve a lot within the house. The 55th is something that you can you can count on from what we've seen. Our, our colleagues are very uh, 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 more interested in ensuring that corporations who invest in our country can be able to live up to what they sign up to. It's something taken very serious. Few hours ago, you had another communication on the floor from B Mountain. So the communication is coming from almost everywhere. The issues of compliance so it becomes a very serious issue and we are not taking it lightly thank you thank you very much uh is that how you spell your name f-a-h-m or n n okay so i think uh anyway we know you uh now let me let me bring the conversation up that which is trending uh you're a politician now you you work in the district you know across the hour what's going on let's get into it why Isaac do try to put his generator on <laughs> and uh I, I want us to talk about mobile model resonation just a few minutes, few hours ago. I know you probably had the time you went over it, but there you have it. It's right there today. I resign my position as chairman of CDC. The further letter to the standard bearer outlines the details. Let's keep the CDC and Liberia peaceful. My resignation letter. Talk to us, knowing for six years he has served this Congress for Democratic Change, he has served on the bigger one and the small one, but here we are, he's stepping aside. Uh, the first thing is that I contested as an independent and not a citizen. And I, I believe there have been a lot of romance of issues unfolding within the CDC. Uh, where there's no power, there's nothing holding the parties together, a lot of things will be seen out. A lot of guys will resign. Some of the issues that you think the president could manage, they might not sit in to listen to their colleague NMO. So a lot of things will happen in the short space of time. You watch up for something even bigger than what you see. Some of the guys will either leave the CDC, join the United Party, soon to be, they might leave. A lot of things will happen within the political space because some of the guys are regular political propagandists. They cannot survive in the absence of being on the winning side. So. With that, I think Moliba has been a grassroots in the CDC. He understands the CDC better. And if he's resigning at this point in time, it means a lot. It means a lot. He understands a lot about the CDC. And I will not be surprised if other great guys within the CDC will step out. It will not be a surprise to me. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I was muting Glenny, but I've muted myself. Uh, have you have you uh, read the reason why he stepping aside? Oh, no. Like oh, yeah. you post, like you posted the the short statement. I think uh, the guy in the studio a few minutes ago said there was something like a 15, 16 paragraph of what he was resigning. But for me, I think I, I will expect a lot to happen in a short space of time because I I think there were a lot of things happening. People were after influence. You had, you saw the campaign. There was a back and forth situation. In recent time, you heard about the the MPP stepping aside. So a lot will happen because probably you had power so people could stay around for some time, but there's no power anymore. You only have an opposition life to live and you've not been able to govern within the six years to get additional mandate so it's something that some of the guys would not sit in there and say we want to take a try again 
they will prefer to go to other institutions to create more, to create a new brand to see how best they can convince the librarian people that they can do better. But before we, found- we bring in the rest of the guys, I'm kind of shocked. Those reasons that he gave, I don't see nothing substantiate. Good, good reason that would cause it. Let's say I'm stepping aside. It's like he want to leave, but he want to stay. I want everybody to read it. So let me leave you for a bit. Let me ask that to Richard. here. I want you to just, just, just really briefly go through it quickly, especially the last three paragraphs. Dr. Richardson, I'm not seeing anything. With the exception of the first paragraph, I listen, I resign, Mr. President. Other than that, is there anything over there that makes sense to you? Well, well, I want, uh, yes, there's one thing in the uh, third paragraph, I believe he gives his uh, uh, influencing factor. But I wanted to just comment on something that uh, Honorable Farmer said, is the issue of power versus people. Uh, he actually, is no longer in power so now he's saying like you know i i can't be an effective advocate is if i had the power you know if it was about me because when i think about power i think about personal interest your own interest your own uh motivation your own gratification is power is something that you as a person feel versus if you are interested in the people it's a level of selflessness it's a level of service to the people so because you are no longer in power you are telling yourself, oh, I, I, I cannot be an effective servant to the people, you know, or maybe did you taste, you taste that power. So now you taste that power, you cannot be an effective servant to the people. So that is concerning, concerning to me. He said that one of the influencing, one of the influencing factor in his decision is the diminishing opportunity for me to effectively fulfill my role as the people's chairman. What diminishing opportunity is he talking about? Does that relate to the fact that he's no longer have any power as he claims? Um, And he says, as an advocate dedicated to supporting the people, it is disheartening to encounter constraints. What constraints is he talking about that limit my ability to carry out my responsibility? Is he talking about any friction that is happening between he and the past president as we know it. And I wish Fatima was here tonight to explain that because uh, Fatima actually uh, exposed a past uh, friction that was occurring between he and the past president that perhaps he's alluding to that there's some kind of friction that is making him unable to advocate for his people because he's constrained. He does not have the power to do so. So that's kind of initially what I'm thinking and what I saw. Glenny, what would we'll say you, Glenny? Uh, Dr. Richardson is saying this from another angle, though. But I'm not seeing anything that we have not spoken about. I'm not seeing anything that Moa Mori couldn't have resigned 2,000 years ago. I'm not seeing anything that he beat on us and said we lied, that the, 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 the liquor talk tape, that everything he accused George Manor were on. He hang on. Because now they're down, and you want to leave them down and say, I want to fight for the people. I, I don't think this makes sense. The only sensible thing is that he's stepping aside. And Sedition reaching out to me and saying, Stanton, this is long overdue. Glenny, talk to us, man. So I, I, I think I want to agree with you and, and, and compliment Dr. Dr. Chenoway, Dr. Richardson, who is in her element as a psychiatrist. <laughs> She can understand. I understand nothing he wrote there. <laughs> the resignation is an expectation that should have happened a long time ago. He's been he's been toiling around that for a long time ago. So to gather a bunch of words and put it together, and you're complaining about foreign policy, you're complaining about, about ties with the European Union, complaining about USA. What do you have to do with that as a chairperson with and you're not in, in, in the government? I mean, what, what's all that when stuff? You are, when you were here, you met the very U.S. people. When you were in Delaware, Thank you, you. Were here, you met the very uh, U.S. people that asked you about, Joe, where are you explaining? We on Spoon, we want to say, and you say, oh, don't say it. You will get a boy in trouble. That now you're telling Joe we have to go make friends with Russia. Yes. You're telling yes. Joe we have to go back to Israel and catch PJ. You're well, telling well, Joe we have to go in from Washington, D.C. That now you're you saying it. Come on, man. That's just that's resign that's and step aside. Make the actually. It. As we are sorry to interrupt you, Joel, we're going to choose, or uh, how you call this other guy, uh, Eugene Nanway, as his chairman. Moba saw this coming. So he ended up just saying, you know what, before you say I fire you, I resign. You know what to do in America, right? 
granny, when they fire you from that job, you are late, granny. You went in the water to fire you. You didn't, you couldn't say I resign. And before you open your mouth, the person will fire you, granny. That's similar mm -hmm. situation, yeah. I mean, I, I'm it's not seeing an anything in this. Yeah, I mean, it's been an expectation. People, the Liberian people already know there's been a rift between he and President Weah, former President Weah. So why are you coming now, this lady in the game, to say that you're resigning? Okay, we accept the letter. I guess you have you, you have an opportunity to write letters, so you write it. But that's not impressive for me. It's a waste of people's time. We already expected that you would have done this. And why are you doing those things that you're even writing about? How does, does those things concern you? So when we are strengthening a relationship with USA, what does it do now? You're not president. If you strengthen it with European Union, why, why are you doing for you right now? I mean, we understand he has to leave. Unfortunately, he has to leave at, at this time when they're not in power. But I, I think that letter was just a bunch of words he put together to waste people time to read it. I'm not going to read the full thing. I just look at the last three paragraphs. No, 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 I didn't read it. You know, I, I, I'm i going to delete it. I will, I will advise or, or, <laughs> or, 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 or Dama Nest. I know he sent it to me. Yeah, because because it, yeah, I'm to tell you the truth. I said, do let's bring you on the show. And that's the reason why I said, do is in darkness. Because this resignation put him in complete darkness. I said, do is still on the show, but he's in darkness. Mobile model resigning. I mean, come on, man. Uh, my man, allow me to call you for that, man. Take on that representative thing about we are crowd of boss then. Yeah, mobile, uh, mobile, yeah, mobile I model resigning. Uh, I see no such thing. So, so, I think yeah. if you look at one of the paragraphs, if you look at one of the paragraphs in uh, Moro's letter, mm -hmm. we say why my loyalty to the CDC has been unwavering. Unwavering, I have occasionally found myself in disagreement with you. He's talking to the president, the former yes. president. Yes. So it tells you that there was issue. I told you I said there had been a lot of issue within, and the fact that there was power around, people wanted to keep around the power and the influence. Now there's no power. People are coming out to look you in the face and say, hey, you've been like this, and I cannot keep along with this. I'm stepping out. So a lot of happened. A lot of people who have had issues within the CDC will step out. They believe they cannot stay within such a culture. And um, I think Mulu been one of those few grassroots in the CDC, understand a lot within the CDC. And if CDC is crashing from within, we hear a lot of different things out in the public within the just not too distant future. Is a terrible sign for CDC as a party moving there. No, 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 you don't bring Asado in because if you look at the precedent, right? As I beg you, I want you to come in from this from this angle. Do Stella, it. Before you bring Asado in, can I just add something so you can add to it? A, a thought that came to my mind. When the president came today, he said about two times, I'm here to work on the party. He repeatedly said the party. So I'm wondering then, Malu is also talking about, I'm going to revitalize the CDC domestic and global political standing. That's one of the things he said in his letter. So if we have this friction between both of them, yeah, person, we are saying, I'm going to work on my party. That's why I'm here. I'm going to work on my, my party. And we know they, they're not, they're fighting, they're not getting along. I'm, I'm interested to see how this is all going to play out. These two people who are going to be working on this one party. All right, so let's bring in Asa Do because I wanted to play this video, which is so important. Then Asa, you can speak, please. Yes, the video, the president speaking upon his survivor. Don't take us into which VIP launch he came through. We we'll discussed that. Let's. I want to play this video in connection to mobile resonation, please. The African society. So the, this is not the first time winning a war in every field that uh, I've been to or that I went to, that I won the war. I think it's a respect. And I'm happy, you know, I'm a hardworking person. I love to work. And uh, um, so I'm back home from vacation to do my party work mm -hmm. until the, uh, the party get back to where it's supposed to be. Mr. President, my name is Jefferson Nguyen. I'm um, good for Liberia's like, only political blood, Shang Liberia. Shang Liberia. Oh, are you? Are you <laughs> How is life uh, as of the presidency? But uh, uh, before the presidency, they seen life. That's what you see. <laughs> <laughs> I have a different life. You know, when I was not president, this life, that what I live, you know, with my family and uh, other colleagues. But again, uh, uh, we have the opportunity now to move around, you know, the, whether it's our city or the country or just going on a free trip. We have that opportunity now, 
and to guide our party and then to the next uh, uh, journey of, of of the party. And now we're ready, you know, to speak about the AOC Society and what have you. Okay, thank, you thank, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So speak about the ills in society as a do. While he about to speak about the ills in society, his party chairman is stepping aside and saying, you are one of the problem for this country and therefore I'm resigning. I do not want to work with you any longer. I do not support your agenda to remain as your chairman. Minister Do, sedition Do, talk to Labyrinth tonight, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, let me... Uh, who can give a salute to Mobamolu, who has shown beyond all reasonable doubt the tenets of any good leader that you need in the society. Mobamolu's single tax as a chairman of the CDC was to guard the CDC to political power. The CDC went to an election and they now win. The least expected of the leader is to put forth the interest of the people over yours. And that's what he did. Today, as we are speaking, the Republican Party chair lady has resigned and will be leaving her, pa her power, her position on March 8th. If we go back in hands in time, we must cheer, we, we must submit, we must, what's his name? Anyway, the we, must former, pay. we must pay. We must pay. The former chairman of the UP was a spell. And as we know, then Black Eye did not have a working relationship any good with his former boss, President Story, until he referred to himself as a packed car not being used by his boss. In as much as you can do bread and butter and swaddles, glass of juice, the reality remains. Moma Mulu has made the CDC a party to beat even during the time of our God governance. Today, he has resigned. And of course, anyone who understands politics knows everything he wrote in his letter makes sense to a political opposition party chairman. As a political party from the opposition, you are a government in waiting. That's the reason why Molu, as the outgoing chairman of the party, is giving pieces of advice to the party on they enhance their global connection with Washington, with Europe, and the rest of the places. Unless we're in, you have not passed through his K1 class of political understanding before you were asked on why should an opposition party be engaging outside forces. You are a part government in waiting. And so I will only say, don't go back and forth. Chairman Molu has played his part. He stood the test of time. He led the CDC through the most difficult times. Being a governing party is one of the most difficult jobs to do, where the entire country's problem rests on the shoulder of you and your government. And so, hey, there is absolutely nothing beyond Ahu Setomoru besides giving him all of what he deserves. The party did not win the election. It is the right thing to do to allow new faces, new ideas come in. And that's what he did. If you are a leader, it shouldn't be just about you. It should be about the greater good of the people you represent. Muma Molu is putting the interests of the people in front than his. He could stay on, no matter who have taken off, who could have defended him, but he decides to look at CDC as a political party representing the interests of millions of Liberia, Liberians, and not just Moba Molu. You can ask all the questions you want to ask. If what Moba Molu did today is what our leaders who do, we will be having a good society. Wherein, when you know it is not working, you step aside and allow fresh ideas to come. That's why those who've been in politics for 50, 60 years and have contributed nothing but continues to be there are people that continue to carry on. Mumavolu saw that his leadership had successes, of course, but the ultimate goal was not realized. And so he decided to have fresh ideas, new faces. Come on. Kudos to you, Molu. 
we are with you wherever you go, and we know you will be one of us. The CDC as a party has had chairperson upon chairperson, and the party never dies. And the CDC will never, ever die because it is a party bigger than any single individual, even me, even President Weir, even Vice President, former Vice President, Joel Howe to you, Mulu, I salute you, my brother. So thank you very much, Asado. We expect nothing less. Nothing less from you. Seriously. I, I really, really, I'm serious. Let's just welcome to the show, Ellis Coffey. Ellis, welcome, my brother. It, 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 is, it is important for mm -hmm. us all. Yeah, it is important for us all to understand. Give it one line. Uh, Mr. Formula, uh, Mr. President, I resign as chairman from CDC slash CDC. That was going to be enough. That was just, just enough. Every other thing that Tabata, all the don't say, I said, don't talk in here. We salute you, Madam. No, 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 no. I said, is bleeding. You have an internal bleeding right now. We got to take him to JFK right now. The party has crumbled. The party. Listen to your former, your president, who is the former president. Let's forget the fact that they like the door in for him, the building he built. They say, Unity Party like the door in for him and say, you cannot enter in that building. And shamefully, the president were looking for a place to go. Listen to what he said. We are here. And he talked with ills. And one of the problems, one of the ills, was right there, Moba Madu. He had his letter in his hand. What, 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 what am I, Bill? He had the letter in his hand. A public arrival of George Manor, we are. Let's say they just want to arrest him. Moba Madu said, There you go, sir. I'm done with you. The person said, What's this? He said, I'm going on Facebook. I just turned on my resignation. I said, how can you? Listen, I'm not mad. Because to me, Alex, to me, I care less. Whether he stay there or he stay there or we still beat him again. So I care less. But the time and the season, I mean, I think it was wrong, though, Alex. The man just coming from catching birds. He must say he just came back from vacation. And you just going to slap him in the face like that? You couldn't even sit down with him and brief him on issue. And I think Honorable Formula will agree with me. Sit down first and give him some update. How far we have brought the party? What's going on? The engagement. Then at least you say, you know what? In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to resign. Why today, Alex? Why? Well, I mean, I mean, hello to everybody. Um, in, uh, yeah, my man, I just grab you like that by the high up, everybody. I just grab you like hello that. Hello to the panelists here. Um, Francine and um, Glendy, the other women are here out there. Hello, hello Rep, uh, 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 Honorable Fodic. How are you? I'm back, you brother. My own man, Isaac Do, what's up? Yeah, but I mean, I think, I think, in my own view, I think, um, I think Moba Molu had reached his zenith. I think he's, um, I think he's tired. That's, that's, that's how I would say it. And, 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 Except that the, the letter was too long, but I think it was time for him to call it quit because literally, I if I'm if I stand to be corrected, I saw something like he was trying to organize a retreat or something, and then um, the standard bearer wrote countering that and other stuff. And I mean, we all know that there's there's been back and forth between them um, from the time you know CDC won the elections in 2017. So um, there had been some dissatisfaction, and we all know the famous story with the um, liquor talk uh, tape and all that stuff. So yep. there, there have been some issues. So I think his research is in it. You're right. The man said they're going for a retreat. The president said, don't you dare try. The man said, I'm the chair on the General Executive Assembly, how you call that GC or how you call it EC. The president said, don't try. The man said, we're going to Grand Basel. The president said, don't try. Everything Moba said he was going to do. Joel was on his back because the information that came over on the formula was that Joe, we are going to make Eugene Nagwe the party chairman. So mobile models total wise. Listen, folks, again, I'm not mad, but everything 
Everything, as you see in that, go and read that something. The first part you got to say, I resign, I said, only sensible thing, the rest of them are trash. <laughs> the rest of them are trash. But let's move on. If any of you guys get anything to add, we add it. We got we get plenty to talk on tonight. Let's move on. We got somebody in the FIU stealing 500 out the allegation, to be frank. The allegation, the document we have in our possession, you are not even see that one on front page Africa. The amount of money. Hey man, but go ahead. Anybody got something to say on the yeah. about it? We leave it up. Yeah, just a second. Um, I just wanted to see, you know. Let's give the um, honorable man a chance, then you can come oh, and yeah. answer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you continue to read the letter, the conclusive aspect of that letter is that Molu is raising a red flag. Is it Mr. President? Some of the decisions that had impact on us. What were some of the major decisions? Stakeholders in the CDC, they were sanctioned. And he made reference of some of the major capital cities. He said, you need to be able to melt things in this capital city. And he showed that some of the decisions can be revised. He sent a, a war signal politically. There will be a lot of fight. I'm telling you, yeah. um, our yeah. CEO. I take it from the regional standpoint. If you look at the regional blog within the CDC, you will observe that the convention that brought Molu as chairman of the CDC, uh, that convention brought a lot of guys who hail from Lofa County. They took over the CDC. So you see the Molu, the former um, deputy minister, um, the guy from Fanice, the former minister from Fanice, you had Jeff from Lofa. You had a lot of different guys from the the they are from Lofa. So there'll be a lot of internal fright. What a regional block, because you had a, the major base of the CDC that elections proved to us was the Southeast. The guys are not in charge of that party. So they will come back for that party. They will come back to prove that base. Molu comes from the Lofa. Lofa, yes, Lofa took something around 25%, but the, the, the Southeast was something around 75%. So they need that party. And most of the guys in leadership, they politically they will not keep them around. I, 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 I'm not seeing them within the next few weeks or months. People will go after them. They will want to organize a, a convention. Though is that where politically you need to bring the guys who have the base in the party. <laughs> and I think it is just from that uh, window that Mulu is saying, hey, I cannot keep on. Because if I'm here talking about concession and you had a president who is uh, about to start to speak about ills in society. When he took him six years, he could not bring any other company to a book. I think <laughs> it's a waste of time. <laughs> so anyone who is in that party will say, no, I think we're going, we're heading somewhere else. So we need to be very serious. Some of the guys who have authority to bring some of the concessions to book, they do not have moral standing to ask the librarians people to do anything. We need to be able to look in their faces and say you had the opportunity, you had a decision to take, and you didn't take the decision. Correct. I yeah. think I should be here, stay arguing, I channel you, and not live up to their obligations. When you had a president who lived in bone mines, he grew up in bone mines, he didn't do anything in that six years. As you stand with him and say, what? No. I think if you're talking about oppositions, yes, I'm an independent. I will not be able to rally around such an op opposition because they just don't have a clear path as to what they want to do in terms of ensuring that there's corporate accountability. So, yes, we're not diving into the, the ordinary politics, but yeah. I believe in the next few days, a lot of happening. It, it, it's, good, it's good that you're hanging out with us, my man. Please, thank you very much because we got a lot to discuss. We're going to go after as to do. We'll ask why, who. We're going to be calling Madera Cooper to tell us who authorized, who authorized the closure of the VIP launch, the presidential launch? We'll be speaking of Madera Cooper tonight. Who gave the right information saying, do not allow President Weah to enter that building? Who? So let's bring in Asi. Asi, can you close us on this one before we move on? Yeah, sure. Thank you. And I'm not sure because something did not happen in the last six years. So it is okay for it not to happen until today. I don't think that's the country uh, my brother or uh, Fody is representing in the house. I don't think so. I think he's looking for improvement where the bad things from yesterday can be good today. Um, I'm very, very certain he wouldn't be representing the people on the basis of what happened yesterday should be the same thing happening today. But let's go on the mobile model issue. Um, the mobile model letter contradicts almost every propaganda political stunts that have been around, where almost everyone has said, George Weah is a person where no one can disagree with. Joe Weah, Mama Modu just mentioned that. 
It, it only tells you that CDC is a vibrant political party that welcomes voices from opposing sides. Mwamalu comes and they disagree with something, the president disagrees with him, but they find a way to move on. It's only today people are saying Mwamalu leaving, although he is not leaving the CDC, as he's saying, he is stepping down from his position, it tells you what a political party the CDC is. It's a party where the voices of everyone, regardless of which side you think, matters. And this is what I think our country should appreciate. Unfortunately, we have a country today where you must be a certain side before you are respecting our society. CDC has brought that. Mumamolu shows that, that this political party is not a one man's idea. It's a party with opposing views, wherein everyone having their own part can come to the table and disagree. And so Mubamudu letter, good thing, contradicts all of the political talking points out. And I think we should go on to certain issues that actually mean well for our country, Liberia. The CDC Thank issue is you. You know, folks, let me say this, a bad week for CDC starting yesterday. Very bad week. It's gonna just go down in the history of one of the worst week, the president came to the country after spending 2,000 years out catching pigeon. He came back to the country today. They said Unity Party liked to do on him. <laughs> Yesterday, we reported the people had reopened the case again and say the people went take the land, invade them, get them out of the Sakuma tree. The documents all over there. Today, the chairman frustrated, he resigned. In less than 48 hours, Alex, CDC is having a bad week. And the president, what did he say when he came to the country? What did he say? He said, I'm coming. I'm here. I'm here, folks. I'm here to deal with the ills. Six years you had the ills. <laughs> Six years. You dance in the, you dance buka in the ills. <laughs> now, after catching PJ, you come to deal with ills. I said, don't woke me up and said, look at the people welcoming person and where. I said, where? He said, let me send you the video. Let's play the video. No, you ain't seeing the people. I won't see the people that welcoming person and where. So I want you to be easy. Let's play the video. For no reason, right? Woke up this morning, take my junior to school, Came back trying to rest to get ready to run to the office. I said, Okay, we may have look at the street, it's jam packed. The people welcoming personal wear. I said, But I said, I'm not there. Where's the video? He said, Let me send it to you. Let's play the video, my people. We're playing to the end, we got about 10 more seconds. Yeah, hey. Let's see the people. I didn't know that we are getting tested drive here from one two. Hey God. What up? Let me all in the phone right now. Hey, this thing is hell. Let's go in the film, man. As it was a massive crowd. What well, massive? With a presidential ex uh, Massive crowd. <laughs> so let, 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 let me say something. No, 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 let us know what your piece. Dr. Richardson, help us understand what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah, I hear surprise. people saying that we are got pressure. No, they say, uh, we are in town, we are got pressure. We are in town, we got pressure. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I I did not see a massive welcome. Uh, I saw, you know, 
fats and people or people there. Um, you know, but he's not president anymore. So I, I don't expect that Brian people to be welcoming him. So like that anyway. So it was it was good to to see him riding like a like a common person in the country. Um yeah, that that's that's my thought about that. I will. Thank you, Dr. Richard. Say, yeah, yes, the issue, guys. I want to hear your own thought. We'll call my dad a cool point because the, the main question is who locked the door? December president, we have blessed that place. Why they lock him out? No, no, I, I, I can beat on president, where, but I have a different view about what the treatment they gave president we have today. I, I don't think it was fair. Mm. Seriously, that's not a precedent we should set. It never came from the executive mansion, I can tell you so. But we'll call Madela Cooper on this one. Alex, what the way, what, what the, the, put this together. Forget a joke, we, we did a joke as an honor to year. But they lock him out. He couldn't get to the new VIP lounge. Well, yeah, I, I mean, like, like I, 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 I was watching the show earlier, like I heard uh, Francine said, um, I, there, there is a new presidential launch or what I don't know the configuration, so I wouldn't speak to that. But generally, I think as a former president, he should be allowed, you know, that courtesy to go through the VIP situation. Um, but again, the new configuration could be maybe there's a presidential launch and there's a VIP launch, and maybe he wanted to go through the VIP, I mean, presidential launch, and they said no. So I don't know, but generally he should be allowed to go through a VIP launch as the, I mean, the, the, the former president is, you know, is grant is, is accorded some, some courtesies and, and he has immunities and, and things like that. I mean, former presidents around the world, they're entitled to certain things. So I think uh, that respect and that courtesy should be granted him all the time, generally. Well, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, Honorable Fumbler, what, 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 I mean, what's your thought? What's going on here? You know, I I think like um Alice said, we are as a former president, he should be treated as such. And uh, when he's coming in the country, if there are proper notice, because when you are coming as a VIP, there should be some communication between your team and the local team to be able to prepare the environment that you deserve. Mm -hmm. If there was not sufficient notice, someone on the ground who have taken a decision that will implies that someone from the upper, the higher up was taking a decision. So I think we need to be able to assess the situation to understand what really happened, who was caught in the shot, who was saying what, and how was the situation like? Because I think there have been a lot of issues unfolding around that VIP loss. I, there was something I think with the, what I heard a few months ago, was that the guy who did the launch, the CDC has some money for him. The government by then has some money for him and they could not pay it up to the point where the inauguration was about a few days to come. And Boyka stepped in, they tried to find some funding to complete that project. While the project was being completed and he felt the government didn't play him well, the president, the former president went there, he dedicated a building, he got on plane, he left. So there have been a lot of issues around that VIP loss. And we need to understand what really happened on the ground. Maybe some of those guys are still in charge of that property. And if the necessary communic necessary communications are not safe, they who are put in place some unwanted behavior. But it is not called for. He's a former president. He should be treated with all due respect. I think every leader will want to be treated with some due respect. So the issues of we are, and that is a notice for him and his form and his team that he's no longer the president. When he's traveling, he should be able to get formal notice to the different apparatus to be able to communicate within their links to establish the necessary cordial respect he deserves. Because or, or else other people might want to play party politics and they respect him in the context of their own role. All right, you, I, uh, listen, before I bring in my sister, uh, Kalasko, I think he, he, he said that there were former, former notice plays while they were in Ghana. 
Uh, if you go is the presidential aid to the president, he said we say in the request while we're in Ghana. So the date. You, you um, know, see, see, oh, when I'm saying when I'm saying notice, you need to be able to communicate formally. That's a formal president. It's not about one man taking the phone and say the president will be coming two o'clock tomorrow. No. Well, right. well, well, well uh, I'm not here to defend President Weir and his team. Uh, I don't think Alaska, is, I don't is, think Alaska is, want to explain in detail. But I think no. they need a lot of assessment to be done to understand who said what. No one trying so, to defend the, the actions against the former president. I said it's just a notice that in the future such things should not happen again. Because so let, let me ask you, as a as a representative, man, what would be your advice to the UP government? I think the first thing is that few things will happen. No one will question president. We are not being popular. If a former president is still actively involved in local politics, people treat you like ordinary opposition. And this is Africa. The way they treat ordinary oppositions, they suppress you, they push you around, they do a lot of different things that are not called for. So most often you observe, most of the former president try to retire to save their face and live with respect. When the former president still want to actively engage the political field, people treat you like an ordinary person. And I think that's something the former president need to look at is it that he want to actively engage the political field to be seen as a force within the opposition that people want to take him on because when people start to take him on politically they want to take it in the context of their political party alignment so president we have deserve all level of respect and the first time when he said he was leaving politics it was received we are uh, a lot of people appreciated that statement not coming back say he coming to start speaking against ills people will start to analyze it saying plus or minus a lot of things will happen I think the best thing to do is to be able to assess what has happened. To so you're telling President where to be quiet and let CCS fly by quietly. Uh, it's to not be quiet. It's to be able to play a more diplomatic role. As so you're telling moment. President where to be diplomatic. You're telling President where to look at the ills as he called it to just sit uh, back and be quiet because it will be important. You don't want people to dirty his white suit. <laughs> no, it's to not see the ills and not talking, but you can be able to communicate some of the issues, but not taking the the the, the regular radical posture of a normal African opposition. Okay, Glendy. So I think there are a couple of things that's happening here, and we have to be um, very cautious. For me, um, this morning when I saw it first, I overreacted immediately and said it was wrong. Then as I ask questions, there are three launches at the airport, ordinary, VIP, presidential. President Weah was denied the presidential launch, not the VIP. He went through the VIP. He wanted to go through the presidential and they said, no, presidential is only for setting precedents and incoming president to the country. And that's what happened. So if that was the case, then he was not denied. Then he went through the launch that he should have gone through. We also have to follow protocols. It's like the honorable uh, uh, um, representative is saying, when I read from page Africa's away, I got the story from first, that Colasco told them. Now, how were they informed? How was the current government informed of our former, former, former president returning? So all of those things, we have to look at pieces, bits and pieces before we, I, for me, I had to take a, it was a knee jerk movement for me when I saw, I was like, why would they deny him? Until I found out that no, he was not denied to the VIP launch, which he's supposed to go through. And it's the same launch that Ellen Johnson said uses back and forth. He never used the presidential launch. And so he's not president now. So that's the launch for him to use. If that's what happened, I have no qualms with that. None. Thank you. I, I thank you. Thank you. Uh, as it though. You're muted, Minister Do. Yeah, we are we are we are in a sad, sad times of our country. Uh for the uh, uh, it was it is my assumption that you are a lawmaker. And as a lawmaker, I thought you understand the global politics. I know 
I'm sure you are aware that the, the Ghanaian opposition leader right now is the former president. I'm not sure if you forgot about that. And I'm sure you are also aware that Donald Trump is the former president who's running. I'm not sure in your political world, former presidents keep quiet. I don't know about that. Thank you for teaching some of us that. But no, let's go no, to real let me, issue. Yeah, let me just continue. When I end, yes, you'll come back. Let's, let's, right, let's go to the real issue. You know, President, we are accepted the results of the election with less than 20,000 vote margin. In my mind, that alone presented President Bwakai a very big opportunity in uniting the country. The country has two sides right now. One side follows George Weir, one side follows President Bwakai. The fact that President Weir had accepted the election result by the way he has, and we all know for the first time in the history of Africa, I thought the president would be tapping into that to ensure he uses that as a channel to bring forth reconciliation. And I will always want to believe the actions of this government will determine what hold they fall in. When you come to power and start dismissing people from across ministries who you perceive to be sedition, when you come to power and start targeting people in turning position that you perceive to be seditions. And then you go to the far as denying the leader of half the country, what he who never deny you of, in my mind, you are creating a hole that you may soon regret. It is okay for President Bwakai to be in his air condition and listen to people that are driving him to where he will never thought of getting there. So let me tell you, somebody said, President, former President Ellen was using the other VIP, but that place was just dedicated recently. I'm not sure when former President Sarif came in country for which he didn't use it or use the other place. It was just recently put into use. So the real thing here is, in other sense, the airport has one VIP in other sense. The old one and the new one. When the new one was dedicated, the old one then went in to the new one. And I beg our people, this is a very important issue. You can take it to be political and talk in political ways. But President we are commands a huge voice in Liberia. And if you want a country that is reconciled, in my mind, you want to tap into that path. Let's when President Bwakai was former vice president, every time he came into the country, he used the VIP that was available at that time. And again, let's take the argument that it is for president. Vice President Jeremiah Kuhn is not president. When he was leaving the country recently, can someone please ask which VIP did he go through? He is not president. He's vice president. So the argument that it is for president is something that will make anybody sleep. It is a launch for VRPs. If president, we are as former head of state. You can like him, you can hate him, you can swallow him, you can vomit him. One fact remains, he is the immediate past head of state. If he does not fit in the category of VRP, let someone who fits that category. And then worse to it, you saw the presidential press secretary fighting herself on Facebook, saying this, contradict herself, get vest with herself, get angry with herself, explaining a function that she should not be putting herself into. I don't know if she understands that anything she says is interpreted as the president telling her. She is not the minister of information. It is the Minister of Information that speaks for the government outside of what the president says. So when she comes and says, oh, President Baca, President Weir was will work on open arms, it means the president told her that. And I think we should be very embarrassed and concerned as Liberians, regardless of your political ideology, that we will get at a country where a former president will be denied entry into a VIP launch that, in fact, he constructed. I thought it is shameful, I thought it is diabolical, and you can twist it any way you want to be. 
the feat that George will achieve in life. Many of us at 90% will not be privileged to achieve it. And that's a contest that we you. must give. Thank you, Asset. Thank you, Asset. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Pamela, let me give you a chance. Go ahead, sir. Yes, yeah, see you. The first thing I want for Asset to get clear here. I said something. I said, if a former president wants to put himself in an active political mood, he's treated in a way that other oppositions are treated. Take for an example. Right here, Trump. He made reference of Trump. Trump is a former president. What is happening to Trump? Trump is every day in court. He will never be a president. As I gave you time. Right. <laughs> I listen to you, brother. In America, one of the best democracies in the world, Trump is almost in court every day. He's a former president, but he's in court every day. People are arresting Trump to the extent where they put him beyond bar. He fired bomb. Now he's fighting the fire bomb. Half billion. That's how they treat they are treating a former president who is actively involved in politics. Let me give you another uh, example. Where you in Guinea? Kuruman. Kuruman was just charged in Guinea and he fled uh, Guinea. He went to Nigeria. Because you are getting involved in active politics, meaning he 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 didn't he could communicate his issue diplomatically and do a lot of things. But when you get out there and want to put stay mail on public peace, a lot of things will happen. I said the issues at the airport was something that we need to look at as a leader. Every leader will deserve respect. But if you put the former president in the space of an opposition block, in the space of a leading of, of leading the opposition. Uh, community. Believe me, a lot of things you think should be um, the reasonable respect place in, uh, on a former leader, people might not want to give that to him because of politics. So I'm not saying the actions there was right because I've not assessed the situation there. Go for content in Guinea right here. They indicted uh, content in November. So almost all of them who are trying to get involved in politics. So some of you who are very close to the former president need to sit with him and tell him, Mr. Former President, few things you need to get right. If you are coming to active politics, no one will treat you like a regular president. No. People will go after you. People will go, if you have any issues, they will treat you like a regular opposition. What I think is if he's coming back into politics. Well, I kind of confused, the honorable man. Honorable man, I kind of oh. confused. I, honorable, I man, think, honorable, yeah. honorable man, honorable man, that 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 try to push you small now. You too cool in that in that kosu. I kind of confused. I, I don't think you would tell president we are because you former president, so therefore sit in the back and send as a door to do your politic talking, because you okay. former president don't put yourself in the issue when they talk about turning your position. I mean, who best to challenge this government? So what we are I, saying, no, let me let me let me end on this now. Uh, 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 I beg you because we we got to run to the other issue real quick. Who best to challenge this government? Donald Trump. Donald mm -hmm. Trump is on the back. You can't tell him anything because he been there. He been under the water. He know the crocodile from the lizard. He know exactly how to engage Russia because he engaged them before. He know how to speak about these things in government. He sat in the Oval Office. He want to go back there. So it's just matter where. If you put so, it matter where, I would tell you, he said no. But let's talk about the issue about who locked the door in front of him. I but, spoke to him about CEO. CEO. Yeah, I I said, that, sir. What I said was just clear. I think uh, Gladys said something. She said when, the, when she tried making some calls and the clarity she got was that it was the presidential law she was not the vip law she had access to the vip law so the real fight is that we need to be able to assess the situations and get few informations from the airport to understand what really happened on the ground i'm saying to right, as right, a, right, let me interrupt you because the whole thing will be speaking to the political advisor to the president madam uh mcdetta cooper because today, when I received the information, I spoke to all of, all of my sources, I got a full story. And I told Madam Cooper, I said, listen, I'm not going to come and talk about this issue if one of you guys don't show face tonight. And like always, she says, stay down, I'm coming on. Madam Cooper, welcome to the show. This is the political advisor to the president, Joseph Yuma Buaka. Welcome to the show, Madam Cooper. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you, Stanton. It's great to be on here as usual. Thank you very much. The issue about who liked the door in front of President George Manor, we are a former president, George Manor, we are stop, stop him from entering the VIP presidential launch, man. Can you help us understand what really happened today? 
Well, uh, Stanton, look, I actually was not on the site or on a scene when and when this happened, this uh, uh, situation happened. Um, I, look, I, I know from sh for sure from our side, there was never any instruction given to anyone at the airport to lock the doors in front of the former president. Yeah, so look, this thing to me is just, uh, I think it's just some something that, that, that sort of staged to get some attention. And I don't think we should give it any any play right now. We got more relevant things to, to focus on, to talk about that's happening in the country. Our people need jobs. We're trying to bring investments into the country. We're trying to make sure GMB start of the his presidency, you know, his best foot forward. So so we, we should focus on more of the economy and how to make up great opportunities for like Brandon Putin to talk about who locked door in former president's face. So, it, it, so you you are giving this a less concern, though. I, I mean, the yes. argument from CDC, and I, I I really want us to understand here. The argument from CDC, he keep putting a request. I listen. I'm on my way back to the country, and somebody took the request and you know and gave a direct order from the executive mansion. Are you saying the executive mansion ordered no one whatsoever? To uh, absolutely, the executive mansion ordered no one to close the door in anybody's face. Uh, whether it's the former president or it's anybody else for that matter, uh, we give no such instruction. And so um, I think, look, if, if people are looking for things to talk about, I would like to uh, you know, gear their attention towards talking about things that's relevant to our people. This is all about the librarian people. No one should be talking about who in VIP lounges because our people are not living VIP lives right now. There's a lot of issues going on in the country. We need to focus on it. Um, and so I think, I think, I think if they're just looking for attention, that's the wrong time to find such attention. All right, please allow the, the, the rest of the panelists to throw in because I like how straightforward you are on this matter. But again, uh, the, Dr. Richardson, I have my daughter Cooper, though. Um, I, I think the question for me is the configuration, the layout of the building. Are there three lounges, as uh, my sister Glenny said, the uh, lounge that is available for all passengers, and there's uh, also the presidential lounge and then, of course, the VIP lounge. Can you just share your thoughts about that? I mean, I'm in favor of if he's not president, he shouldn't come to the presidential lounge. The only people who should come to the presidential lounge are people who the president uh, permits to come to that. So if he's VIP, then he can come to the VIP. He is a VIP in the country. So what's what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, yes, to your question, Dr. Um, Francine, there were there are two lounges, but sort of three lounges in a sense. So there's an area called a VIP lounge, which is the, which is the one that has been in function um, over the past few years since Madame Sirleaf's uh, administration into the Whale-led administration. Um, it was divided into two. There was a private space that was created for the president. Um, and the president's guests or foreign dignities, uh, dignitaries that were coming into the country, there was separate room created for them. And then you had the basic lounge for all VIPs coming to the country or leaving the country. So that one building had two spaces into it, uh, which makes you know the two different lounges, one for the president and one for VIPs. Now, there's a separate new building that was constructed um, throughout the entire six years, was being built, built towards the end of the Wales administration. We man has uh, president elect and team. The president elect's team. The president elect gave instructions that he will uh, complete the lounge, and he did. He called the contractors who are owed tons of money for the work they did there, who never got paid, and His Excellency uh, Joseph Imabuakai called the contractors to the table because I was present, and he told them, look, I'm going to inherit the debt anyway, so go ahead and finish it up. And so they did. And I remember very well that the outgoing president decided to uh, inaugurate the lounge or launch the lounge or whatever um, was <laughs> done there to celebrate the opening of the lounge after His Excellency just said, my poor guy had given instructions. No, hold, 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 hold on one minute. My, my, my dad, hold on one minute. Hold on one minute. But that's you, is you. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you are telling us that the president, former president, George Manor, we are stored the glory. But Damo. after he didn't pay. Oh, the contractors were owed tons of money to complete the lounge, and it just halted the work 
Wow. We knew we were going to be receiving tons of uh, high profile heads of state. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Country. Yeah. I was part of the team that went out to to take a look at the entryway to the country through the airports, the lounges, and little things that had to be done. But I very much knew I came back with the report myself and other members of the team and reported to His Excellency President, then President elect, Sevima Borkai, and he gave us strict instructions to open the lounge, get the work done. Make sure that the heads of states that are coming to the country go through the presidential lounge. And within no time, the contractors finish it. Um, and we heard. I, I'm country sorry, country. who put in the furniture? Uh, um, I mean, Cooper, who put in all those furnitures? Look, I really don't want to waste too much time on the lounge business, but the furniture I have ordered, President elect Joseph Borkai gave me strict instructions along with the finance team to order furniture for the lounge are you kidding me wow we got a call that uh, furniture was brought from the mansions to put in the lounge um and so we held on to the trucks from going out to place the furniture in there and furniture was brought in from the mansion and placed overnight into the lounge but again these are all minor things we want to focus on how we can create jobs his excellency just like your i wants to focus on creating jobs for library people he wants to make sure the rule of law is applying so that when investors come here, what's on the books is what we put into practice. And so the lounge issue is minor. It makes great news, of course, but let's focus on the librarian people. You know, on that note, when we're really not going to waste your time. And so I say, you got anything to say? Because you don't want to. Oh, yeah, I do. I so do. I, uh, real quick, uh, uh, I got another day. Uh, uh, advice uh, go turn to the librarian people business. But go ahead, Isaac. Uh, thank you, Madam Presidential Advisor. How are you doing? Nice to be on the show. I have a question for you, but before I get there, let me say I heard your story from the grass to the bush to the coming back, going around the planet, and not sticking to the issue. But let me say, Madam uh, Presidential Advisor, you are speaking on the national platform with both former government people in this country and present government people. It will be okay for you to be political since you are a political advisor to the president. Oh, well, Madam Advisor, you know to your God giving conscience, and it's not okay to come up here and say things that you know are absolutely not true. You know what I'm talking about. And Madam Advisor, you know that President Baikai did not order for no chairs, no furniture, no way. The person of Baikai paid and all the bills, the revenue bills. First of all, Sergeant, yes, ma'am. Tremendous amount of respect for you and your platform. No, no, I beg you to give a guest. I said, I said, I said, we don't make my daughter Cooper. No, she's going to end. I said, I'm begging you, please. Go ahead, I'm going to ask my question. Isaac, I, 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 I do understand that, look, you might have a different uh, reality, but we live in the universal reality. And I speak from the position of the global reality. So let me respond to what you just asked. His Excellency President Joseph Ima Borkai gave me personal instructions to order furniture for the lounge and i did and i have the invoices of central stanton which can be posted on his show and right it was not too long after we heard there was going to be the president george modern way outgoing president was going to uh, 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 uh launch the lounge so i'm not sure exactly what alter reality you are speaking from but the reality that most people live in in this republic called liberia is there reality I'm speaking from, my dear brother? And so I do have invoices and stores that would tell you there were trucks ready to go put furniture in that presidential lounge. I worked along with some credible members of our team to make sure the lounge was completed. I told them where to put the crush rocks along with the team. And so please, my dear brother, I don't just talk. I speak the people's reality. That's what I speak. I speak well, with my friends. Madam Cooper, Madam Cooper, please. I know you're too busy. Let me allow you to ask the direct question, his last question. I'm begging you, please take this one. I said, can you be no. pointed for your question, now, sir? Madam Advisor, 
reality is not defined by what you say. Reality is defined by what is there as truth. Your but reality is very far different from my reality. So and let me see. Can you go to the question, please? Oh, I'm. I have to engage the lady. She said, "Allow me engage her a little bit." She's our leader. Let me engage her. So, Madam Advisor, according to what you said, you said the president elect asks you to order chair. Liberia has, has many re records. I don't think one of the records is giving the president elect power to ask you to order chair. And you just said after you order chair, then the president went and dedicated the place. I am very quite sure you are aware that the truth beyond your truth is that President elect doesn't have any power to order anything unless you are saying after inauguration before. Look, 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 I don't know what you're talking about, where you're quoting from. The president was moving the country in the right direction. You got let me let me I'm not asking you with wrong direction or right direction. Six years, sir, sir. Let me speak. You had six years to build a road, and you failed to build a road to get you re-elected. You failed to build a road. When we, when President Joseph Yuma Bokai came in, he ordered the road to be finished by the contractors, and the road was 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 ninety five to ninety percent or more completed for the heads of states that was coming to this country and the guests of the inauguration. Now, again, the reality versus your minor reality. And no, no, no insult here. No, no insult intended. No, who are you people insult insult people. people? I don't insult people. people. Give, 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 us, give us a chance as they're backing you. Floor. I have the floor. I will speak and finish before you speak. Now, please, I will. President Joseph I order the contractors to finish the road. And you saw what happened. President Joseph Ima Bokai, then President Led, ordered the lounge to be completed. And it was. And we used the lounge for every head of state that came into this country. So you might want to go back with you and your friends to go and check the record. So don't speak about my reality because I'm speaking the people reality. So again, I will always come back because they, this is with us now. The UP people can, can just wait. Again, I will remind you that the reality you are speaking of is the reality defined by you. The reality I'm speaking of is the reality defined by the world. And let me come back to you, Madam Evasa. Madam Evasa? When has it become a norm on earth that a vice, a president elect, has power to be ordering things when another president is still president? Madam, a vice, let me say that in our end. You are not talking to Mumu people. <laughs> you are not talking to Mumu people. The president of the country is just one president until inauguration finishes. There has never been a time in the history of our planet. Cooper, let me just finish. It's, it's always done. I will give you the last one. And here you have the last one. Go ahead. Okay. There is only one president at a time for any country. The president's presidential president for President Weir. Let me have a say. Let me end, Madam Evansa. Let me end. Let me end. Allow me to actually have my own truth, please. Again. There is only one president at a time, and that's all. President, we are cannot be president, Nino President Boakai, and some other elect start ordering people around. I will kind of ask you, Madam Evasa, to advance the president rightly. It does seem these are the reasons why we are getting the results we are getting. But of course, I will say to you again, but it's not from the fair point of truth that President Boakai, when he was president elect, we're ordering anybody to do anything in this country. Thank you. That fact you. is a fact in your fact. Thank you. Thank you. Minister Isaac Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Cooper, you have the last word because I know you're busy. You just decided to give a few seconds. I, I wanted to ask her a question. Thank you. Thank you. You wanted to ask a representative? You want to ask Madam Cooper a question? I ask her a question. Uh, uh, please, you go go last, group, sir. Uh, Madam Advisor, my question to you is that as to whether the former president communicated with the current leadership in terms of its return. Are you aware of such thing? Not, not at all. But again, I'm not the foreign ministry, so I didn't know if any communication came through the foreign ministry. But there was no call place to the mansion, which I'm sure the whole order would be to go to the foreign ministry and the protocols to deal with those things. 
Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Cooper. As always, it's good having you in, in on video or on the radio. We appreciate your time, man. Thank you. I look forward to a much longer show starting. Thank yes, you. Yes, you're welcome. I will. Thanks. Good. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Alex, I'm going to bring you on. You are quiet before I go to Dr. Richard Scene and Glendy. Alex, this kind of exchange, show has exposed a lot of stuff over here. President George Mano, who have refused to pay the women in money at the airport, and therefore, Joseph Yuma Baga came in pay, and President, we are ran ahead to dedicate the building. Yeah, we are. Dr. Yeah. Richard Singh, can you mute, please? Uh, Alex, talk to us. Yes, Stanton, I, I think... Um, yeah, I'm not going to play into all the euphoria and, and things like that. I, Like I said, um, now that uh, I appreciate Glendy making a clarification about the, the configuration of the, 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 the launches, right? And, you know, I read something from somebody on this, uh, among the comments, forgot the guy's name, who alluded to the... Liberal uh, Airport Authority law. I mean, he didn't say specifically, but there is something in the law that focus on security, especially when it comes to you know movement of people and things like that. And and the VIP launches and presidential launches are of no exception. And for security purposes, certain demarcations are done. All right. So even with the with the with the old VIP launch. Um, there, there is that demarcation. There was that demarcation there, that there is a place for the president and his guests, and there is a place for the other VIP. All right, and I have gone into that VIP before, as a VIP person, and I was, you know, in the other, in the, on the other side, where the president came in, and the president went to the other side, the, the rear presidential side. So, it would not be strange that when a new Upstairs. Lunch is <laughs> when a new lunch is built, that lunch now will be reserved for presidential movement. And then the the the, the OVIP lunch as it is will be reserved for VIPs, right? So and for security reasons, maybe those demarcation will be made. But as to which of the VIP, which door was locked and all that other stuff. If the if the new VIP launch is dedicated for the president and the guests, then that's the president, and then the old VIP will be dedicated for the other VIPs. So maybe that's that exactly what happened. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, guys. If anybody want to add one or two things, we have to go to the next story for tonight. We still yeah, got so, so I want to add something. But I'm going to go to Glenny. I said I'll make you the last Glenny, Dr. Richardson, you, then maybe our Honorable Fumula can speak. We will be going to the FIU story out there after this round. We'll talk about who's taking the FIU. I'm so happy that representative is here. Somebody is digging into the uh, 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 FIU, the Financial Intelligence Unit cover. They, they are removing a lot of money. Allegation about one Mr. Cooper. Now, we're going to discuss it. We got the whole spreadsheet. We got all the information. More than what we saw on front page Africa, and that individual say he's on tenure position. So how can you connect this with the tenure? We will have that conversation. Glenny, finish up well, on this. One. I, ju I just want to be very literal. Um, that a vice president is also a VIP. I hope we can agree on that. That the vice president is a VIP, and to buttress my point is to say. We all remember that during President Weir's era, when President Bo when now President Boyka was traveling to the States and they leaked the CCTV camera. It wasn't a VIP launch he went through. When President Boyka, Vice President Boyka traveled, he traveled to the regular ordinary place. That's how the TV camera stuff was leaked. Another point I would like to make is, make is I heard um, Minister Doe saying that in this that President Weir is controlling half of the country, half of the country people, they are beyond Weir, and half of the country are beyond Boyka. I'd like to just, for clarity, Liberia has one president, and that president right now is just a human Boyka. Why it is that there are people 
who still support president, former president we are, he's not the president. So I want to counteract his point when he's telling uh, uh, Ambassador Cooper, or Minister Cooper, or Advisor Cooper, that there is there can only be one president at the time that Boyka was it was uh, um, waiting for inauguration. I also want to ensure that he also makes that point that even though Boy Weir has returned to the country, he's not president. Our country, Liberia, has one president, and that needs to be a fact across the board. No matter what, no matter who supports Weir, Liberia you has one president. You correct? It's true, uh, Dr. Richardson. So, so I wanted to say that uh, I think we got some clarity on the layout. You know, there are three lounges, no matter how we want to slice or dice this matter. And, um, you know, the president has his own lounge that he's entitled to go to. And I believe entitled to give permission on who he wants to be in that lounge, his guests, his vice president, and so on. I also heard, which I agree with, there are certain protocols that relates to arrival that you can't just call from one country and say i'm coming this is what i'm learning from you know the political advisor cooper and also the representative family you have to there's certain things that you have to do it's not a matter of just calling and i'm happy you know that the airport authority uh they have these protocol put in place because you know our country lately have been a place where contraband has been coming through quite regularly okay so if they are putting these protocol in place relating to arrival and how you can enter the country I think it's, it's, it's good for our country that we don't get drugs and other kinds of bans coming into the country. Um, and to speak to, to Glenny's point, uh, when I hear things about uh, the country needs to be reconciled, it kind of scares me a lot. I don't think we should be putting fear in the people of Liberia, okay? Right now, we want a reconciled country, a reconciled country, because in the end, we all Liberians would benefit. And I hope that the CDC and President Wea, who's going to speak about the ills of society, the former President Wea, and you, my brother, I said, do here. I hope that that is the message that we continue to promote a reconciled country. We don't want to go backward to a place where we have a divided country anymore. Um, let's give uh, the press secretary, Kula, for finding some grace. I heard you talking about her too, I said, do. This is new for her. All right, uh, let's give her some grace. She's she's doing well, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of times we have women in this, these positions. Everybody likes to complain and, and, and talk about what they're doing and what they're not doing. She's doing the best that she can. It's a tough job, and I'm sure with due time, she's going to get the hang of it or make a decision as to what where she wants to move forward to. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. I said don't finish up for us to go on to FIU. Yeah, sure. So, few things. First, the fact from our political advisor, from the president, the VIP lunch is not presidential VIP lunch. It's Marie Claire Wea VIP lunch. Just the same way how the old lunch was, the same way how they had VIP side and president side is the same way the new lunch is. They have a presidential office suite in there, but the entire building is not presidential lounge. It is Marie Claire VIP lounge. That's the name. So it is there for VIPs entering Liberia. That includes the president, the vice president, the speaker, the chief justice, the former head of state, and you name the rest of the people. So let's get that straight. And now let me quickly end on the former advisor political doctor from around here that she herself, I'm sure she's laughing out right now, saying that President elect Baka ordered someone to bring chairs and she got an invoice. So, who were paying that money? Which minister was signing now? Like, which ministry it went to? Well, I said uh, people had transitional team and they had to prepare. Well, he said that team. one and then he were referring to the woman as former talk talk. I mean, what kind of conversation is that? Guys, let her, guys, let us finish, please. You're not interrupting. No, 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 guys, 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 I will have to mute both for you. Let us finish, please. I don't do so, this. When so, y'all want to speak, y'all will have the time to speak, but let us finish, please. So, the transitional finish. team is not a government. The transitional team is only get to know how things are going. They don't have power to write any check. They don't have power to do any request, say, please pay this. They have that power. So that's how it works, unfortunately. And 
I'm concerned on which minister the president elect Baka to write a check to pay for chair. Or oh, please do it. I don't know. But again, that is capital letter not you. You have one person at a time. Our FIU former man here, he's a financial man, he knows. How can president elect other a certain minister to red check for certain thing by? Listen, we are not crazy people on here. You can come with your political talking points. You should mingle your voice around and know that it should be clear. There is nowhere on this planet a president elect or transitional thing. Transitional thing is not authority. You don't have power to do anything. You are not minister. You are not nothing. So how can you be elect and be other certain minister? Which ministry did they carry it to? Who? Which minister? Samuel Tuer, that he the one or writing check for president elect back at order to back here. Hey, listen, let's be serious. And I think what happened today should not happen. What happened today was a disgrace. President, we are commenced his country voice. He is a leader, one of the most, if not the most, and I don't know who else can be more than him, admired person in this country. And if you are interested in reconciliation, if you are interested in peace and stability, you want to take those actions that will lead this country into that path. What they did today is terrible, it's wrong, and it is something in my mind they should never do. Thank you very much, I said, though. Uh, are you speaking to us? Uh, CEO. Yeah. You know, when I brought about the issue that has to do with the airport, I said to you, they are doing a back and forth on that situation. But as it was not clear, you know, sometimes we have the fights and we try to play politics with it. There have been a back and forth situation that has to do with the contractor saying he would not build, uh, uh, complete the project because he had not been paid on time. And uh, the government was not making, uh, uh, living up to the contract. A lot of things were going back and forth. And it ended at a point where the former president, when the contractor got amended from the incoming president to complete the work, that his pays would be, his, 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 his money will be paid, those things that they owe him will be paid. I think what happened, what really sparked the whole issue was that the former president, while on his way out of the country, he dedicated that building. So whether President Braga was un, uh, has set up this place only for president, it remains with the priority of the government. So we need to understand it. And as a need to just give himself some time to understand how they've been able to be able to set this the two lodges aside and say what is available for president and what is available for ordinary VIP. So if we understand that the former president will only go at the lodge that is that that, that will allow him to have access to, he will not go to the presidential lodge because he's no longer the president. Let me say this to Asi. There's only a single president. If we start running around and say the most admired person, the most this, if you are the most admired, you'll feel this on the go on the ballot. We should not politicize everything. Let us look for the good intent of what has happened. If it is wrong, we condemn it and move forward with this country. So I think we need to be very clear. The issue you are aware of, you will have not been able to come clear as to what were some of the issues happening. The issues at the port, if there's any disrespect against the former president, something we need to look in the present face and say, hell, you 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 didn't add right. But the, the, the advisor to the current president have said there had not been a formal communication before the office of the president. We need to be able to know as to Thank whether it is, it is um, a reality that they communicated with the foreign ministry. We need to know what's happening because he's a former president. Thank you very much. I think we all do agree, and I personally do agree, and I respect uh, Madam Cooper uh, on this one. I think uh, waking up in the morning and the information that is stopped President George Manawea, that Glenn is said from entering the building, and now we have understood exactly what took place, that no, uh, whatever the situation was, they can clarify from the foreign ministry through the uh, Minister of State Department as to what happened. But we're going to move on and to each his own. President George Manawea, he has returned to the country and uh, we'll see what is what. I want to bring to your attention the news that is developing here. And the reason why I personally call uh, Ellis, as I say, Ellis Coffee, you got to come and help us with this FIU. Alex, can you help us understand the FIU? I mean, what do they do? What the meaning of FIU before we get into the story, sir? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, you call me. Uh, you say I should count show. 
returning from my wedding. I'll be sitting down here at Zero be doing my late taxes and things like that. You see, I'm sitting down here. But anyway, yeah, the the the, the FIU is a it's a global thing, right? You know, back in the day when in the seventies when all the drugs thing were going on in, you know, from South America and people were moving money from, you know, this these criminal activities mostly uh, moving drugs and they were moving all these monies around the place. So um, the world got together to the G7, the, you know, the G7 that governs the financial operations in the world. So they got together to decide to, you know, arrest the situation because people were moving money through the banking system and all stuff, like illegal money, you know, criminal money. So they got together. They formed, they came together and formed a, a worldwide situation. So the UN, the UNODC, all these people promulgated different worldwide uh, um, um, protocols that will govern um, protecting the the, the the global financial system from criminal money. So they formed what we call the Financial Action Tax Force, which in short we call it FADAF, right? So FADAF, through FADAF, they form FADAF regional bodies. So every region in the world, be it Euro, be it North America, has a section in in West Africa, we got what they call the Jabba, that governs you know movement of money in West Africa. That also gave birth to what we call the FIU, the Financial Intelligence Unit, around the world. So each country is required to have that. Now the FIU is called different names in different countries, but you know in the you know global you know paperwork that was being done is called the Financial Intelligence Unit. So for example, in America, the FIU is called FinCEN, the Financial Crime Enforcement Network. In Ghana, it's called FIC, um, the Financial Intelligence Center. In Liberia, in the law 2012, it was the FIU, Financial Intelligence Unit of Liberia. But recently, the law was revised, I think 2018, 2019. 20, the, the law was revised and it was changed to the Financial Intelligence Agency, FIA. But around the world, we call them FIU. So whatever name you have in different countries, we call it FIU. So the way the FIU works, um, banking transactions for different reasons are reported to the FIU. So we got two different types of report. We got the, the suspicious activity report and we got the currency transaction report, or some people, some suspicious activity report, which is the SARSR, or some people can call it the suspicious transaction report, STR. Now, the currency transaction report is based on a threshold. So for, for in most countries, it's 10,000, anything above 10,000. So in Liberia, it's 10,000 as well. In some countries, 7,000. So in and out, depending on you know debit or you know going into your account or coming out of your account. So anything that is above ten thousand, ten thousand one dollar, if you conduct that transaction, especially cash related checks and stuff like that, uh, cash and cash equivalent, it will. The banking system, every bank, is required to have an anti money laundering program in place. The central bank of every country is the supervisor for that, especially on the prudential side. In some country, the FIU is the supervisor for what we call the designated non-financial businesses, the lawyers, the, the gaming industry, the national loto, you know, all those kind of things are, you know, are part of the system. Anybody that deals with moving your money, right? So once it triggers, it goes to the, it, it, the bank has to send a report to the FIU. The FIU use that to, FIU uses that to analyze and look at pattern of movement of money, bulk cash movement, where is the money going, where is it coming from, and they sometimes give reports to the central bank in support of the, and the central bank managing the currency, all right, in the country. Then the suspicious transaction report, it depends on anything, even if you attempt depends on anything you do anything you do with that sounds suspicious that's what they call it suspicious anything that gave suspicion that you are conducting something criminal 
if your money is coming from a criminal source, so there are different, we call it predicate offenses. So corruption is one of the predicate offense. Um, tax evasion is one of the predicate offense. Um, child trafficking, stealing, they got you know, stolen goods as well. So there are 21 of them, 21 different categories. So the FIU uses different topologies to look at your transaction. So for example, FIU look at the, the banks are the one who are supposed to report this transaction to the FIU. The FIU analyzes it based on if there's a criminal criminal intent, you know, surrounding the money, surrounding that transaction, the FIU will conduct its own preliminary investigation and the FIU based on the predicate offense. So if it is tax evasion, that report will go to LRA. If it is corruption, that report will go to, to uh, uh, um, LACC. And th these institutions are supposed to do their own investigation. And if it is if it if it renders a situation where it has to go to court, then yeah, they will give the prosecution to send it to court. In the case of LACC, they will go directly to court. So in a nutshell, that's how it works. So this suspicious activity report, depending on the situation, there are different uh, um, indicators. So when the banks okay. set up their system, they have all these indicators, all the different indicators that can, can, can make them to submit a report to the FIU. Okay, so Alex, thank you very much. Why, why we ask you to really break this FIU down and the representative know exactly where we are going with this. This a report, information on Front Page Africa, the allegation that someone by the name of Ford Ford, the mm -hmm. allegation that he's in this business of taking all the money, almost over hundred, over a million dollars from FIU. I thought these people are supposed to investigate, money laundering, investigate where they bring people money in and out. But with that story that today it came out on Front Page Africa. Sorry that the website, Front Page Africa website down. If you go on it right now, but that story is, it, it was shocking. And we have spoken to some of our sources that have given us this information that is even more shocking, Alex. I mean, from this morning up to now, what have you heard from uh, FIU? You helped to create that entity. You are part of that entity. What is going on? This guy called Ford, do you know him? How well yeah. do you know him? Is the allegation you think you can put your finger to? So the, the FIU is, is, you know, I, I don't want to sound selfish here, but the FIU is my brainchild. I, you know, started the FIU with the help of other people, right? Um, so um, for full disclosure, uh, Mr. Ford, Stanley Ford was hired when I was the head of the FIU. He was hired as the assistant director for um, corporate activities, so corporate affairs. So he was in charge of administration. <laughs> So he was on. I mean, he went through a competitive process. He was hired through that process. Um, interview. He is the interview. Uh, he's generally an administrative guy. He's an HR, you know, specialist and things like that. So he's he's good with the administration side of things. So he is the interview, and he was hired, right? And then um, when, I'm sorry, Alex. Is this him? Yes, that's standing for right now. Okay, this is standing for. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, sir. So when 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 Joshua won, won the election, I think somewhere around late 2018 or so, um, he was appointed as deputy managing director for LPROC. And that's how he exited the FIU to LPROC. So, um, and then of course I continue on and then I, I left um, the country in, in 2019. So. Almost five years now I've been out of the country. So you, you read the story on front page. Uh, before we go to uh, Representative Fambula, you read the front page story because, and I, I'm serious, I want to ask you, what was your take? The allegation coming from uh, uh, FIU, uh, is it surprising to you? Or uh, what do you think? I mean, speak to the nation tonight as to your, your you know, that wish you have brought into the country, you sweat for. Uh, the allegation that they are now being corrupt. 
Yes, actually, uh, St uh, Stanton and everybody else, um, since this morning, I've not knew, I, I think around five, my phone started buzzing and, and, and even when you call me, I told you I have not known rest. My phone has not known rest the whole day. Everybody, people calling me left and right and, 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 and asking me, you know, about this situation and people were concerned. In fact, some people, one person called me, they thought I was, it was me, you know, like until they read the story, they said, okay, I thought it was you. But when I read the story, I saw different names there, you know, and things like that. So the, the, the FIU is an integrity organization. It's one of the integrity organizations. It is like LECC or GSC or RAA. So this kind of news about the FIU is disturbing. It is actually disturbing. And um, it, it is disturbing for an entity that's supposed to be, um, um, you know, integrity. In fact, the entity that's supposed to be chasing money laundering, I mean, it appears that um, the entity itself is, is, is being used, and, you know, you know that's, that's how it appears to be. So, so, Representative, before I bring in the director and uh, Sister Glenny, Representative, uh, we, 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 I'm trying to upload some of the document about the money that these guys, and the allegation that they have taken away from. And, and to tell you the truth, real quick, before I come to you, Representative Fumbler, is, is he one of the uh, tenure position holder, right, Alex? Standard yeah, it's, a, it's actually a tenure position. It's a five-year tenure position according to its law, the FIU, or now the FIA law. It's a tenure position. Um, so, um, but I mean, frankly, the news, the news is not good. It's not good for, it's, 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 it's all over the place. In fact, um, different institutions, because the FIU, it is an embodiment of an international, the FIU is only, is one integrated institution that is in Liberia that can reach across borders for any financial information any financial information. So the World Bank is involved, the, the African Development is involved, the US Treasury is involved, the UNODC is involved, a lot of the Jabba is involved. So anything that happened with the FIU, especially a front page African news, it, 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 it goes wild, it, it, it's, it's serious. In fact, I have gotten wow. called, I, I got called today from 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 some of my friends in, in, in the Jabba area. I got, I got calls to. Wow. So, for, well, Representative, I mean, it's for right within your area now. Talk to us. We are about to share some bank records. We are about to share some information. How do you guys then remove the money? They, 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 you know, the move here and there in removing the money. You remember now, these guys are investigating. Who can investigate the investigators? But here we are. Uh, we have a whistleblower coming up. So, listen, send it for just stealing a lot of money. The allegation that he's stealing a lot of money, man. Talk to us. What would be your position here, sir? You know, like uh, Alex said, the issues of such actions on the part of someone who is playing a critical role in such an institution is something very terrible for our country. Because um, you agree with me that the former head of the FIU in recent time, I think he was appointed as, as the West Africa head of similar entity. So it is how serious people take the FIU year to be. So to find someone who is involved in corrupt attitude, corrupt actions, and the diverting funds that are intended for public use, I think it's something that everyone will want to condemn, but we need to take every necessary steps to ensure that he can be brought to justice. And a government that is serious enough who want to ensure that such individual, because it could not be the whole system it could just be this rotten output you have in the system that wanted to damage the good image of such an institution. I followed the FIU when Ellis was there. I followed the FIU when the, the last um, guy who was there. You have had a lot of consummate uh, professional people serving as the head of FIU. So to find one man coming to destroy the good image of such an institutions, every means uh, as leaders, we within the legislature, we find to be able to ensure that this man is brought up, we're going to do that. And uh, such thing, the Minister of Justice, uh, or the, the the police, all of those 
entity who are investigating crime need to be able to ensure that such an individual is being investigated by this time they fight that the evidence before them if they are credible and i think they are credible the fact that one of the credible news um news outlet in our country is reporting it we need to call in for question those who are investigating people out there need to call in for questioning because it's something very grave all of these institutions are linked to the ever you will start to share such an information and they will raise a lot of red flag within the system of liberia and i think it's not good for our country let, let, me, let me read this before we get to glenny that you're richest in our brother i said though let's read this on july 1st 2023 mr ford standard ford was appointed as co-chair for the finance committee for cdc which convened uh, contravenes the fia act of 2021 now it's not important, important in the sense that that's the affiliation. Let's talk about the money issue. On September 23rd, 2023, Ministry of Finance Development Planning transfer, yes, the issue. The amount of 500,000, Glenny, US, USD, it's in the front page report. We got document, and I, I'm trying to upload this document. We got bank records to show some of this transaction. Into the FIA checking account number, yes, the account number for the purpose of purchase IT equipment for FIA operator. Review of the bank statement and procurement review that no IT equipment were brought in 2023. Doug Glendy, Dr. Richard saying, here we are before we go to Isaac, the first allegation on a standard for 500,000 United States dollars. Glendy. So have, have they, has he had a response to it? Have they asked him what is his response? If the money was well, well I, I, I except wherein I, I have to answer this privately to you because they are ongoing uh, conversation, and what I'm showing you is what we have in our possession. Certain things we cannot say because you know these people they are agent on agent, and those of our sources that are giving us the information, we gotta be mindful before we blow this thing up. But we yeah. want to flash it. We reached out to, by the way, we reached out to Standard Ford, and I'm still trying to call him. Uh, he's not answering my call because I want to invite him to deny the, this allegation. But let's get your opinion. 500,000. All fingers are pointing to him openly now in their chat room. They are accusing him. What say you? I think it's wrong. And this is just a continuous uh, uh, um, gang of whatever is going on that they continue to break the rules as it relates to tenure, tenure employees or tenure uh, workers. It's like you you say you 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 transfer five hundred thousand dollars to buy IT supplies and there is no IT equipment that was purchased. What was the money used for? This is wrong and, and, and if it is true that this is what he's done based on what is shown here, he should be prosecuted for it. That's just no if and, and I think when we continue to abate these things and, and look at people doing these things and let it go on, on, on punish. It's it's some of the same a, 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 a corruption we keep talking about. People can just use any money they want to use with no no responsibility. No one's asking them questions. No one's holding them accountable. It's wrong. And and I and I hope that he has a response to this. Who authorized him to do that? And why did he even do that? And it should not just be left left unanswered. I think this is it's totally, totally unacceptable. Uh, so what you say is wrong. Before I get in, our sister, Dr. Richards in here. Let me take this off because Mandela is not yet no more. So what you say is wrong, Dr. Richardson. Let me put this up very quick. It's important also. The second line of this thing, did September 2023, account number 0220530000201. Purpose, purchase IT equipment, deposit date, the 23rd September. Withdrawal mm -hmm. date the same day, amount 500,000. Name of the person who made the withdrawal, that's the chief controller, D. Mose Cooper. Can you imagine? So we want to reach out to D. Mose Cooper too. We are not being able to reach out to D. Mose Cooper. So is it, is it now, we are looking at a cartel operation here that everybody so, names coming up. Then let's get to the data first, Representative, mm -hmm. we'll come to you. Dr. Richardson, mm -hmm. talk to us. The reason why we flag this, D. Mose Cooper name is coming in. Dieter. Yeah, uh, yes, definitely. It sounds like it's more than one person, uh, Mr. Ford, and now we are here, Mr. Cooper, involved in the withdrawal of funds. But I, I wanted to just 
hear what Mr. Coffee has to say about this since he was in uh, the middle. I mean, he was the primary person responsible for finding the FIA. Um, I hear you say that before you left Liberia, Stanley Ford left the FIA and went to, I, I believe, LPRC or somewhere else. I, I don't know. If, uh, am I correct? How do you think, or what is your understanding that you will still have access to the FIA account and allegedly taking $500,000 for IT purposes? Uh, I mean, and how do you feel hearing that you were responsible for probably hiring him? Uh, did you sense any of this kind of stealing process, this cartel that was going on while you were there? No, I, um, 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 Francine, I started the FIU in 2014. Mm -hmm. And I did that for five years. I left Liberia in 2019. Stanley Ford was hired when I was there as the administrative head. Stanley Ford left the FIU, was appointed when George Weir won the election. He was appointed to go to LPRC. Uh -huh. I had left in 2019. And I think in 20, I stand to be corrected, in 2022, October, uh -huh. he was appointed to head the FIU. So if you're asking that question to answer your question, he's the current head of the FIU since 2022. Okay, I, I missed that part. Uh, but I, I well, was to... appointed by George Weir to go to the FIU. Okay, I, I missed that part. Thank you for that clarification. And in no mean by me asking these questions, am I saying that you were involved? I mean, you've been such a... No, we had, uh, 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 to tell you, that there was a comprehensive audit before I left, there was a comprehensive audit conducted by uh, L and GAC. Uh -huh. and of course, no system is perfect, but there was nothing on towards formed by GAC. There was nothing that looks like there was a criminal situation going on and all that stuff, no. Uh -huh. So but how do you feel yeah. now hearing about it? I mean, this is kind of your brainchild. Uh, how do you feel now knowing that you know Mr. Stanley Ford? Uh, what do you, I mean, how do you feel about it? And what do you think should be done about this cartel? Well, I feel, I feel bad in two directions because he's somebody that I know personally. Mm -hmm. And I won't, I mean, I will be full dis, I mean, fully disclosed. I, there's somebody that I know personally. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then it's, it, 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 it bothers me generally the fact that, um, I'm hearing this, you know, they got to go into it and, and, and look at it you know, and see the variety, the, the truthfulness of the, the allegation. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. without going into the an investigation or knowing the truth and what happened, mm -hmm. the news alone mm -hmm. is disturbing. Yes. You know, and, and, and I was waiting for Stanley to put the, 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 the whatever special he has. But the letter that I saw in the newspaper, I to receive, um, like I told Stanley when he called me, my friend, when you before you send that to me, I got it since five o'clock this morning and I've not sleep, slept. So when you look at in 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 money laundering investigation, the way we analyze transaction, mm -hmm. there are topology that governing that what we look for the indicators, right? Yes. First of all, when a 500,000 comes mm -hmm. into the account from the Ministry of Finance, Mm -hmm. The 500,000 leaves the same day. Yes. So that's what we call, we call it that three things happening right there. We call it a transaction with no legal and economic purpose. Mm -hmm. We also call it rapid movement of funds. Mm -hmm. And we call it pass through activities. When we are doing, when we are analyzing bank statements, mm -hmm. money laundering, those yes. are the technologies we're looking at. And once we see that indicator, that apologies, then we those then somebody say ref, red flags, yeah, right. But those yes. are apologies, right? On mm -hmm. which we investigate, yeah. And then we go deeper now to see, okay, this red flag raised. Mm -hmm. Once the red flag raised on this transaction, in fact, in fact, that transaction should have been a suspicious trans activity report because exactly. it meets all the red flags for the bank to submit it to the very FIU, right? Okay. 
So when you investigate that, mm -hmm. then you then you know what what is behind it for you to send a report to the competent authority. In this case, when it borders on corruption, then a LACC. So it, 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 that alone it raises a flag to the extent that you know knowing who I am, everybody's calling me as I mean, what happened, what's what's going on. But I mean, dream. I mean. No, those those kind of things should not be happening. Today. Let me ask you a question. Thank you. I hope I'm not interrupting Dr. Richards here. I'm just trying to squeeze this thing real quick because of time. We mm -hmm. got about ten more minutes. Well, uh, this this uh, stunning guy uh, was he a musician? <laughs> yeah, I mean he was he was called Rastaman Stanley Ford in the I think in the. Uh, <laughs> the is there, but that was you know. Okay. Well, we used to go to Euro those days. Yeah. Okay, so he yeah. used to go and do his thing. It's like, yeah, I, I said, can thing. you come in because I'm going to upload this list. This list, They have cataloged the time, the date, and everything, and the amount of money. And I want to, seriously, I don't know what of, of the representative would take this on the floor or speak to the speaker or deputy speaker on this issue because it is concerning the chair for that entity. A lot of money came out of that, and I hope for us to get standing for. Any one of you out there that are close to standing for, please tell him that we want to speak to him. I have tried calling, but they never seem not to go through. But again, we are open to speak to him. This allegation, a very serious allegation. Minister Doe, uh, talk to us, man. Yeah, Stanton, at, at, at first sighting, reading the knowns, it is troubling just by reading it itself. And uh, I would think um, it can be looked into um, very much well to a setting beyond the knowns what is the truth there. You know, few things I was just thinking about the possibility of things. One, the FIU is the FIU, responsible to look at all the money they passing from here to there. They will be very knowledgeable on transactions. So how possible they will withdraw from the bank 500,000 for no reason? So, you know, I started asking questions, how possible they will do that? They know exactly that that alone will raise some suspicious activity, and that they did it. So in my mind, though the news itself is troubling, there may be something beyond that. Now, not such a thing I put out defense for. I'm not putting out defense for it. But, you know, I was just looking at both ways, all angles to see, you know, what sense something can make to me. And I was asking myself, let's take, for instance, um, you are the, let's say, the Minister of Youth and Sports, for instance. Lone Star is supposed to play in South Africa. And the government did not send you money until Lone Star is ready to leave today, to get Lone Star ready to leave. And their total you know, expenses to travel is around 500, 600,000. You're back and forth on the phone with the Ministry of Finance. Right the way they sent you money. You know that you need to buy a clean ticket for the players, and get a hotel, they need to go play. If they don't go, FIFA will find you and a lot of things will happen. So there are things that can happen. So it is very possible that then the Ministry of Finance can immediately transfer money and then check can be written in somebody's name to get the money in cash, to get the money in cash so that the team can go. That can be a possibility as well. The uh, financial mess. So things can happen around. So I was just trying to make sense out of something. But on the overall, looking at the loan from first cycling, it is public. It is, you know, we should be depending on the FIU, the LACC to ensure, you know, things are put in check. And then if news you know, centering around them, one tend to question themselves. But in my mind, I very strongly believe there will be something else beyond that news. So investigation, understanding what really went on and how did it go on will help us very much more. But I think it is charging. <laughs> but uh, let's get what happens next. You know, when it's so hard to defend this kind of allegation, although they are from your party, and you know it's something like that, when you see smoke, there's fire. And that's why I said, the whole just spinning around, because he must say something. If not, when but he no the tonight, they will call him and blame him. But let me, let me, let me <laughs> play the devil advocate before we go to Representative Formula. I want to ask you, Alex, is there anything within the FIU that they can use some of this money then they do not need to disclose because of security? Well, um, um, you know, 
the the um the the amount of money you know it, it raised a huge red flag right there is something in the fiu because that is why the fiu is financial intelligence unit there is money set aside for intelligence and and, and, and through that, there is a process because why it is true that um, we have this situation where immediately um, intelligence funding may not be audited, but if it reached to a certain degree, the legislature by the constitution can call for disclosure. You may not disclose all the different nuances of you know, your officers and stuff, but the and and um, the honorable is here. I'm sure he knows about this. That the the legislature can call upon for an investigation if if it's grave to the extent that you know certain money is used and I stand to be corrected by the legislature the, the the honorable here. But the legislature can com compel you to come and make some disclosure to the legislature either in committee room to to so, so why it is true that. Um, it may not be immediately audited, but there is there is a need to even keep record of you know activities. But with this kind of money, like five hundred thousand living, even though yes, um, we can't conclude. We gotta wait for an investigation because uh, you can. Um, somebody is is not guilty until they are proving, um, and the, you know the investigation proves otherwise, or you know the course of competent division proves otherwise, but. 500,000 leaving the bank account and I mean coming to the bank account and leaving the same day for you know what they call IT equipment raises a red flag right and in fact going back to my financial head it, it, it even forbids the the PFM act right if it is used for if it's actually for IT and it's not for intelligence of IT equipment then it should have been paid because according to the PFM law, the bidding is done and the money is paid directly to the, to the when a person wins the contract and yep. he produces the, the goods, the money is paid according to the contract out of, you know, you know, 25% um, here, 30% here, but the money, basically the money is paid to the vendor and not somebody going to writing check in somebody's name, the controller's name to go and collect such huge form, it poses a security risk. What is happening now, in addition to what whatever I explained, the reason why some of my folks call me is this poses a repetitional risk to Liberia. It poses a repetitional risk, right? And and, and Liberia could even be, 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 even be flagged for this. And that is why so many people are calling it. It, it has, you know, a propensity to damage our overall repetition because you're talking about an entity that's supposed to fight the very monies that we're talking about. You're talking about an entity that is that is connected to Jabba. You're talking about an entity that is connected to FATF, that is connected to World Bank, everything. When this new thing went from Africa public something, the people take snapshot of it. And, right? and, and now we well, now we're running with it like this because we're going to go in more detail. We have the bank, the actual bank copy, right? I have just, you know, shares part of the spreadsheet clearly. We have the actual bank copy, like what, what is said. They got to ask, and this is true. People now got to go and uh, a representative of, of Fumbulan. They, they, I don't know what you guys are going to do, though. I'm going to share this with the pro team. I'm going to call her attention, Yombly. I'm going to share this with Prince Moi, uh, Amber Kone, and the rest of them, if they do not, not yet. I will share this with them because I think uh, an investigation needs to be open. Uh, these are allegations, right? But then what was happening? A, a, a bigger portion of the story is not all yet. Mm -hmm. A bigger portion of the story is not all, all those that were involved in, in, in getting this money. It's not only one time. It's, it's over time, Alex. It's not only the 500,000. It's over time. But let me hear you, uh, Representative Fumbler, man. This is shocking for our country. I, I, I think if you... From the account, the spreadsheet you just shared, there are a lot of questionable um, transactions on that account. That Do you want me to pull it up? You know what? You right. Let me share with our folks. Let me take a snapshot of them. 
And why are you talking that would do it real quick? So if you look at it, you see a lot of different transactions in there. And from the onset, I said you need proper investigation to be done now. Uh, for need to be called for questioning to understand why some of these things. Because few things uh, need to be brought to the public there. The first thing is that to find a person who is serving in um, a turning position, actively campaigning, raise a red flag. There are a lot of things to be done. Uh, you cannot be in attorney positions and be seen as a campaign spokesperson, campaign uh, playing any active role. You're playing that uh, positions as a referee. You cannot be the referee and become the judge. You, you cannot be the referee and become the player. So a few things I have observed. If, like uh, um, Eric said, if there was any vendor for sale equipment, that check who have been written up in the name. But see the transactions did. There's a transfer, right? there's a transfer into the account. Within a day, there's another withdrawal of say a huge amount. If you go up, you see similar amount. I think it's, it's around 60,000 going to the account. And yeah. there's a withdrawal of in, for in, intelligence purpose. So I said they have a, there are a lot of questionable transactions. And the best thing now to be done is to ensure that Yes, the house can invite him, invite the leadership at FIA for for them to come and give clarity as to what is unfolding internally. And there's a committee, there will be a committee set up to investigate them. Yes, the the police can move in. I think they with the evidence available to them, they can move in and hope and be able to question some of these. The uh, individual to know why they were transferring some of the huge sum of money. The question is, the, the amount is too huge. Uh, as to the timing, you're trying to acquire uh, or secure some of these logistical support or logistical IT equipment. Yes, you, you want 500,000 value of IT equipment. I don't think when uh, Mr. Coffee was at, at the time he was at FIA, he didn't purchase that amount of uh only add the equipment that value that volume i think it could be a more than fia up to now so a lot of things uh will be considered it even raised more doubt on those who serve in tenure positions and were actively engaged in campaigning people Thank will you. start to understand or start to ask questions as to where this country was heading in terms of their own transactional uh, process that were put in place. So people want to know what's really happening. So some of the orders that you see coming about, if a person at FIA is, is, is actively getting himself in campaign and they are questionable transaction, people want to know other people who were serving other positions of such, what was their own role? Then the next argument around here, the politics will be like my brother, he might not see it as an independent like me, if, as if I say, it is a wish hunt. So in the next few days, see you who you start hearing some of the conversation coming is a wish hunt because they are active campaigner they are playing active role in some of the major opposition political party so politics will fall in but the reality is that the, the public uh, resources was abused and people need to be held accountable for the mismanagement of state resources Senator, i wanted to ask a question if please, i can please go ahead man please go ahead uh, Thank you, uh, Representative Kwanler, for making such a great comment. Um, but I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Coffey, you talk about the risk of such corrupt practices, the risk to Liberia. And I'm worried, I'm so brokenhearted when I hear all of this huge amount of money that people are just allegedly taking from the $500,000 for IT. I mean, we saw the bank account, they're withdrawing $60,000, $70,000, like they're on there rest farm or something like that you know and it worries me because yeah we have to we in this country have to support our families back home what I, is is there a risk for you know international transfer of money that could be problematic if our country is put on this list of of a country of money laundering may be happening there or corrupt practices may be happening in our fia yeah yes the the um Dr. Dr. Richardson, there, there are there are various reasons why a country could be put on a blacklist or 
you know, or could be um, sanctioned if you may. I mean, that's that's not a word, but it could be could be downgraded. That's the least that can happen to you to be downgraded from one stage to the other. I mean, you know, if your legal system is not right, if um, your FIU reporting system is not right. Um, there are different things, and if you're not getting the, on, a, on a value chain where um, suspicious activity reports supposed to be reported, and they're looking at the different the numbers, how many are reported, how many are disseminated to computer authority, how many go to court, how many conviction you get, and how many conf uh, uh, um, confiscation you get, or, uh, or, or um, uh, bring the asset back, kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So there's a value chain when these things are not happening, when you're not being effective, right? Com you know, effectiveness compliance, you can have a problem as well. So this kind of news, it could be, it, 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 would be, it probably will be come on the table in the next uh, uh, Java uh, um, conference. So it is, it's the fact that this come up, the new come up, you know, yet to be proven, but the fact that this new come up alone is, it draws a lot of attention, right? And I will not be surprised uh, if it comes on the next Java conference in, I think, May or June. Will yeah. that affect the way that we send money to our people? Until you are, you know, put on your blacklist and stuff. I remember, like I stated on the on the show the last time I was here talking about the FIU situation. Yes, when you have this kind of reputational risk. You know, people read these things and it bothers even on investment. It bothers on the way you transfer money, setting, setting, especially when you come on a list, when your country come on a list, um, certain restrictions can be given, certain, you know, banks can have a problem with you. I remember one time um, we had a situation where our money, money laundering situation was not working properly that we work on later on, but um, we we're having even problem with getting correspondent bank into the country. We're having correspondent banks, so it was the the other banks, the regional banks, the um, the UBAs and Eco Bank that had their regional uh, branches in other countries. They were passing through them to do the correspondent bank, and some of them have their branches in New York. I mean, in London, that's what they were using. Mm -hmm. But we had a problem until we had to clean it up. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 um, John B. Davis is my witness. We had to clean it up, and then we release it. That so from that time, any 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 bank that was having a, a meeting with correspondent bank, they called the FIU had to sit in to give it that that uh, if I if I will use the word morale. Oh, sorry, wait. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd like to interrupt you, Alex. Uh, you you are not telling us something. You are holding back on something. And I um, let me see if I can get it out of you. I'm not trying to do that gotcha moment with you because if I do, it's hard for you to come back. So let me be very careful. Oh, be careful. Yeah, let me be very careful. Ailey. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, the crew. They, they are saying that the FIU and NSA is one of the two places the government may use to, you know, support money for their own personal, you know, use or all of things. Those are allegations. Like we can see right now, you cannot question certain portion of FIU as to how they're using the money. Uh, but uh, we are also saying that uh, you will put on a pressure to cooperate and work alone. But you, you you saw this coming and you ran. Is that true? You're talking about me personally? Yeah. I, I, you, I, 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 yeah. You, I, you, I, you I, saw that they were going to pressure you to use some of, to build in this kind of this I kind of so. But you saw it ahead of time and you say, you know what, y'all can have your job. Is that true? No, even even my life came on a threat. Okay. After the, 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 the investigation of the 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 16 billion the, the, "Quote unquote, sixteen billion and the twenty-five million. Uh -huh. One with the PIT, the Presidential and Investigation Team, did an interview. I stood my grounds, right? Um, whatever that came towards me, I stood my ground to the peril of my life. I would do the right thing mm -hmm. because I had my name and my country to protect. Correct. So because of that report, I, you know, I came on a thread, and I, 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 you know." I face yeah, my I just wanted to ask that because I know you were holding that bag, reason being you don't like to discuss it, and I had to bring it. But now let's well, show this first. Since, since I've crossed, I've crossed my, my, my trauma now. Okay. Those times I was traumatized, so I had to, you know, put myself together. So there's some history. Like, I'm talking, I'm 
there's some history here of that agency getting involved in corrupt practices. Is that what no, I'm hearing? No, not no. You're not understand. Uh, let me. I mean, you're you talking. You're talking. You want to talk? You better let her go. Let me make it clear to you. Let me so let make me, it clear. Woodo. There was. Oh, there was. I know. Um, and and Dako, she keep asking question. My man, let me let you. Let me go back to the spreadsheet, Ellis. With the let, so no well, let me make it. Let me make it clear to her because she doesn't know. What would we? What would we? What would we? They will be what would we? That's your question. All right, I will go that way. Uh huh. Thank you. <laughs> because yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble. But let's go ahead. I want to show this spreadsheet real quick. There you have it, folks. I want you to take a picture of this. It's very, very interesting, like Representative said. All the information, go ahead, take a picture of it. Because we have three different sets we want to share with you. This is one. Take a picture of it. I want you to, hey, hey, man, if I ask you to put it on Facebook, you don't do it. You'll put it on Facebook. You'll share it. Yeah, but the money that is in red, those are some of the illegal money, illegal withdrawal. You see, transfer deposit, you see withdrawal, you see intelligent withdrawal. All this thing that people begin to question them. A lot of money. Now, look at the date. This is all in 2023. From January to May. So it's January, February, March, April, May. In five months time, the first check. There you go. So 310000 Go we'll ahead. We'll die around September. The heat yeah, of I'm the doing country. that. I, I want to put a, take a picture of it. If you're done, let me know. Because we are about to remove it, I want you to have this. I want you to, you know, you know, we share this information with your free of charge, because this station belongs to you guys. We got a lot. Let me go to the next, the next slides. Now, understand. Look at this one, from May to September. You see what you get? A five hundred thousand. Hey Amen. Intelligent deposit. Ministry of Finance Development Planning. Then we got September twenty second. Banners after they took the five hundred thousand, the balance in the account was five hundred and thirty four thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars seventy three cents. So you see what's going on? They're taking the money, taking the money, taking the money. Now that's the question. I, I'm not seeing another intelligent uh, DR. What what is the direct deposit or something or not? So somebody help me. I'm seeing ninety nine thousand, but you can yeah, figure out this. cent. Yeah. There you go. Please yeah. go ahead and take picture. I'm going to bring the last one for you. This is for your information. Uh, I want someone to please call Mr. Stanley Ford. Call me uh, Mr. Cooper, Moise Cooper or Maurice Cooper, his name is. Uh, let's talk to them. Let me put the last one up, please. Be fast, take the picture, get your phone ready. I'm going to put the last one up for you. There you have it. There you have it. Now, Ego, they took all the money in their account, only 16000 left. Up to December 27th. Alex. Hey, Alex. The people then took all the way 1.1 1, 1, They took all the money. Only the 16,000 they left in there for for Joseph Buaka. Alex, I will leave the one. Oh, you gotta talk to us now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when if you look at this. Kind of transaction. This is a statement. In fact, this is a statement from all of Jan January. I mean, all of 2023. So this is this is an analysis of the the, the bank statement for 2023, and it looks it looks all like you know money coming in, money going out. That's why I was talking about the rapid movement of fund. It has an occasion of you know. Money not used for the legal or economic purpose. It has rapid movement of funds. It has passed through indicators all in it. All these red flags are in it. That way you see the money coming in, money going out. And um, when I was at the FRU, I didn't even see that kind of money. The representative, no. Besides salary, I think the higher we got was 200000 for operation. So, you know, <laughs> besides the salary money, which I've seen, you've seen salary, I see salary transfer, I see intelligence deposit, that intelligent withdrawal and stuff <laughs> like that. I mean, when I was heading the airport, airport, I mean the I mean, airport. if you are if you <laughs> the allegation is on you now, uh uh, uh at least God forbid that your name is up there on spoon talk, everybody talking this information up. Are you having a good night today? Will your night be anything good? No, I've not even had a good day. Since like I told you, since around five o'clock, I've not had a good day. Because 
One, I think about the country. This kind of news not good for the country. Two, um, this is my brainchild. I got to get concerned. Anything that about the FIU, I get called. And you called me today because you know that, you know, I told you the last time that I can come to, you know, give my expert opinion on different topics in my in my area of expertise. And um, but so you decided to call me today to come and, and talk about this. Because, you know, I was hesitant, but I I I told I got a month of the courage to come and talk because um it borders on our country's integrity, it borders on the institution called FIU. FIU should not be in the reason in the news for the wrong reason. And it, it brought us on a lot of stuff. And it rep represented here when they used to meet me with money. When I go there, only the salary and go there with money behind them to approve our budget, to increase our budget small. So, no, not represented by them. No. Oh. Yeah, they met, they, met, they met hustling then. Thank God you represented. That kind of money, I, I, I never had that money when I was head of the FIU throughout. I never had that but, but so so let me wrap this thing up, folks. Uh, anybody got something else to say? Because we gotta leave this story now. We're out of time. I say you want to add anything, sir? Well, you so want far, to that's anything? exactly what I yeah. I said so far, that's exactly what I've added. Like I I will always say the same thing. The news itself is troubling. Um, um well, anybody reading it would not be feeling good, would not be feeling fine. But uh, I will want to strongly believe that there is something else beyond that news. And I hope it is looked into. Now, you know, let's get the reality of it. Because in the smallest imagination of my thoughts, I wouldn't think FIU folks will receive 500000 and will drop 500000 for no legitimate reasons. I, I, I just don't want to believe so. But again, let's hope we get the real, the real the real story there. Um, besides all of these, though, they, I mean, why it is true here we're getting this information? The only thing that worries me a lot is how it seems our integrity institutions and other institutions are being examined by these leaks. You know, you can see it differently, but it raises a lot of concern, even about international partners, as to how these leaks are actually happening. It is having a lot of effect on the entities. Uh, Mr. Coffey was there. I'm sure he will be receiving calls from his partners as to how certain information will be making its way to the public. And these things should be concerning. It is not only us concerned you know, with these issues, but this final, very soon, NSA leaks will be all outside, and then you'll be seeing information of people who give us our intelligent information and these things are dangerous. Uh, in as much as we are all saying the same thing, I, I, I'm concerned with the level of leaks coming in from the government. Where so you information... want stealing from the government to be secreting? <laughs> that's what we're Is that what you want? Again, it's a coffee. No, no, no. You yeah. want stealing from the government to be secreting. It should be society order. No, Everybody that's that's not... from the government will go in special room and they will talk it there. That's not why we are discussing. Uh, what I am saying. I'm asking what the, you, you say these leaks are troubling. How can oh, we yeah. eradicate this kind of behavior if we don't by shame? Having, by having by having investigations being conducted. Now, coming to the public, these leaks don't necessarily conclude investigation. Now, there are procedures and processes that have been happening since the creation of the world. And again, we can do that. Those who should know, know. For instance, or um, for 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 the Islamic legislature, if he has the uh, credentials and the clearances to see certain information, he can see it. I, I said, though, thank you. I, I, I said, though, my 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 friend and brother, thank you. This is what uh, George Bonaway used to do during his days in the office. That's why we get shit out of the. Oh, I'm sorry. But <laughs> let me let me let me hold you there for your French. But let me ask yeah, my, sorry for that, friend. Let me ask my, let me ask my junior brother, Isaac. But Isaac, yeah, I know, but you think they think a little who bucket it, take a free row? You put it there, you take it from there, you put it there, you take it from there, you think so? I'm not you sure. It, you put it there, you take it from there, you put it there, you take it from there. How are you looking at you? Well, maybe, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, but if you're talking about the issue of 
of the money coming and going, we have all said it, it is troubling, and we hope they will investigate. But beyond that, I'm talking about the issue of the leaks that you and I know who battle our international partners. You know it very well. They will definitely Thank you. Know that. If that's yeah, what they are, they are, they are indicators that they are, they are. I say this because they are indicators that over the past few years, I mean, you know, no more years past, the you know, institutions being used to siphon money and put it there, to put it in the budget and take it from there, to put it in the budget and take it from there. Those kind of things well, have been. Well, we are not. We are not. Like we are not we are we're going to go. We will this look like, this look this like look a series like of that. Yeah, that's yeah, not what we're going to this one. Uh, again, I said, I mean, thank you for sticking to your position and everyone else. We had a wonderful show. Uh, it's 7.15. We got to leave it as it is. Uh, let's try to do our closing. Man, I hope you can come back, uh, Representative Fumbler, man. You just fit in. You fit in very well. And we appreciate you. If you have time, though, you're always welcome on Spawn. We said thank you. But before we all leave together, I, I love to leave on a good note. Now the one I asked you to do will call me three o'clock in the morning to waste my time. You know, three o'clock in the morning is eight o'clock in Liberia. Actually, you have to respect our time different, please. I, I understand. I must tell you this. Uh, you know, it's totally embarrassing to, to find you calling me on my phone ringing. I have to turn my phone off just because you and Mama Bridge always calling me, representing Mama Bridge. And I need to talk to her husband on that. She need to leave me alone. All right. So let's just let's get into this real quick. Uh, today I want to play this thing that Yombly, 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 Yombly. She did something incredible today, and to tell you the truth, I hope somebody will listen to her. This will be our last video for tonight. And everything we've said here today is not strange. But since the fourth session of this Senate, we have spoken about roads. We have had. All of the issues about electricity, there's not one thing we've said here that we have not brought on this floor. The only reason why we continue to say it is because we are not taking the action we should take. We have the power to change a lot of what we have explained here today, but are we sincerely ready to take those actions for the changes? I think that's the kind of decision we should be making. Let's ask ourselves, now that we've come back, are we ready? Are we ready to take some actions? To sincerely take actions? If we are ready, then we're not come here and complain because it's disappointing for us to come here and be whining when we have the power to change most of these things. Well, there you have it. Uh, whether it was today or 10,000 years ago, the big question remained. We can make a difference. It is up to us. So why I'm hearing my friend Jeremiah Kuhn crying about LDC? Why am I hearing Senator DeLong from beyond MTA? Why is he crying? Why am I hearing Edwin Snow complaining or am I going and writing a lot on Facebook? The board is in your court. You can decide today which action you choose to take. Today, today. So the podium is right. As I do my closing tonight, before even my dear friend, uh, before they go, uh, uh, John, John in, this is a serious issue in our country this is it has turned to be a political community like i was arguing with somebody everywhere you go now total darkness in the country mosquito and heat is the call of the evening no one is so relaxed because of total darkness many homes being burned because they got to use candle lantern mosquito call and everything just to get through the night people are dying i have in my possession criminals were caught from lec they were taken to prison they were in jail they fought for this truth that we are talking about today and whenever we come to speak on this thing the lord make us then go and make promises look at fiu today would this government do something? 
Look at the situation in the country, my dear friend. We will come on the show every day to talk our own. But where are you, Mr. Senator? Where are you, Madam Senator? Where are you, those representatives from each and every district? But let me applaud Fonati Kofa. He was speaking to the briefly, you know, when he's speaking, I decided to listen in. I tried to leave and turn my phone off to, 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 to play something as phone game. But I said, I'm going to listen to Fonati. He had a guy in his hand like this. And when he was speaking, somebody said, but yo, fly private jet. I think you all talking about the B Mountain or one of those places. And Fonati paused. And he said, ah, Fonati. I've never flown private jet from any one of these companies. And then he began to say, if our military should go out and serve as security for any one of those companies, Fanati said it was wrong. Fanati said it was wrong. He has taken opposition that some of us were doubtful of. And I hope he can continue on that path to take those positions that will strengthen your house of representative and bring some form of integrity. Where are we with LDC? You can go to your home at night. You can drive right now. For the, you're gonna leave, you're gonna drive, you're gonna go to where you belong tonight to go to bed. But you'll be driving in the darkness with your car held at on. That's not what we need. What's the problem with LDC? I had a long conversation with one of the personal advisors today. I said, this is what, and I always say, this is what money captain said. The president have accepted to work with him. But money captain, why? In no time had President Jose Yuma Barca gave money captain his blessing. In no time. It's a big argument, folks. In no time. Because this president that we know, when your children sleep in darkness and get burned and die, it's on President Jose Yuma Barca. Everything moving forward is on President Jose Yuma Barca as we get closer to the 100 days. So let's speak truth to power. If it were by yesterday and it's not today, we'll remain by forever. So we're begging each and every one. If it is not spoon, join some other network you're comfortable with and speak truth to power. Let's help change our country. Let's think Liberia. Let's love Liberia. And together, let's build Liberia. That's the word of Jose Yuma Barca. And I hope we listen. I hope they investigate. I'm challenging you, Representative Fambula. Bring this on the floor. Talk to your colleague. Investigate FIU. Bring attention to it. Talk about LDC like you are doing. Channel Union. Talk about this issue. At least they have one person to fight. At least let's do. We have come a long way and we have suffered a lot. So till we meet again from my end, let God bless us all as we wait to receive the closing from each and every one. Uh, Honorable Formula, you go first because I know it's kind of late, you gotta leave. So let's hear you, sir. Yes, I, yes. Uh, I sat back and listened to some of the issues. You may mention of the situation with the current speaker. We had an issue where you have paramilitary personnel serving as security for concessions. It's like they are in those communities harassing ordinary citizens when they try to flag out issues of concern and their rights. Because there are not been a time in which uh, institutions that should be monitoring these concessions play their own active role. So most often you have a lot of protests coming out, whether in the B Mountain situation or the China Union, the Aston America, you have a lot of internal issues that need clear attention. And I think if, if this government is more serious to not do business as usual, corporate accountability need to be a serious thing to consider. 
The next issue is that I think since we flagged out the issues of um, corporate accountability, I listened to the Auditor General. He has made this issue a very big priority of the GSC that they, for this year, they're going to do compliance audit of all concessions in the country to ensure that they can have a clear picture as to how they are in compliance with social, uh, with their own social responsibility. And it's something that we're going to support. We're going to support uh, full uh, financial support to the GAC to do a full scale financial compliance audit on all of the concessions to understand where we are as a country. Because we will not have these investors extracting resources from our country and you cannot have the dividend of such resources. You cannot have people building the capacity of young people. So it's something very serious. You spoke of current and I listened. Um, the first thing is that there are two things we see here. When the first thing I look at is that when the China Union concessions were uh, brought to Liberian people and it was signed, they got the SP1, which is on the St. Paul River Basin. They said they were going to build 130 megawatts uh, hydro dye on the St. Paul River. I know my B sister, um, Francia, she's aware the last time when BMC was operational in that part of the country, they had uh, their own dye providing current for bomb mines, all a part of Morovia, including the executive mansion. So China Union said they were going to build their own dye. As of now, we've gone 15 years. They're not even put a single block on the uh, on the ground to say even they want to build at that. It's serious. It undermines our economy. It undermines us in a lot of different ways. We get crying on we rely only on the man coffee, only on the solar plate in Douala, uh, on the Bruce Island, why an investor has promised to build something in the tune of 130 megawatt that will be providing current for some part of Morovia in the, in the dry season. It's something because we have failed to monitor them, that failure has led to a lot of break in our system. And we need to keep uh, beef off our own uh, engagement when it comes to compliance and how we monitor the concessions. The next issue is that there's a, a projections of the SP2 again on the similar Singapore River. I think the World Bank has to kill uh, something around 300 million. We all need to sit around and understand what is already happening, how that project will get started, because it will help to expand our own economy. The, 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 the faster we got, we have access to electricity, the better our economy will grow faster. I think we need to be able to see some of the things. The next thing is to ensure that we have clear path and have people held accountable when they abuse state resources. You cannot have people who control, and there should be peer review or some of these integrity institutions and reports should be published. You cannot have someone who, and that I would suggest some such process should be done on a quarterly basis. Because take for an example, you are in an election year. If it was on a quarterly basis, people who have raised the red flag, why this man, why four was serving as head and serving as another stakeholders in a, in a major political party campaign team. They would have raised the red flag and say, hey, in terms of standard, they will not offer well for you to head the FIU. You can take a break uh, of absence and be able to come back and see whether you can pay attention to your campaign activities. And all of these things happen. But I'm, I'm not surprised. I think we should expect a lot. The way the past government transitioned out, we should expect a lot. There are a lot of dubious transactions that will come to the public here, and we need to be able to call some of the guys to account for state resources that I believe they have mismanaged. So uh, thank you again, CEO, for the time. And I will always be uh, willing and will always find time to appear on your show. I'm willing because some of the issues you're talking about, we bring it out in plenary. We we'll ask for plenary to take some decisions on them. And you can uh, communicate with us at any point in time because we believe the librarian people deserve the best now. If we are, if we, if we as leaders have not done it in the past, we we need to do it better now. So I say thank you. I'm grateful for the time provided me, and I look forward to ensure that we all can advocate for corporate accountability in this country it's something serious they have not been accountable to our ordinary people whether in whatsoever sector is a serious problem and if we try to push it as a national priority yeah, well,
So thank you again. I'm very grateful for the time. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, well, as always, we just want to be grateful to have you, man. We hope you can come back, man. We enjoy. I really do. I really do enjoy the conversation. It was so quiet because maybe Fatima was in here tonight or hey, you know, trouble. Uh, and, you know the other people. Seriously, it was very quiet. People enjoy. It. Thank you very much, honorable family. Thank Apple. you, honorable. You know, you got one bone miners on the show. You got one bone miners on the show. Definitely. We always, the best is from uh, Yeah, things really. come from home mines. Um, I I hope you're listening because I have a message for you. But be listening along the way. Okay, I really have listen. No, no, no. You can go ahead because I don't think I'm closing now. I don't know if if. Okay. If, thank you again. I will listen from the car. Yes. Thank you. Tonight, our power stand. Let me close. <laughs> the power stand. <laughs> All right. I mean, I think it was a great show. Um, uh, um, we have a long way to go as a country, Liberia. Uh, we just have to remember to continue to be objective, no matter the side of the eye. Wrong is wrong, right is right, and, and give our constructive opinions um, because it's going to elevate our country one way or the other. Um, we'll continue to follow the different progress, um, criticize when there's need to be. I am hearing this morning that Budaburo camp is no more. So we'll follow that story um, and, and see what's going to happen to the Liberians who did not come home, who may not have anywhere to go tonight or this morning. They woke up to that. Um, so I'll just um, say a good show. Good seeing you, Mr. Coffee and Doc, as always. We're yeah, here. Definitely we're <laughs> here. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh Mr. Coffee, did you want to go and then I'll be last or I can go and you be last? I don't No, I, I can go. You can be last. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh thank you, Glenny, for raising that um that Budbron thing. Um the, the situation with Budbron too. That's that's another thing that, that was very troubling because um I, I was in Ghana. I spent a number of years in Ghana, and, you know, live and work in Ghana, and I was always on the camp on Budubura. And um, we still have family ties, and uh, in, in, so we, you know, my wife has been on the phone throughout. Um, you know, so f some families were affected. Some families of ours were affected by that situation. Um, so we, we, we we're looking for another resettlement package right now. So you can you can imagine what we're going through, but um. um and also, there is there is um, there is a wildfire going on in Texas. So it's, it's it's not close to me; it's far. But there's wildfire going on in Texas as well. So those are things I wanted to point out. Yeah, this you know the situation um, with the FIU, even though, like I said, is you know it's, it's it's allegation yet to be proven, but um, it's it's symptomic of 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 some of the things that have been happening through. You know, over the past, you know, you know, number of years, you know, you know, with with um, entities being used to siphon money, that's that's what it looks like to me, in the grand scheme of of you know corruption. Um, when I was you know the head of the FIU, I you know my budget never reached, reached that 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 kind of money. Besides salary, we got um, I think one time we got up to two hundred thousand for operation money. And that is the kind of money we get. And then um, before I left to work, we, you know, GSE conducted a three-year audit of the FIU, and not you know nothing much. This saw that was on towards corruption and things like that. So um, the FIU situation, even though, like I said, is yet to be proven, but it has this has raising some concerns around, and to the extent that I've gotten a lot of courts. So this this are raising concern. Um, I believe in Liberia. I believe in Liberia. That is why, um, like you asked me, uh, Francine, that is why I stood my ground when we did the investigative report on the on the missing um, continuum money, quote unquote, yeah. and the twenty five dollars and twenty five million map up. Mm -hmm. I stood my ground. I did what is right for the country, and then, of course, even to the power of my life, I did what was right. And then, and then I came back to the U.S. in twenty nineteen, and I've been here since. For almost five years now since I left, so I've been here since that time. But what is happening with, you know, you know, there are different things that I that I that I heralded in Liberia, 
I went to Liberia at the Grabo International Airport. I did a lot of work there. Um, that the Ministry of Agriculture, I did a lot of work there. So, you know, and then, you know, eventually to the FIU. So there are a lot of things that we did, you know, we did in our country that we can be proud of. So when these kind of things happen, it, it really, it really battles us with, with the country going forward because we believe that corruption is one of the things that is eating, it's one of the major things, if not the number one thing that is eating our country up. It's one of the things that are eating out. So when these kind of things come up and with the propensity of giving us this, you know, repetition and damage, and we're already talking, about, especially our financial system, we're already talking about, you know, bringing investors and all that thing. This, this, this has an impact on the overall, you know, you know uh, economic growth of our country. This, this kind of thing. So, um, again, it's yet to be proven. Um, we, we can just talk about it based on the allegation and based on the spreadsheet we see. But again, um, there needs to be an investigation, and 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 the right, you know, the right information come out. Yes. Thank you. you Thank you. Hi, Alex, right? Sorry, I had to leave because the door was going crazy. You can say, yeah, if anybody want door, they should come for the shepherd. Uh, that Richard said, I think your grandson need a door. Can't get him. Um, uh, what I thought you keep it. <laughs> so, uh, but, but let me announce real quick. Uh, we promised our friend and brother, um, what's his name? Um, Russell. Uh, today is the caucus in Minnesota. It's about to start, I believe. I was just saying the link. I just saw this. I hope you can come on, but we want to say to everyone that uh, Russell Alex, he want to be representing uh, that district in Minnesota, Brooklyn Park, uh, in, in the in the state uh, the state house. So uh, they're doing the Democratic caucus tonight. Uh, if you hear me, Russell, uh, I just sent the link. I hope you can come on. Let's try to uh, encourage folks to go there. I know we're out of this time. Or we can hang out with you, all right? All right, so I see he's in the back. If you in Minnesota area, uh, let me bring in Russell Ellis if you want to hang with us. But Dr. Richardson, can you control why bringing in the dog is going crazy? Sure. Um, I, I wanted to just hi, Russell. How are you doing? I want to do my closing because I have to go, uh, I have a meeting tonight. But it's great to have you, Russell. So I, I, I want to do my closing if that's okay with you. Are you able to do that, Stanton? Why do my closing? I have a group of meeting. No meeting. So I, 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 sorry, I had to, I had to get away from the, from the noise so I can hear you guys very clearly. Yes, yes. I was welcoming to the show. Uh, I have to go quickly, so I wanted to do my closing and then give you the opportunity to speak about the uh, delegations that you need for the caucus. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I, yeah, I, I can hear you. I can hear you. OK, yes. So I just I, I'm sorry that I have to run because I have a meeting uh, coming up, but I wanted to give you an opportunity. I'm glad to see you to be able to talk about yeah, the, the caucus. The caucus has, it has started already. Dr. Richard said, I know you have to go, but they just gave him his chance. Said he squeezed his two second in real quick. I went, went for a rush, so go ahead. I know you guys are already you're going through. So go ahead real quick. Talk to your folks. I'll tell them exactly why are you here. Well, uh, uh, thanks again, uh, uh, Stanton. So we're here at Park Center High School live in Brooklyn Park. Uh, that's right up from Brooklyn Boulevard. Uh, the DFL Precinct Caucus has started. So folks are coming in now, they're registering. I, I didn't want to go up in there to, to show you because it's kind of noisy. You probably would not have been able to, to hear me, but I just like to encourage um, as many people to, uh, to, come, uh, to come on down and register. The registration has started already and it goes until um, seven o'clock and then the voting starts. Uh, so uh, we, uh, there are a lot of people showing up who heard uh, about this on, on Spoon. Uh, so thanks a lot. The message has gone out. We just need uh, more people to uh, to come through and, and show up. The more people we get, uh, the better it is. So just come on, just just come on over, Park Center in Brooklyn Park. Uh, you need to live in Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Park, and ask you. You don't need to be a citizen to participate in this process. It's only the Democratic Party. Um, uh, this process is just for the party. Uh, we just to decide who gets the party uh, a nomination. And I'm running against um, a, a Kenyan lady who just moved into the district uh, and she is, is trying to win this open seat. 
I think this is an opportunity for us um, as a community, as a people, uh, to uh, uh, to come here and 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 enforce uh, and register to to be uh, to become delegates. Well, uh, why you go back? We want to hear the noise. We want to be part of the program. We want you to get the people to come on Spoon Talk tonight. So let Dr. Richardson do a closing while you go back to the crowd, and I want you to bring them in if it is allowed. Because we got to yes, do this yes, live. Yes. Like Chris Owens, if you watching us anywhere around Brooklyn Park, you want to be part of the program, we have, will be on, we're going live with or, or Russell. He will take us to the program. He will be our man on the ground because I want you guys to cook us for him. So while you do that, Russell, Dr. Richard, say, I know you got to run. I'm going to stick around, do your closing. And Alex, if you have to run to no problem, or if you want to stay with me, that's fine. No problem. Yeah, I got to. No, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. So we. Let me, um, wish, let me wish Russell all the luck, all the best um, in this primary. I mean, I wish you all the best, but, uh, you know. Yes, yeah, I there is. Um, uh, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, there is a Liberian here too, yeah, who is um, uh, here to support the, uh, the, uh, the process. So um, uh, you, can, you, can, you can talk to him and, and, and ask him some questions. Oh, oh. Hey, okay, stand so you just wait. Yeah, I know. Hold on one minute. Don't you huh? leave us? Uh, uh, don't you leave us? That the riches and, and uh, Alex have to run. I'm I Reverend Pan, how are you, sir? No, I'm not Reverend Pastor. Pastor, Pastor, Tabla. Yeah, Pastor Tabla. I say, I'm checking on the riches and go ahead now. You. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, you know, I just want to tell all the Liberians in Minnesota. So please go out there today and uh, St uh Stanton, this is Glendish pastor. Hi there. Okay. Is that coffee? It's yeah, that's okay. that's coffee. I'll, 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 <laughs> coffee uh, politician too. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, so they hear you. You on live though? Yeah, yeah. This is Dr. Tabla. How you doing? How, how you doing, sir? How you doing, sir? How you doing? Uh, Alex, pretty good. Pretty good. You. Pretty good. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, Glenda's uh, uh, pastor, so he's here to support the process. Uh, Dr. Dr. Tabla. I want to ask did, you a question. Did he bring the entire church? Did he bring the entire church? Oh, okay. Uh, they're, they're, they're talking to you. They want to. Oh. I mean, why, 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 why is the entire church? Why is the congregation? I can barely hear you. I can barely hear you. Go ahead, sir. I said, why is the entire church, Pastor? Yes. Let me step away from the noise. By the way, you all look good. I don't know what you guys are eating, but can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. I would just ask, I said, what's the entire church? You mean where our church is? No, you ask your congregation. Oh, you're asking for the entire church? Yes, sir. Well, some of the members are in a pool area there. I just step away to come and ask Winfrey a question. But some of them are in the uh, where people are registering. All right. That's yeah. beautiful. It's good to see you. I just call more people to go and uh, register for uh, for Russell. That, I mean, that's what we're doing right now. Yes, yeah, so if you are watching this program live and you are from Ebenezer Community Church, this is your pastor, the Reverend Dr. Francis Stabler, and I'm calling upon you to give our support to Honorable Winfred Rush Russell. He represents our community, and it will be in our best interest to have him uh, serving at the state level. So come out and give your support to him. Thank you. I'll uh, thank you very much, Pastor. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. you. Next person, Ellis, I think you say you want to run, right? Is he talking to you? Is he talking to the pastor? No, no, let's move on. Let's move on. Who's that? Who's 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 our brother over here? Yeah, Stanton. This is Vamo. How you doing? I'm doing good, sir. I mean, what's going on? What's going on? Well, where are the group? Why I mean, what's the party? My man, we're trying to get the people here to vote for our man. You know the you know the drill now. You've been here before. Well, How you guys doing? To them. Send a message Sorry? out to them. Send a message out. Yeah. To uh to everybody watching Spoon right now, please come to uh, Central High on Brooklyn Boulevard. We are convening here for the caucus. Uh we need everybody here because uh, our opponents got our people here. And we also need our people here. So it will be greatly appreciated for every Liberian, well many Liberian to come here, you know, and help us out.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Isaac Doe, Brooklyn Park is on fire. Everybody is going now to support our brother Russell for this position and uh, for the upcoming event in March or April. Yeah, sure. Wish him, wish him, wish him all the best. Um, thanks for helping too. I'm sure you reached out to a lot of folks who initially were not planning on going because probably they did not know how, but they took interest in going. You know, I spoke with a few persons as well who confirmed they would be going. So we wish him all the best. You now, as a librarian, uh, we are proud to have him there, and let's uh, let's hope he can get it. Now, I know he's going against a Kenyan there. Within the Brooklyn Park area, I think um, uh, there is a little challenge for the Kenyan national. If she was someone around the Minneapolis area, then I would say you know she would definitely you know, cruise through. But oh, you uh, think we got more Liberian than Kenyans, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. In the Brooklyn Park area, definitely somewhere close to the Minneapolis side, there where she would have a little holding. There were a lot of Kenyans in uh, Saint Paul, but around the Brooklyn Park area, Oslo, you have a lot of like. Yeah, so I'm thinking he has a good chance, and uh, let's let's wish him well. Are you from the Brooklyn Park area, Asin? No, I'm from the Saint Paul area, but always from the where? Saint Paul. Saint Paul. Okay, well, uh, I kind of confused though. So Saint Paul is not too far from that. Do they? I mean, they rent side by side. Saint Paul. No, 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 not exactly. Saint Paul is by Minneapolis, so they usually call it the Twin Cities, but. It's about okay. 25, 25 to 30 minutes max from St. Paul to Brooklyn Park. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Not much. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think uh, as you hear, man, folks, please get up. If you're around, man, at least I say the whole Minnesota, just go there. I'm not going to yeah. say Brooklyn Park or St. Paul. Just go there, man. If you can, the people will let you know. But go check out with, with Russell. Uh, I hope we can have Russell back on. Let's see the crowd. Let's see who of what to let them send a, send a shout out. But actually, I know you didn't close though. What uh, uh, are Russell mm -hmm. trying to connect again? Talk to us. I mm -hmm. a lot of stuff we discussed today. Oh yeah, yeah, a lot of issues. A lot of issues. We talk about the issue of the um, or uh, the president return. I mean, uh, I would agree, and many persons too, that uh, what happened today should not happen in the interest of uh, stability and reconciliation for our country. Um, let's you know do it right, and uh, I know. Or uh, the political advisor to the president, uh, Madam Cooper, came on and provided all uh, very shocking information. And as I kept thinking about that, more uh, questions still lingering in my mind. She said the president uh, had asked her to order chairs. That would be a procurement process. I would really be concerned on how that procurement process worked for the fact that PCC should be in PPCC should be involved into it. How did they manage to do that? Those are things. If they are sure of you know accountability, uh, then they'll be telling us more. How did the procurement process work? How did she order it? Then one person order something. But okay, you didn't hear her well though. She said no. uh, <laughs> later on, uh, President Weir and the outgoing government brought in the furniture. That's well, what she said. She got invoiced. How did invoice end up to her? Invoice? How did because it she? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> There must have been a procurement process. How did that happen? I mean, how did the PC, PPCC process happen? But Who I think it's a shame if this is true. I think it's a shame that, you know, I, I think for Joe, we are not to pay all the people money and no, he it left is everything. He, he left everything with Waka. I think it's embarrassment, yeah. though. Yeah. Then after yeah. that, after that, you ran ahead to say you're going to do open house. Hey, so, man. so, Wena, so, or President oh, Biden. I mean, I really, really want to, I really want to praise Joe. Well, Where no, 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 and like you, you holding loose stool in your hand. You can't control it. So we really yeah. want, we really want to press job. We have some time, but we so just can't. Yeah, the the man didn't pay all the the level so people money. They build the play, they first the play. Remember, I don't interrupt me now, but can, <laughs> can you at least give me some more respect now by begging you back? Yeah, I hear. Thank God, our woman. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that nothing. Small money. The man. 
the, the men are, what did they do with the money? Two men on the point against voter, voter registration to open their own headquarters for a resort. They ate the money. They couldn't find one tiny the sheet. Then at the airport, Joseph and Yuma Boyka are all over for money. Give it to the Lebanese people. Then Joe are going to open the house. So, so then he came back and closed the house in front of him and he got there. So who are you? Who gave him here? Where he low for here? Where? Which part of this country? No, no, no. We come to where. But let's establish a father. Let's establish a father. Let's establish a father. Why do we are in this BM behavior? Why are you always in this criminal, this small, small eating behavior? You know, you know, you know who may be very close to, to this BMT. That people who say they were doing procurement works, although they were not in government. People who say they were ordering things and paying people. No, I say, can you really, can you really look in the camera and don't be a friend? Not because it be that be the mobile model. He resigned. He ain't here for that nonsense. Don't be a friend. How can George Mana we are him pay all the people money? I mean, uh, this is bad I'm for our country, man. Then you get the mind, you get the heart. You say after then you say I came from I came from vacation. Then you want to go in the people building, but you didn't pay for it though. <laughs> I mean, respect to well, Joseph Iman Puaga. As a right. matter of fact, let me say this. I told them to shut the building down. Not to allow. <laughs> not to allow. Yeah, man. As a matter so, of fact, I did. No way now. Let me tell As you a matter of fact, I told them, say, yeah, Joe was at their yeah, building. Yeah, Joe yeah. actually yeah. entered because he didn't pay. We were trying to, come yeah. this, we were trying to yeah. keep the story a secret. But you have to put the, 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 the story outside. Okay. Oh. And I yell it in a small, small. President Baka got President Baka got six years to be Liberia. Then he will build he will build buildings all around. I'm trying to cover the little secret, right? I'm just trying to cover the little thing. Nothing, right? I see them continue to run and say they show the building. Listen, you pay a school fee to kick you out of school. I remember when I heard the story, I said, you're close, you're, you're close that building down, he shouldn't enter. <laughs> so, so what, what are the ways the other? I don't know why people been asking who was really in charge of the country. Thank you for telling us that you are the one in charge of the country. It is a sad <laughs> thing. Yeah, that I was man. Man. <laughs> Nothing in your head. I told you. <laughs> I said, Madela, you shut the building down. They may pay the money. So I mean, she came on the show. She know nothing about it. Why are you the one? Why are we going to go? Why? Let put let put the truth outside out. That's in your head. They probably got to go all way to look for money. And Joe, we had the money. Remember that they did another one too, right? They had another in the three million. They took from the government. They can't do another one to it. All the money was there. They couldn't even face that. Face that. Small so bill. all of this money, money, all of this money that President Elect Baka was looking for, he has so much. He can learn you know, to put LEC on, or the people yeah. only give it to me to face the airport. No, <laughs> I beg you, yeah. President Baka got six years to build all the things. I will tell. I will tell you this. I will tell you this, right? Hey, hey, bro, we are leave that country again. Hey, Joe, we'll leave that country again. He's not going through that building. We will punish him for six years because he ate that building money. He will use the regular channel, the regular in and out. They're you, saw the, start. you saw the political advisor going out in the bush everywhere to defend something, and she said, that's all about job. Well, Why are we talking about Jenny? Well, something happened to the, something happened to the, the uh, uh, Isaac. Two of the two of the people that said they went to court, they, they were draw though. They withdrew their, they, they withdrew their petition. As oh, a, that's a constitutional right to go to court or not to go to court. So I don't think that's yeah, big uh, but, 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 the but, reason why. Why? No, I said maybe. It could very probably be probably person, but I spoke with them. I'm not sure if they are from Lofa. I would want to really see if they are from Lofa. Uh, so may, maybe President Biden spoke with them and said, I mean, I will appoint you. So you'll lead that team. Maybe. I don't know. They have their reason. So it is their constitutional right. To go to court, not to go to court, to work, not to work. That's what they want to do. That's fine. But um, so I want to say, Diggs, Diggs and, and James, they say they're gone. They, they are not going to court. They say they do not want to fight this case. They believe that, although the tenure 
Oh, they will take the money and go sit down somewhere else. They sit it out. Well, 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 you know one thing though, my brother Fode, you know, I was calling him from Woko meet us out with our thing. But the honorable got me a little shocking from a lot of issues. A lot of issues, actually. You know, first off, he was saying or uh, says Glendy clarified the issue of the airport. I thought he should know exactly the issue of the airport. And then what was very shocking to me, actually, um, what 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 was it I wanted to talk about even? The people they step me, what they hate calling me. Stand up, please tell you, you people to start calling me. It's no, no, you mean go call you. That CDC calling you. <laughs> they gave you the thing. You were so tired. That CDC calling you. The whole thing. The whole thing. That CDC calling you. They were putting me under pressure. See, they were putting you under pressure. Yeah, they, yeah. Now see, my yeah. brother, I can sleep. You see my dark old list, I was looking through it. I don't see incoming call, incoming call, incoming call. What then? Yeah, what you? When you get on the show, my man, my man, you must you, you, you press the papers more, my man, you must press it. I said, Let it go. I lie. I lie. I lie. No, I see my press it, baby. At six o'clock in the morning. Oh, they man, put you people they all on the show to talk to me. I said, On the phone. I mean, look at me. Look at me. That will be great. We nobody, nobody <laughs> say but Prince Pape. <laughs> My man, when I you see I, the said, I, I am surprised. <laughs> I am shocked. I am shocked. I am surprised. So Nelson, you went out today in the Nelson. Can you show that video that you went out today? That yeah, you Nelson. Can you upload that video? Yeah, about the rice price. What? I, I was, it was it was shocking. What did the people really say? They said the price come down. Oh, what did they really say? Ned Nelson. And Nelson, you on an order. You are on an order. I'm looking at you because I listen to the video. So, <laughs> stop texting. No, uh, texting this video. no, so many of the people said that the, All the of price them. increased 200 extra on the price. And they said similar thing with the gasoline that the price has increased a little bit. Okay, so I'm bringing the video up. So they said similar thing about the gasoline <clears throat> that the price has increased. And so the motorcyclists are saying that it's seriously tempering with their hustle. Yeah. You know, these are the things we've been saying, and we always speak truth to power, regardless of um stand on putting people on the phone telling me they will do this. I shouldn't thought they won't yet. I am strategy of men using against you. <laughs> <laughs> So you know today, today, <laughs> you know today, I I went out of the fence here and I saw you know some of the people here look at them one with Lily and myself talk and then she wanted certain little help. I decided to go down the street and buy her the back of rest. So when I went there, I posted the voice recording. I was recording when I was talking in the chat room. So I said, "I'm for the rest." She said, three thousand five." I said, "Ah." How it's also come now. Then she said eighteen dollars in US. I say ah, eighteen dollars. That's how I posted in the room when I decided to call you. <laughs> yeah, you are muted. Please be, be muted. Please keep me meeting him. No, I say, I say, we have the we have the actual recording, right? The woman <laughs> said the woman says something, and you told the woman you mean eighteen. I'll let the librarian people no, no, listen. No, no. Like, no. Yeah, I, I said let the I said you see. Propaganda is not good for you. You cannot no, win. I'm a daughter. Who are, but I said, wait, 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 wait. Wait. I said, we play. Because you see, this year, this year, we have mastered it. Please you play. came. You were happy. But you there on the street telling the librarian people say they must say the rice price is high. So let's <laughs> so, play a full recording. Yeah, you went to Oro. I was there. <laughs> I was there. Nelson, get our, get our clip ready, Nelson. We'll be fair with our library people. Nelson, no, hold well, on. Let me play. Let me play. I say, um, fight. But I say, why is it? I'm not saying. Okay, let's play. I say, um. There we go. Yeah, play it, please. Yeah. Nelson, hold on. Yeah. Let's play. I say, um. Oh, sorry. You say, I'm not from the rest? 3,500? Yeah. And US one? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, eh? Why you guess yet? <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, eh, hey, uh, hey. But no, but let me fair with the Labrador people. I said, they two went out wet. Listen, Nelson, 
my fellow Liberian. We will play <laughs> it. I want you to hear it. I beg you. Take your time. Oh, sorry. You said I'm for the rest? Three thousand five hundred. Yeah. The US one. Yo, yeah, eh? Nancy, <laughs> what did you hear? Nancy. <laughs> she said she you, said fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. No, I said wait now. I said wait. <laughs> I, I, I said wait. Let get it Sinclair. You are having technical issue, I said. <laughs> 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 You have a technical like issue, I say. Your phone is going <laughs> off. I don't know why. But I want the Liberian people to listen from my end. There's the video I say sent us in our chat room. He was so happy to disprove what I mean what I said. I said went out on the street. The lady said $15 US. I said, said no, you meant 18. She repeated herself and said 15. Your please hear and hear well. Please. Uh, sorry, you say I'm for the rest? I'm sorry, you say I'm up for the rest? You hear that very well? Uh, sorry, you say I'm up for the rest? 3,500. Yeah. The US one? Yeah. You hear it? And US what? <laughs> yeah, people be fair. And US what? And she said 15 dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what yeah. exactly asset sent to us. The okay. world is watching. Let me tell you, the five million people in Liberia are buying rest eighteen dollars from the market. Coming on the show and like you mocking them for not buying rest fifteen dollars. I'm not the one that's talking. I'm asking the question. So, the woman is showing you went to the market. Then the people. No, tell no, you. no. But I said, I said that be okay. fair now. It can be hundred dollars. It can be one fifty. Why did the person? I said, why did this the lady? She answer you. We we'll play again. Let the people hear this. Uh, sorry, you say I'm for the rest. Three thousand five hundred. And US one. Fifteen dollars. Yes, fifteen dollars. Yeah, you have fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I you know what I mean? I try, I try to mute it, but my head is the wrong button. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I don't want to buy now. I tried to You try yeah. to fix things, my but you got finger, love. My finger yeah. slipped. I went to the wrong one. You got to get love for coordination, but you don't make it. <laughs> you didn't make it. <laughs> you try to fix things. Okay. So, folks, <coughs> we're going we gonna to play the whole thing. Let me fail to ask you. Send my hand slave. The secret is out. Let's play the whole thing. You <laughs> stand for the rest? 3,500. Yeah. And US one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so Nelson, go ahead and play what you you went out there today. What happened? You want to just bring it up? Yeah, yeah. I try to fix this thing, Philip, but I try to fix it. I can't. Right, right. <laughs> and so today we try to come here at the old room market to know exactly what the reality is. In the city, and this and, 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 
to leave office. Okay. We, we used to buy this weapon. You mean this particular right? Yes. This is the one, the Busawa right? Yes. Okay. We need to buy it. They have there for three thousand. Open, look for in the in the seat and bother. We raise it up to what? Three thousand wow so you buy you used to buy the rice for you used to buy yes but now how much you buy uh, three thousand uh, so, we're crying about the press of the rest because we were expected for the record to trap but the record could be all in a year we could be all okay all right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for talking to us. We have different kinds of rice, right? Oh, yes, the price of rice increase, increase more. So how many you are buying the price, the, 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 the bag of rice? One more ago, it was $3,500, $3,300. But now it's $3,500. So two hundred are on the price of rice in just, uh, in just one month, in one month time. Extra 200 on the price yes. of rice. Yes. Wow. So... I, I understand they have different kinds of rice, right? Because all the rice that the American public rice, the American public rice will buy ninety dollar US for the big day. Okay. Yes. For all the rest of the horse, the, uh, how do you call it? Say? Mario, all the rest are three thousand five hundred dollars now. Wow. So okay, one month ago, how much you are selling the cup of rice? Let, let, let's see the different kind of cup you have here. Let, let, let's let's see the cup. This cup of fifty dollars. Yeah, come closer. Let, let's see the cup. Yeah, the cup of fifty dollars. You are selling the cup of fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah, fifty dollars. But now I found the three thousand five hundred. I check it. Said three thousand four hundred. Second come from it. So I any other buying the cup of rice for three thousand for one hundred fifty dollars for this cup. I pay for the cup one hundred fifty dollars. When I sell the rest inside of the only oh, no. I can get little things from there, and I get one hundred fifty dollars from there. So, so the other cup small is smaller and more than this cup. So you say the small cup for how much? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Yes. So the big cup, how much? That sixty dollars. I'm selling the big cup. Ah. Yes. Wow. So, uh, after the price of rice increased mm -hmm. about one month ago, yeah. you increase. Did you increase the price of the cup of rice, or you just change the cup so I you can get more profit? I just change the cup. So the way you change the cup, now you get more profit. Yes, I have to get one hundred fifty dollars profit from order one day. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me understand this. Yes. For every yes. three thousand five hundred you spend on a bag of rice, how much profit do you get? One hundred fifty dollars. One hundred fifty dollars. Wow. Yes. Is that one fifty US? Not for us. Let's get you pause it. Pause it. Let, let me ask you a question, please. Yeah, is that is that 150 US he's talking about? 150 LD. What? Yeah, that was a message. 150 LD. You so, got to order 100 Labra money 150. Yeah, 150. So it's about uh, it's less than one dollar according to him. Hey, man. He got yeah. it. I said, I said, this is this is bad though. So he had to switch the cup just to get mm -hmm. like eighty cent on a one bag of rice. Oh yeah, and and if you if you continue on the uh, interview, the one I was so sh you know very sorrowful to me, he said people who used to buy three cups of rice. For the for the person to feed their family, now they have to buy four, five, or six cups before they can feed the same family. Then this is exactly when the price of rice, in quotation mark, not me saying it reduced, but you hearing it. These are the real people outside the market. That's what I've always said. Politics and economy cannot go together. No matter how. Hold on, let us continue because people are saying so. The main profit. Or oh, one bag of red, only three cup. If yeah, the man he said eat that three cup, he got no profit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Co continue, continue this thing. I know, I know. We into your time. Give us five more minutes, please. Please, and you change your cup. Yeah. When the press can down, you go back to that. I go back to the old cup. That's why I keep the old cup. So when you come back, I go back there. Okay. But when I come back.
Yeah, it will be more than that. Ah. Yes. Okay. So thank you for talking to us. Just, just in a rush, man. Just look at me, small man. Folks, uh, a cup of rest and yeah. feed our whole family. Now they will have to buy four cup of rest. You have to buy four cup of rest. One hundred dollars. One hundred fifty dollars. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. So, uh, the price of it uh, has increased. Uh, the price has not increased, but the price has changed. So it means that the people who used to buy three cup of rest and feed our whole family now they will have to buy four cup of you rest. Have, you have to buy four cup of rest or six cup of rest, but the only way you can feed your family. Wow! And now when you have to six or seven, <laughs> you will know how many cup of rest you buy. So it means that people that will be careful about the bunny and all that kind of thing. So they say you have to reduce the bunny or pack the thing small and wait yet until prices can drop. Wow. But, 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 but from, from, from the look of things, you think prices will drop? I, I really know what well, the prices will drop. You know, they are seeing it. They say, well, Christmas will be five years ago in November 39, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, November 39, I think I was looking. Yeah, but, 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 the way you change your car, people stay buying from you? Yeah, but yeah, but, but, but you tell all what I think of you, see. Oh, Every, everybody, everybody, everybody used to think of. I think, sorry for that. It's still continuing. Okay. Yeah. She said, um, three thousand five hundred. Like previous rice uh, sellers have said, this woman is also saying three thousand five hundred for a five kg rice. And like you heard from uh, the other uh, rice sellers, and of course that's what. So you you, you want to talk to us? What exactly it is? But uh, aside from just the rice. The market and uh we want to make sure we speak with uh is sold for three thousand five hundred how true is that how are you sir okay so um we are from uh, spoon tv uh, how much do you sell the 25 kg rice around three thousand four fifty oh you selling your own for how much three thousand four fifty Three thousand four fifty. Yeah. Because when the people outside they say they buy it for three thousand five hundred. Yeah, it depends on the, the rate. It depends on how the rate is. Yeah, the rate is not stable. Some people say in the three five. Some people say in the three thousand four fifty. So, but, but what's the actual rate right now? What's the rate? Some people selling money one ninety five. Some people selling one ninety six. Okay. Yes. Okay. A flip, a flip, in between the two. Yeah, yeah. So again, so what I'm getting from you is that whether the rest price high or low, it depends on the rate. On the rate. Yeah. So you think when the rate comes down, the price of rest will come, come down automatically. Yeah. Automatically, it will come down. Yeah. Okay, thank you for talking to us. We appreciate you. Now, one hundred ninety-five Liberian dollars to one U.S. dollar. So based on the rate, the price of rice will increase or reduce. Uh, as you heard from her, she's still selling her rice the same price. She's still selling her rice the same price, three thousand four hundred. Uh, uh, three thousand four hundred fifty dollars. That's what she buys her rice for. You want to talk to us? Okay, so let's let's talk to let's talk to a lady here. She wants to talk to us. So welcome, man. You live. Yeah, but I want to know. Uh, okay, so we're asking people about the rest. Mm -hmm. How many are buying cup of rest for now? The cup of rest price has reduced or the cup of rest now? The cup of rest price is just going up, going up. They reduce the fact that they're scamming around and they're in the community. You got a lot of training and powerful in the community. In the community, they're selling a lot of pop. So you imagine you're doing more than that. You're buying cup of rest, selling a lot. They're all your set. You have a red and a tea party. Six hundred two thousand five hundred is supposed to be a lot. Wow. Wow. Eh? See, see that? Eh, 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 eh. See, see, see that? We are buying rice for 40, 60 for pop. They are not. They are not going to get that part of the price. They are not going to get that part of the price. So we are not. I said to go buy it. I will teach you how to buy it. So we are not going to buy it. We are not going to buy it.
，我就查了个嘛，叫金岩县的，只要我有人家说，我跑去了，对不对？哪有给你找钱？哪有给找钱？我打个电话，这还不？我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我谢谢啊，江西。Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for talking to us. So let me talk about one more thing. No one said, no one said he buy a cup of she used to buy a cup of red for forty dollars for for before that. That you? That you? No, 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 no. You should not use to buy red for. Now use to buy red for forty dollars. Forty dollars for red for. So the price has changed. Oh, it's still forty dollars. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Okay. So, but but you want the price to drop? You want it? You you want it? No, but I'm not going to. The rest was the same. Oh, it's the same. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Okay. Why are you coming now? Why are you coming now? Okay. So thank you for talking to us. School TV. We are here live at the Oro Market. We want. We want. We want. We want. We want to talk to. You. Thank. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Man, that was Nelson. Bring us back. That was a heated argument. I said though. So you have the sedition and the unity party folks, you know, talking about the price control, as it? Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I mean, this is, this is something that affects your home, affects you, affects Liberia. I don't think it should be about CDC or UP. The very true of the matter is that the price of rice take up a little bit. That's the fair truth. Nelson went to a seller, someone who buys and sells. They may even show you his cup. You understand? So initially, he was selling $50 for a rice cup, a bigger cup. Now he is selling the same $50 for a smaller cup. So in sense, when you look at it, it's like he is selling rice now. If he were to use the same cup you were using before, he wouldn't be selling $50. So the real bottom line is... Not CDC thing, not UP thing. It should be a Liberia thing. And the price of rice had taken up a little bit. That's the real truth. I even bought a bag of rice today for someone. 3500 was 18 United States dollars. And that's the same thing he got from over there. Yeah, man. But it's kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, it is where it is. Uh, Nelson, you did a great job, though. And you, know, oh, yeah. you did a great job, Nelson. I, I hope you can get out there again. And bring us the story because where we are up and down with a little over one month to go. We see one about Muru with the Bacola, Nelson. Nelson, but do you eat rice? <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Every day. Uh, uh, I don't I think we should be eating bread and no. vegetables. Uh, with bread, by the way, with bread. Wow. Uh, no, I said no, man. I said no, but there you have it, though. Huh? I said there you have it. Oh yeah, and 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 one more thing I wanted to. I know we have not spoken of it. Uh, concerns the president's legal advisor, Butchu Abu Butchu Pare, Butchu Ban or something. Butchu Ban Kita. I mean, we'll we discuss it tomorrow. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. every day is a new story. I want to discuss it today, but your president said they like to do it in front of him. So like that's how they discuss it. many things just going on. And Nelson, have you noticed also increasing the unfortunate burning of homes in Liberia now? Have you, oh, yeah. Is this something you noticed? Yeah. Like homes are just burning and people are just perishing sadly like that. I don't know really what is going on, but today you know there was a video of a little kid that passed on from a burning house where the people were doing everything to save the boy this dog you know it's been it's been hurtful and i thought it's been it's been it's been crazy a lot is going on a lot 
Don't burn it to you. Everything happening in the country, we should put it on those lawmakers. Everything. Everything happening right now. If there should be election today, some of the lawmakers and I were there before they shouldn't be there. They are some of them have turned to just play games on, on, on the gullibility of the Liberian people. And they say, you know what, they will vote for me again. I will go and lie to them, they will vote for me again. So soon, they have disappointed a lot of folks. So soon. They lie. They just can talk garbage. And they just talk garbage and talk garbage and just talk, 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 and go into tonight and say to hell with the Liberian people. You know, it's, it's bad. It's bad. I, you know, you, you cannot trust any one of them. You just cannot depend on any one of them. They are most of them are failure. You know, and, and it's a hurt because you know when you, it hurt a lot because you know you you some of us spoke for them, and they have turned to be the worst. But they're going to everything get time. The Liberian people time will come again. It will come. So, Nelson, thank you, man. As you do, I have to go to the price of rice. The man making only eighty cent U.S. on one bag of rice. He making only eighty cent. Yeah. If you look around the house, you can find eighty cent. I know. Did I get eighty cent somewhere right here? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing I had. I think yeah. I get eighty cent, Nelson. Yeah, I said, hold on, you owe me, hold on one minute. Wow. Yeah. I'm looking for a nice way. I'm looking for innocent. <laughs> That's how bad it is, right? I said, the man is not making five dollars. Five dollars, he's not making. He's making one dollar. The man is making 80 cents. Uh -huh. For he and his family. Look. He making 25 cent, 50 cent, that 10 cent, so that 60, that 70, that 80. So I get even change left. I get 10 cent change left. This is what the man is making as a profit on one bank of rice. He gonna sell out one bank of rice three days. And you get senator and making you get money captain making seventeen thousand five hundred a month. You get senator and making nine thousand dollars a month. This man and his children. And I will say this again tomorrow. They're looking to live on eighty cent. That's what you see. Yeah. They are living on eighty cent on a bank of rice. Wow. Yeah. Make no, make no mistake. The lawmakers then are doing so worse. The senators then are being so bad. The representatives pretend the people are suffering. Money Captain Walker with 17500 a month. The senators walking home with nine thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars, representative six thousand, seven thousand, and that poor man, he will sell one bag of rice three days, just to make eighty cent for he and his children to eat. Some of you that stay hanging out with us, we just want to tell you, man. 80 cent. I don't know why I can buy with 80 cent. Nothing. Mm. Nothing. I'm looking around to see if I can find one dollar. The man is not making a dollar. That's when you got to cut that part of the clay. Let me send it to those senators then that are trying to rob our country and no representative. 
Now let's remind the president the reason why he was elected president of Liberia. That man, that poor man, he has to serve the rest for three days just to make 80 cents. That 25 cents, that 50 cents, that 60, that 70, that 80 cents. I just found this right here. I didn't even know it was there. I just found the innocent. I didn't even know this innocent was there. I will keep this innocent. I will try to find more innocents to maybe somebody pa, somebody ma, with three children, four children, five children waiting to make 80 cent profit so if you waste small cup of that rest as it do you will lose 25 cent profit and you're going with less than 80 cent but see the car is the senator driving to <laughs> to the capitol bill see the car is the representative are driving see the car is lawmakers are driving So you're talking to but let me ask you why every time these things of the people suffering come you don't let to call the one person who should be responsible in the president why you always go for somebody that, that truly talking I, about I just, why I just said that's the reason why they elected the president to make a change and I hear I people there say saying that. the price gone down he should be somebody there now to ask them how the price really gone down but I said do though I said do hmm? I just said ministers representative senators and the reason why they voted for joseph yima Buaka because that poor man don't want to make 80 cent profit in three days now say how much it is what can 80 cent buy you i know you get a kid i know maybe you get two three children out there we don't know but i know about only one <laughs> you know <clears throat> Uh, it, in a sense, it can't even buy a trash card here, like a one dollar card. It can't even buy a one dollar card. Wow! So, our country finio, we gotta pray for Baka. We really gotta pray that that the president can see this thing. I hope he can go to the, go into the market. I hope he can leave the house at night and travel on the street of Monrovia. The man is making 80 cents. God bless us. God keep us. I will keep this 80 cents right up here. I will put it in a Ziploc bag. I get extra 10 cents, so the total is 90 cents. I'll put it in the acid doka, I will get it in the Keto Lab Bureau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're you talking you acid though, you got anything to say? This thing won't make you to share tears, man. That's the state of the country, and unfortunately, <clears throat> that's those are the realities on the, on the street. And you, I, I know you went to the field, the gas guys too. Uh, for me, it only, it only shows again that you cannot play politics with the economy. If you want to play politics with the economy, it shows up with the people. You can. Coming you up, got something to play, Isaac? Oh, yeah. Coming up saying, you know, reducing the price just because you won't get some political, you know, Spain talking point. It, it, it will not go down to the actual man. There's another video that I sent the last time from SKTV's interview from the same market where the lady was saying that they had just put her son outside, her son outside for YX fees. And she said it was $45. That her little thing she said, it, she even able to get for the father for paying about YX fees. So she even knew. There's a clip there from SKTV where some 
I don't know which of the market buildings were there. Yeah. So these are realities of the country. A lot should be done. And again, the president will always need to be reminded. That thing say, oh, it just soon, it just early, we just come in. It only shows people who are not prepared to do something because there is no time at so early. Though you are you, yet, you just took power, but the people lives continue. The people life didn't just start. It's a continuous process. So you have to have a plan to ensure you can help somehow. And we, we better hope something is done. But for now, things aren't going to be expected. No. We'll get there. Folks, if you agree, and I agree, touch it nothing, believing and trusting in the law, we'll get there together. Till we meet again tomorrow, same time, same station. May the Lord watch between you and me, or you and I, or I and you, wherever the pronoun and the now verb connect. The prophet key say, what well, we ask him, one of another. Amen. I also want to say to you, Prophet Key called me. He said, namesake. I say, yeah, Prophet Key. He said, saying I've been to Liberia, you have not called me to check on me. I said, Prophet Key, I follow you every day. He said, when can I come on the show? I said, Prophet Key, you are always welcome to come on Spawn Talk. So Prophet Key will be on the show on Saturday. Saturday, Prophet Key will be on the show. We want you to keep your pen and paper. I want you to be a blessing to him if you want to. I want you to scratch your arm to Prophet Key in a wish way and want you to have a conversation with Prophet Key. Everything he's going through in Liberia, want to know it, want to hear it. I want to know whether Prophet Key will be given the cultural ambassador job, that position, whether they will give it to him, whether Joseph Barker will give it to him. We want to know. So I want to say to you and to everybody, Prophet Key will be in the Spoon Studio on Saturday, okay? He asked me to give this announcement and everybody else welcome. There will be no man cussing. Prophet Key know he cannot cause man, all right? So till we meet again, Nelson, thank you. I know you are now going to have your show. I want to say to you, as a do, thank you. And to the rest of the team, especially represent the Fumble man. He was he was hip. He was hip. I want to say thanks. Have a good, good evening. And good night. Yes, sir. Uh well, good night, Minister Do. And um we want to say thanks to our folks out there. Thanks to all of you for being here tonight with us on this edition of uh, Spoon Talk. Thanks to you who made your contributions in the comment section to our folks across the internet. Uh, you've been following on YouTube. Um, Spoon Talk Live is our YouTube handle. In case you're not following, you can check it out. Thanks to all of you who have been uh, watching from there as well. Thanks to our Facebook audience, Spoon TV, Fabric TV, Super TV. We appreciate all of you guys. It's because you're on the other side of the screen that we get motivated to what uh, to do what we do here, to inform and, and just do all of that. We appreciate you. Thanks to our folks in Radio Lane. We, we are always live across the country every single day. And that's why Liberians gather here at about this time every day. We're live on the Spoon Network, across the Spoon Network on Spoon TV, uh, the Spoon FM 107.5, Fabric FM 101.1, and we have uh, Super 95.5 FM as well. Thanks to our partner radio stations across the country that are always relaying this program. Um, thanks, to, uh, thanks to Punch FM 106.7. Thanks to... Um, Trust FM in Bomi County, 88.7. Thanks to Gibi FM, 90.9. Um, there in Kakatama, Gibi County. Thanks to Trend Radio, 104.7 in Grand Creek County. And a host of other radio stations across the country that are always relaying this program. I want to say thank you for being a part of this journey. We'll be here tomorrow with another edition of Spoon Talk. But just before we go... Um, 
let me throw this one out real quick. Uh, a happy birthday greeting to Madam Marie Yomi. Madam Marie Yomi, you're celebrating your birthday today. You're there in Houston, Texas, uh, the United States. Today is your birthday. And your daughter, Princess Sonkali, of the same address, that's Houston, Texas, is wishing you happy birthday. And again, uh, Madam Marie Yomi of Houston, Texas, happy birthday to you as you celebrate your birthday today. So till we come away again, my name is Nelson Collet. Have a good night. We are coming up shortly with the late night show. It's going to be fascinating. You don't want to miss it. I'll be here with the rest of the team. Till we come away, have a good night. You can make up time to join us on the late night show tonight. It's coming up in just a couple of minutes from now. Bye-bye. And let's remember to keep the peace because Liberia is all we have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A special one from the CEO, Stan Tongue with the Spoon. And your boy, Friday the South and Band. <laughs>